Is it just me or are the gulls more insistent this time? They're pretty insistent. I think they're pretty insistent anyway. Are you doing a uh, check? I am. I am doing a sound test. Cool. Yeah, we sound good. Awesome. We'll check it again when we get to like some loud music and whatnot, but that seems fine for now. Let's see. Save that. Would you post it in the Discord for me? Hmm? Would you? Because uh, uh, our bot won't post when we go live. Announcements? Yeah, put it in announcements. That's fine. Or in the Umineko thread, one of the two. Oh, yo, we already got people here. Hi, Rami Rumi. Hi, Lillian Ray. What's we're, up? We're still uh, setting up, so... Uh, Glad to see you here. <laughs> uh, just hang tight for a moment. We'll be right with you. Got to get all of our bits and bops together. Yo, Reina! Hope you're having a good day as well. We're about to. About to what? What are we about to do? Hi, Henri. Look out. Eight hours of Beato T posing? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for the. Still ready for this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is going to be great. Speaking of which, with regards to that discussion in the Discord, welcome to the temporary spoil squad. How do we have likes already? All we've done is say hi. I'm going to set up my microphone real quick. Hello, hello, just maladjust Matt. How can I not like Beato asserting her dominance, right? <laughs> this quality content, obviously, it's already got lots of likes. My bad, you're right, you're right. How can I underestimate the quality of me muttering into a microphone? Also, hello, Melodia. Sorry if I missed you. How do we already have six likes? We haven't started. <laughs> Umineko is terrifying. Uh, people know what they like. And what they like are witches tea posing menacingly. And then, of course, she's just not going to show up for the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like the question arcs, right? <laughs> like, everyone talks about Beato, but there is no Beato. <laughs> oh, I just realized I got this. All right, so I need to close that. What if the gulls are getting louder every game? What, what if, if that's what's louder every going game? On? It's fine. Yo, eat a poo poo. Welcome to the stream. Don't forget, Battler are crying. I'm surprised no one's called us out yet on using PS3 Beato and Original Art Battler in the same <laughs> thumbnail yet. The seagull stream? I'm ready to see some seagulls. Yeah, it's time for seagulls, Evie. Beato is over. It's time for Bea 2. Oh my god, is that like the Mewtwo to Beato's? Oh my god, this is great. <laughs> Seagulls better finally cry. If they don't, I'm going to punch a bird. <laughs> uh, we'll get those seagulls to cry one way or another. Also, hopefully the audio sounds okay. There's not too much crosstalk. Uh, we've got it set up as best we can. 
Makes sense. That's why Battler's crying. Of course, of course. All right. Well, I don't know about all y'all. Black Clock says noon. Yo, Rebecca. Welcome to the stream. The seagulls are tired of Jessica grilling them. <laughs> I forgot about that joke. Yeah, that was the running gag for a while, wasn't it? <laughs> all right. Uh, in that case, I think we're going to go ahead and start. Let's make sure that pops up. All right. Yeah, I see it. We're all good. I've got the chat. I've got Chiron. Time for some rich people brooding in the rain. Yeah, nice. All right. It's been for freaking ever. Uh, thankfully, the voices we gave every single Umineko character have been forever imprinted on our brain. <laughs> Just as long as I don't need to remember what voices I gave to, I think, uh, Angie's bullies that one time, then I think we're good. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and start. All right. Let's go ahead and start at episode five. Oh, we didn't read the thing. Oh, shit. You're right. Hold on. Actually, actually, unironically, uh, we're going to go back and read that. Hold on. Very obviously fictional and fantastic in nature. You want to know what else is fictional and fantastic in nature? Restarting the game so we can read the fucking menu text. Did that fuck up our, um, stream? No. It's just going to go black for a moment. Okay. And now it's fine. There we go. I was going to say, it's literally fine. <clears throat> End of the Golden Witch. Good morning. Please enjoy this new game by a new game master at your le- Oh, a new game master, huh? What the fuck? <laughs> really? We've got a new GM in the house. Oh, no. <laughs> I knew it. It's finally my time to shine. <laughs> However, the game has already been reached a climax. The culprit has been cornered, and there's nothing left to do but await the final checkmate. But for that very reason, there must be something for you to spot looking down it from afar. The difficulty is fairly easy. What could possibly deceive you after all this time? Interesting. Mm. Interesting. I think a lot of things could okay. deceive me after all this time. I was going to say, I don't feel fairly confident in my ability to do this, but I do feel at least like we're better readers now than we were when we started. Oh, oh, do you want to share your big, th your big theory? About about the solution to Beato's riddle because I liked this one. Oh, okay. So I had an idea after our uh, theory, our last theory. Yeah, episode. we recorded at least six hours of theory speculation between our own video and another guest uh, episode on when we cry pod. So. Yeah, and I still had another that popped up after uh, s potential solution for the final riddle, being, okay, what if Beatrice is the author? of the accounts that we're reading in the game boards. See, and I love this theory so a lot. In that in that way, you're all alone on this island. Yeah, Battler's all alone on the island. He's the last one left in the story. But I'm here. Yeah, the author's not physically on the island in the story, but the author's here in their work and will kill you. Yeah, the author can easily kill off her character. I love it this. It just theory. works so much. It just works because it has that little click and change of uh, reasoning to it, and also, and you didn't even realize this when you came up with this theory. This gives us a much better explanation for what the red text actually is. Mm. The red text, the red text in this case would be some kind of authorial voice, you know, giving details uh, by fiat. Mm. correcting, you know, their uh, meticulously laid out mystery novel to make sure it has all the details and someone needs to solve it. It also explains this weird fascination the game has with mystery as literature. And, like, Beato also then kind of slots in as this old, uh, as the uh, old, mis old lady mystery solver archetype, which is, like, <laughs> an actual fucking mystery trope. So I really love this. Anyway, can't wait for that to be explicitly denied no at the beginning of the episode stream. five. Right? That'll be great. Anyway, that was our big that was the big theory that you had, and I like it. Uh however, I still prefer my uh Italian Hi, Beatrice Callie. theory. They're not mutually exclusive. Alright. The story is very obviously fictional and fantastic in nature. Any resemblance to exist all right. That's just gone now. Sprites are wrong. The sprites are wrong. Hold on. There we go. There, we go. there it is. Oh yeah. Wow, that audio is really loud for me. 
it's uh, pretty loud for me too. Let me just double check how loud it is over here. Okay, that's pretty loud. I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. You know you have control over your headphone volume, right? I do. Okay. I'm glad it starts out with something nice and loud for us to test this on. Could you imagine if it didn't? Yeah, I can. Awesome. Yo, it her! All right. If your headphones are adjusted, Vivian, I believe it's time for you to become the witch again. All right. Colione. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? It'll be fun to kill her and see your face twist in pain. Why else? <laughs> look, look. Don't turn your eyes away. Look at it. Just right in media res here. Look, look, look. It's magic. It's furniture. No matter how much you try to deny me and magic. Look, 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 look. <laughs> Sorry, battler. It was pretty fun. Sure, I just did what teacher told me, but look how great it turned out. Apparently, if you start out all hostile and needlessly brutal, then turn incompetent and soft <laughs> at just the right moment, you can spark a huge bump on your affection meter, right? Oh, oh, I see. So we're doing a we're doing a recap. <laughs> Previously on Umineko no Nako Koroni. 40% relatable and Garfield anti. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, GJ. Hi, Alice. We're each 40%. That's good. I hadn't thought of it that way before. Can't believe Jessica Fletcher was Beato all along. Yeah, that's the theory. <sighs> that lonely tone was the desolate sound of the wind blowing by. The glittering rose petals on these bushes were all golden. The cloud of gold butterflies that had once danced through this golden rose garden like fluttering rose petals was no longer anywhere to be seen. The master of the Golden Land is the Golden Witch, Beatrice. She might be called inhumane and cruel, arrogant and outrageous, or perhaps naive and simple. That laugh of hers, which lost its grace more and more the longer it continued, could no longer be heard. The Golden Witch, Beatrice, sat like a doll, resting in a deck chair adorned as beautifully as the Golden Rose Garden itself. I found this fucking Golden Land environment in VR chat. It was pretty great. <laughs> did, did it give you, did it help enlighten you at all as to the nature of the Golden Land? Uh, no. Okay, cool. She wasn't relaxing there. Her eyes were empty. She didn't respond to any questions. Even so, she was not permitted to sleep. Beatrice sat like a doll. Her hair was down and Virgilia was carefully tending to it with a comb. The usual Beato would surely have spent this time complaining about this and that regarding her hairstyle. However, she made no response, showed no reaction. So it really only looked like Virgilia was combing the golden hair of a large doll. There was a table alongside them. On it sat a chessboard, along with a jumble of black and white pieces, locked in a closely fought battle. All I'm saying is that this kite, like, like, the chessboard with Vir Virgilia and Beato set up here, this kind of gives credence to my Kumasawa is Kinzo theory. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> However, this setup looked somehow different from normal chess. Maybe the game was similar, but not identical. And on the other side, sitting back in his chair as he contemplated his next move, was a young man. No, perhaps it wasn't his next move he contemplated. Every once in a while, he would change the positions of the pieces, reconsidering the situation after every change. Maybe he was reconstructing previous games, trying to discover the thought processes behind the moves that had been made. Couldn't be me. 
Absolutely could not be me. No, nev definitely would not spend time on that. In the past, Kinzo, the Ushiromiya family head, once said that learning chessboard arrangements was like taking a journey through the thoughts of the old masters. Ushiromiya Battler was on a journey. A search for the thought process that had led the Golden Witch to create this arrangement and make these moves. Hmm. That does sound like what we were trying to accomplish, so... Battler took a black piece that should have been moved forward and returned it to its original place, sighing deeply. Battler's pieces were white. However, on this chessboard, the black encampment was on Battler's side. He was reconstructing that arrangement, trying to play Beato's role. I fucking called it! <laughs> Didn't I say that, uh, like, a while back that Battler was going to be the one doing the murders at some point? Yeah? I, I just... Is that what's going to happen here? The more I do this, the less I understand your moves. Also, look at my new smug cat face. I know. I was going to say, I don't <laughs> think I've seen this Battler face before, and I really like it. I'm very smug. Even Battler didn't expect that Beato would respond to that statement. Or rather, he was pretending to talk to himself thinking there might still be some chance of her responding. <sighs> Yo, Beato with her hair down? Hmm. Hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Huh. The new art looks way more depressed. Yeah, the new art looks way more depressed. Um. Huh. I like it. Beato's eyes reflected nothing. And her mouth told nothing. Hmm. After begging him to kill her, the Golden Witch had become a corpse that had given up on life. She wasn't sleeping. She couldn't step down from this game and was therefore forbidden sleep. So those words must have reached her ears. However, they probably hadn't reached her heart. <laughs> Must be unreliable narrator. Sounds way too competent for canonically <laughs> incompetent battler, right? Word of God said battler was incompetent. So this this is uh, way out of character. <laughs> the golden witch would not sneer at battler's moves, nor would she praise them nor belittle them. By now, Beatrice was nothing more than a living doll. Even so, she would glance at him every once in a while. It would be an empty glance, but a glance nonetheless. Sometimes she would seem to make some sort of gesture, or even move her lips. However, her movements never managed to communicate anything to Battler. How did you decide on this move in this situation? I don't get it at all. I don't understand your moves. Hmm. Beato, Battler Kun is talking to you. Hmm. Temperamental Beatrice, huh? Say something! Giggle or guffaw or just something! Even use that shrill laugh of yours if you want! Can you believe it? That shrill laugh of Beato's will never be heard again. I can't believe it, actually! I, I, you know what? Part of me has trouble believing that. However, even if she couldn't answer... His voice surely reached her. That was what Battler believed as he said these words. So he said it again. <sighs> How did you decide on this move in this situation? I don't get it at all. I don't understand your moves. She confuses her means for her ends, Battler. Weren't you paying attention? <laughs> So, you don't understand what this child is thinking. <laughs> yeah, that is the problem. Also, our voices probably sound a little different than they do on the actual recordings, because on the actual, on our, like, recordings that we do and then uh, pre-record and edit and stuff, we do some audio processing on our voices. So they probably are going to sound a little bit different than the stuff in the uh, Two Queers Play episodes. We also had, uh, we didn't have these mics then. Yeah, that's, these are also new microphones. We're on separate channels now rather than the same one, so... It will probably sound different if you if it's been a little while since you've been here, but that's fine. 
Virgilia answered in her disciples' stead. Thanks, Virgilia. Up to this point, she had done her best to avoid speaking for Beato. After all, there was a chance that Beato would respond in some way, and Virgilia didn't want to be the one to steal that chance. So, Battler was going to have to bear with this silence, until Beato herself answered. <laughs> Battler, didn't you read the tip screen? The what now? <laughs> Virgilia could no longer bear to watch Battler like this. Besides, Battler also wanted to hear what Virgilia had to say. He believed that conversation would reach Beato's heart. Speaking of the tip screen... What's on the tip screen? Everyone's alive at the moment. We're not going to read through all these right now because I know that's not what we're here for. We'll, we'll do this at the end of the stream, but... Uh, yeah. Beato is no longer on... And the magical side, yeah, okay, that's everyone. Is that layout different? That layout looks different. The layout is different, and everyone, but everyone is still There's here. Oh, wait, witches. no, Angie is not There's here. There's gonna be more witches. That that that's the one we're missing from this is Angie. Hey, the gap. Witches, 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 witches. <laughs> yep, I don't have a clue. The more I try standing in Beato's shoes and moving the pieces like this, the less I understand. A serial murder following an epitaph? With that as a victory condition, I tried reconstructing the games from the witch's side. But that's not the... See, you weren't paying attention to episode two, Tea Party mm -hmm. Battler. That's not the point. That's not the point. But I never ended up making the moves Beato did. In those games, I could find several incomprehensible moves that clearly worked against that victory condition. <sighs> I don't get it at all. This journey through her thoughts is just too rugged. Even so, you won't give up, will you? I won't. I promised. Kill me. Let me die. I promised to let her die peacefully. And I'm the only one who can do it. Was that what he promised? Six years ago? I don't know. I, or is I this a separate from the promise? Episode, I thought this was from the end of episode four, right? Yeah, yeah, that's from the end of episode four. Oh, it's just whenever I hear Battler making a promise, I'm like, yeah. Interesting. I keep my promises, Battler. Battler. <laughs> Every red truth gets Battler if you append Battler's name to it. Beato's right ankle was bound with a heavy, cold steel shackle. It wasn't tied to anything, so it didn't restrict her movement. However, it symbolized restriction. Much like in The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, where your player character has a shackle around their ankle the entire game, despite no longer being attached to anything. <laughs> it's a symbolic shackling. It was a visualization of the bonds that prevented her from leaving the game until she either won or lost. And the shackle was probably hurting her. The mercilessly cold shackle tormented her over and over inside her waking dream. Uh, uh. So there was never any sign of relief in her empty expression. Her eyelids would sometimes tremble like she was having a nightmare, and every once in a while she would let out a pained gasp. Unless I win, Beato will never be released from the curse that prevents her from sleeping peacefully. Are you sure you want to be doing this? It seems the fifth game has already started. <sighs> I'm not interested. Why should I take part in any game unless Beato is my opponent? If that's the only alternative, then it's a much better use of my time to reconstruct previous games while taking a journey in search of Beato's thought process. Oh, Lambda, hello. <laughs> um, I think I was voicing Lambda before, but if she's going to be the GM... Okay. Might I recommend you take over? Sure, sure, sure. Because there's going to be a lot of back and forth. Okay. I'll be the next game master. Any objections? You've got none, right? Wow, okay. 
I've got nothing but objections. Beato conceded the fight and it is un- and is currently unconscious. It's time for super paper? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Beato from Umineko, real not clickbait. Yo, what's up? <laughs> Isn't this a loss by default and game over for her? I'll admit a lot's happened to Beato, and she's basically been KO'd for now, but that doesn't mean she's lost the will to fight. That's why I'm acting as her assistant. Get it? Better learn 80% relatable doing the same strat. <laughs> I, I I feel bad now that we were called out for doing the same strat as the battler in game. I don't like that comparison, honestly. Beato was lying down on a deck chair, almost as though she was sleeping. However, she wasn't sleeping. And she wasn't awake, either. She was nothing more than a living doll that had been given up on victory, who had asked battler to perform her last rites, and who had surrendered everything. Of course, if everyone just sat around the next game, the fifth game would never be made ready. So, Lambda Delta had succeeded Beato as the next game master and announced that she'd prepare the next game. All right, here we go. So, uh, roll for initiative, and rocks fall, everyone dies. What? But I haven't had a chance to do anything yet. Game six? I... Fuck! (laughs) Ryukishu with the hard read on what you would do. I mean, isn't that also what he wants us to do? At least a little bit? (laughs) Uh, I feel like I'm getting called out for trying to play, like, to try and engage with it more. (laughs) I don't know how I feel about that. Quit messing around. This is a game between me and Beato. I don't know who you two are, but I'm not going to let you carry on without us. Is this the first time Battler's spoken directly to these two? Interesting. Yeah, because well, well, he talked to Bernie very briefly in episode two, right? Towards yeah. the towards the end, when he was busy get about to get nommed on. <laughs> but other than that, they haven't approached him directly. They've talked to the player, they've talked to Angie, and they've talked to Bezo. But yeah, like Battler's got no idea who these two fuckers are. No one asked for your opinion. What do you do, Bert? What, what do you Ex- f- accept my challenge or not? What the fuck? It's my picture on the box of the game. Of course my opinion matters. <laughs> Did you think you were the main character? Yes! Idiot. <laughs> <sighs> sure. Go ahead and inherit her role. The hell? Quit messing around. I don't know who you people are, but I'm not going to let you ignore Beato and me and just carry on by yourselves. Hey, take it easy. They talked in episode four. Okay, thank you, Needheart. Okay, sure. A new player means you'll face new kinds of moves. I'm sure you'll see a lot of stuff that confuses you, but even that might lead to some big hints. Get it? Who cares? Quit saying whatever you want and deciding everything on your own. Uh, No. I won't. (sighs) Beato's game has repeated four times, and you still don't understand anything, right? In that case, I expect that swapping out opponents might lead to some huge hints. That's none of your business! This is our game! Beato prepared it, and she designated me to be her opponent. I don't know what hole you two crept out of, but I don't want you screwing things up! In that case, wake Beato up and make her get the next game ready. Can you? (laughs) Beato won't be getting up for a while. Anyway, we don't even need to have another game. The four games she's already laid out are more than enough. And even if we do have some fifth game, there's no reason it shouldn't just be a puzzle Beato lays out and I take on. There's absolutely no reason for you two to butt in. Battler couldn't hide his irritation at the two witches called Lambda Delta and Burncastle, who had shown up well after the game started and who were now trying to take charge on their own. It looked like these witches were of an even higher rank than Beato. So high, in fact, that Beato's teacher, Virgilia, couldn't even come close. <laughs> so high, he could smell it on them right now. <laughs> 
That's just stereotyping. <laughs> but also, yes. <laughs> what did you think higher order being meant? <laughs> well, you don't know, but can I have some? No. Uh, fuck. You won't leave. You won't let me get high. What the hell is the point of this? <laughs> Battler had the feeling he'd seen these two several times before. However, this was the first time he'd known their names and spoken to them directly. <laughs> you can't get the next game ready without waking Beatel. That's why I'll prepare the next game. We aren't so patient that we're willing to wait forever for Beato to regain consciousness. I mean, could you imagine just waiting on the game board for like eight months or whatever? It'd be so long. People would lose interest. Right, Burn? Yeah, that does stretch the realms of plausibility there. I don't like boredom. It really ticks me off. We really don't give a damn whether you're bored or not. Come on now. Leave everything to this perfect Lambda Delta Sama, okay? I'll take over as the Game Master. Don't worry, I won't play with too much absolute perfection. Just like Beato, I'll set up plenty of incomprehensible fakes, clues, and bonus hints. I'll make this game a huge hint that'll help you understand Beato's world even better, okay? <laughs> Letting my voiceless emotions explode, I slammed the table hard. The two witches didn't flinch at all. One grinned. The other looked indifferent as though nothing had happened. The two of them just stared at me silently, as though they were reproaching me. Oh, you're reproaching me? <laughs> What's this? Not satisfied? Are you saying you'll step down from my fifth game? Isn't that a loss by default? Battler won't step down. Of course he'll participate in your fifth game. Don't just decide that yourself. I'm not going to play along with you two. I don't give a shit. Big words for someone who's not even the main character. They're here what for me. The fuck? My face is on the Steam page. <laughs> I have a cool new outfit and everything. Yours doesn't have a pumpkin dip shit. <laughs> you don't even have a fancy dress. How could you be a main character? <laughs> Shit, you're right. Hold on. But what, is there an extra Beato drift somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, then it really is a loss by default, right? The witch side wins this game. Beato has been dissociating for eight months real time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, is it really okay to end this with the human surrendering? Lambda's like ride in MGS2. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> She's totally coming in to ride in this shit. If you step down, the game will end with your loss by default. Get it? If you want to guarantee that your lonely sister always meets with miserable circumstances in an endless number of worlds, that option is indeed open to you. Wow. You want to guarantee that your lonely sister always meets with miserable circumstances in an endless number of worlds. Is she implying that there is indeed some way where Angie doesn't end up, like, sad and alone? <laughs> I don't know if I... Hmm. When Burncastle mentioned Angie, Battler's expression changed instantly. You bastard! Don't you dare talk about Angie so lately! I love that absolutely neither side is on Battler's side. Right? No one, no one, even Battler's side isn't on Battler's side. It's just these two weird, awful lesbians gaslighting him into fighting for their amusement. <laughs> like the meme with the ring of people standing around and the crabs with the knives. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly it. Because you have an ally in me, Burncastle, the Witch of Miracles, there exists the possibility of a miracle in which Angie's family comes home to her. Well, if you do throw that chance away and guarantee that Angie's endless futures all end in sorrow, that might be pretty interesting too. I vaguely understood what she was saying. Until I win Beato's game, I'll remain trapped in this bizarre world. 
And if I abandon that victory, then most certainly my parents and I will never return to Angie. For Angie's sake, even though I know that witches are toying with me, I must keep on fighting. I mustn't run away. 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 <laughs> oh, I'm so fucked up. <laughs> Damn it. What's wrong? You look unsatisfied. Have you already forgotten how angry you were when your sister was turned into mincemeat? You know, that spectacle where she was torn to bits, ripped to pieces by countless red-hot pliers? You'd better watch more closely next time, okay? Burncastle pointed the palm of her right hand upwards. As she did, a pale light gathered there, and some kind of blue glowing crystal appeared there. A scene was reflected on its sharp surface, but it wasn't the scene that surrounded them now. If you looked deep into that crystal, that fragment... Mm. <laughs> oh no, Bird Castle's bringing out the blue meth. <laughs> I've been studying some Walter White. <laughs> Then you would probably learn that what was reflected on that what was reflected on there. Whatever. English is hard. If you stared at it, then you'd surely see the end Angie finally reached after waiting twelve years and giving up everything for the sake of her beloved brother. The scene of her death rose as her entire body was torn to bits where she still lived. Damn you! Stop warping away! Good. No spot dodging. <laughs> Without thinking, he grabbed at her collar, but as soon as he touched that which made up her form, it disappeared like foam on the waves. And then, as naturally as though she'd been there from the beginning, Burncastle was leaning against a distant wall. Wow! Bernie smiling! Wow! If you step down from the game, this will become not just a fragment, but a definite reality. I won't be the one to create that future. You'll do it yourself. <laughs> so, decide, okay? Figure out what you want to do with your beloved little sister's future. Battler's fist shook with anger, but even if he swung them down, he wouldn't be able to hit Burncastle. This witch was like a phantom or a cat who wouldn't even let someone pet her if she didn't wish for it. And she was telling the truth. For Angie's sake, I cannot step down from this fight. Even if these unpleasant witches hijack the game board. <laughs> oh, that's just like you, Burn. You're even heartless when you threaten people. That's how it is, Battler. You aren't allowed to step down from the game board. You and Beato are nothing more than pieces on the board that exist to distract us from our boredom. Even your incomprehensible anger and irritation make for a wonderful treat to satisfy us. Well, what you're doing now only makes for a cheap snack, though. I'm hungry, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Would you like some potato crisps? Yes. They're coming with less per bag now than they usually were. That's fucked up. I with know. certainty. <laughs> They're charging more for less snack food. <laughs> it's what a world we live in. <laughs> Could you imagine what this would be like in 2022? <laughs> like those curry-flavored potato wi- <laughs> I haven't read the next line yet! <laughs> I haven't read the next line yet! <laughs> like those curry-flavored potato wafers that sell for 30 yen a pair. Ah... <laughs> uh, Ah, uh, laughing doesn't come naturally to me. You damn witches! Look at all these new expressions we get for our old artwork. I love it! <laughs> <laughs> Fight for Angie's sake, okay? And for Beato's too, right? In a way that was admonishing or perhaps babying. Like the headache you get after eating something too sweet. Birdcastle tormented Battler and smiled. By now, the host of this tea party, Beato, was absent. The guest witches were already making themselves at home. 
What'll you do, Usharomia battler? Will you surrender to fate? Ugh. Just step down. You've had enough of being toyed with as a witch's piece, right? <laughs> it sure is tough being one of Burn's pieces. I'm sure she'll use you and throw you away, just like she did with Angie. <laughs> I'm not giving you the option of stepping down. Keep fighting for the sake of your sister's future. I'm your ally. Until you win, I'll support you, so you can reach that future. For all eternity. Until I get bored. <laughs> I can't let her provocation and cajolery rile me up. It's a great word, cajolery. Mm. These witches know I get mad easily, and they're trying to take advantage of that. Battler withstood it all and finally relaxed his clenched fists. If you want to start this fifth game of yours, go ahead and do it. Do whatever you want. Yes, I will do whatever I want. I wasn't asking for your permission or anything. I was just bullying you before we start. <laughs> hey, where are you going? To the loo! <laughs> Even though Battler acknowledged this fifth game, he turned his back on them, much to Lambda Delta's surprise. If you're going to be bad to substitute, then I'm sure that Burncastle witch over there can stand in for me if she wants. Not a bad idea. Better than I lost by default, I suppose. What the heck? Are you gonna just ignore this episode five that I put so much work into making? Rude, rude. <laughs> Ryukishi has slammed the delta. <laughs> I can see it. I wrote a whole nother novel's worth of twists and turns for you. Well, the Number four three will surprise worth. you. Have you seen the word count for these things? <laughs> it's fucking ginormous. Who the hell writes this much? <laughs> Battler says he's going to take a break for a while. Until he comes back, I'll be his substitute. How does that sound, Battler? You do that. I'll be over a year playing Tudic. <laughs> it just came out and I haven't had the chance to play it properly yet. It looks really cute. It's got this little fox man in the green tunic with the, <laughs> with the like a shield and he looks very fun. Unlike you two. Bam. Got him. <laughs> What's wrong, Lambda? So you'll refuse to play if it's against me instead of that fool battler? <laughs> of course not. I'm glad I get to play with you, Burn. Come on, let's play, let's play. Let's play together in Lambda Delta Sama's Super Hyper and Cute Episode 5. This is technically a world Beato created. You aren't going to ruin the atmosphere of the story, Just are you? watch me. <laughs> Don't worry I... about that. I'm really good at reading between the lines for that sort of stuff. I made sure to use a Beato-ish atmosphere to make a tale that's even more interesting. Battler, make sure you come back as soon as your break's over, okay? This game's hard. All of the words are in weird moon runes. <laughs> It'd be a shame to miss this. I've set up plenty of bonus hints that'll get you closer to Beato's secrets. Or at least that's what it'll look like when it's actually filled with misdirection that makes stuff more and more confusing. Yeah, that checks out. Wait, hey, Badler, why aren't you listening when a witch is talking? Cute little fucks, man. That's why. <laughs> Without ba answering, Battler disappeared into the darkness. After shrugging and cackling, the witches immediately started playing with the game board they had stolen from Beato. Wow! What the fuck do we make of this? Hmm. Welcome to Cartoon World. Okay. Can those witches really understand Beto's game? Since they're using the same game board, they cannot do anything that this child cannot do. <laughs> Lambda. Hey, Baron, let's put our beds next to each other in Minecraft. Burn sets her house on fire. <laughs> sets her house on fire, but lovingly. <laughs> but lovingly, right? <laughs> sets her house on fire, but sends a heart emoji. There you go. <laughs> They won't listen, you Madoka Magica looking piece of shit. <laughs> uh. 
What do you mean, things that she wouldn't do? The materials of chess exist so that you can play chess. You cannot use them to play cards. Unless it's Turing complete. Lambda tried. However, <laughs> when it comes to throwing chess pieces at your opponent and scribbling on the board, such things are not impossible to do. However, that would be blasphemy against the game of chess. So people choose not to do that. Hmm. That definitely wouldn't be chess anymore. Beato's eyes seem to cloud slightly with sadness. Damn them! This game's between me and Beato. I won't let anyone else defile it. At that time, gold butterflies gathered and Ronobe appeared, holding a tea set with black tea. <laughs> would you like some more tea? If you wouldn't mind. Certainly. So, how goes this journey of yours in search of Milady's thoughts? I don't have a fucking clue, but I'm enjoying it. However, are you sure about this? Is it truly alright for you to relax here? You mean that game those witches just started all by themselves? Indeed. Just now, when I went to serve them some tea, the murders of the first twilight had already taken place. And it seemed as though the next murder would occur shortly. When Beato and I were playing, the game would be paused whenever someone left their seats. However, those witches wouldn't pause that game just because I wasn't around. Renove, did you see their game? Just a part of it. Who was it? Renove lifted the pot high with an elegant gesture as he poured the black tea. After finishing that, he finally spoke. He gave us his impressions of it. It did not have love. What do you mean, love? My apologies. That is how a woman might put it. <laughs> oh, charming sexism, as you understand. As a man, one might call it dishonorable. I understood what those words meant. When I met Virgilia's eyes, she shook her head slightly and stared at the floor. I believe it resembles Milady's games greatly on the surface. Is this... Who's I'd, talking? I believe this is Virgilia, was the implication. However, its foundation is quite different. Does it go against the rules of Beato's game? No, it does not. Lambda Delta Sama actually does understand the rules of Milady's game very well. However... Battler stood up. There was no need to make Ronave say any more. <coughs> oh, sorry. You know how it is with the uh, Usharomia family curse. <laughs> Battler Kun. Sorry, Renove. I know you went to all the trouble of pouring this for me, but tea isn't what I need. So, you will go after all? Yeah. We don't need any outsiders in our game. These guys weren't even here in the beginning. Because I've been loafing about, crazier and crazier wishes have been introduced. And now they're hijacked this game between me and Beatrice? I've gotta take it back! Right now I'm supposed to be the one taking care of Beato's game board. That means I can't just sit around here! Thank you. I wanted to let this child hear those words. I'm sure she hears them. Milady is simply unable to answer. Beato lay there silently like a living doll with dull eyes. The game board she had created herself had been hijacked by incomprehensible people and was being turned into a mess. If I was designated to be her opponent, then Beato must have created this game for me. I've got to take it back. Wait here. I'll go and take it back. Hmm... Of course, Beato didn't respond in any way. That's right. If she can't respond, then I have to protect it in her place. 
I'll be right back. Virgilia, Ronave, I'm counting on you two to look after this golden sleeping beauty. <laughs> yes, leave it to us. See you later, that looker. And please, in the game without this child, try to find some part of her. If you can, then even if this child is absent, it will mean you have fought with her. You're right. <laughs> it's all useless. What am I doing? Let's go. And let's take it back. Kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting, witches. My break is over. When he faced the jet black heavens and yelled this, the whole world shattered as though it were made out of thin glass. Then, as though it had been that way since the beginning, it transformed into that smoking room where Battler fought Beato so many times, in which the two witches had now hijacked. I love that it even is the witches' smoking room. Yeah. Yeah. They're just course. hot boxing it 24 7. <gasps> right? <laughs> what do you think you're doing? You're only coming back now? It's way too late. Not only has the game reached the second day, it's already at the finale. Get it? You never showed up, so I just advanced things on my own. <laughs> yeah, like you even waited for me in the first place. Burn was way more skillful and thrilling than you were, right? If you two were having such a great time on your own, why are you so insistent on getting me back here? Why don't you just go do your freaking weird thing <laughs> together, huh? <laughs> Good, lesbians. Am I right? <laughs> Shut up. I'm the player. You substitute witches can just take a step back now. Well, I don't really mind if you join in starting now, but there's probably no need for you anymore. Seriously. After all, we're already at the climax. After this, Burn will probably corner me and win. What the hell? Nothing wrong with that, is there? Why don't we, we why don't we let him watch the final end game? Of course. Come on over, Usharomia Battler. Yo, Mushroom, welcome to the stream. Glad you can make it. It's almost completely over, but here's the cute and elegant game I made. Episode five. End of the Golden Witch. <laughs> Battler. <laughs> <laughs> I support games, but y'all are so annoying. God bless. <laughs> Did this take us directly to the tip screen? It did. We got to check some fucking tips. Let's check some fucking tips. All right. <clears throat> so So let's start at the top. I know it started us on Kumasawa, but I want to start here and we'll and we'll Ushiromiya Kinzo, the aged head of the Ushiromiya family. Even though it has already been announced that he has just a few months to live, he is brimming with energy. Though he amassed a vast for Wait, are we doing this in character like we usually do? If we want. Aren't isn't yeah. this the same text too? This does seem to be the same text. Yeah, yeah, this is just the same shit. Why why is it so important? Because that folks have died. Right, okay, let's look at the deaths. Usharomia Jessica. My corpse was found in the cousin's room on the second floor of the guest house. The direct cause of my death is unknown, but my neck was sliced open by a sharp blade. Ouch! The wound was deep enough that anyone could easily confirm my death with absolute certainty. Excellent. Okay, so another slashed across the neck death. That's interesting. Howdy, y'all. My corpse was found in a guest room on the first floor of the mansion. A demon stake had pierced through my back. The tip of it reached as far as my lungs. Because I was lying face down on the bed, it's unthinkable that this was a suicide. Ouch. Yeah. Do people in the first twilight usually get staked? Not usually, I don't think. That's interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. That's going to be one less stake for later, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, huh. And also, these all seem disconnected from each other. They do. Oh, no, George was with Jessica here. Okay. I'm Usharomia George. My corpse was found in the cousin's room on the second floor of the guest house. The direct cause of my death is unknown, but my neck was sliced open by a sharp blade. Ouch. 
The wound was deep enough that anyone could easily confirm my death with absolute certainty. Servant Genji. My corpse was found in the servant waiting room on the first floor of the mansion. The direct cause of death is unknown, but my neck was sliced open by a sharp blade. The wound was deep enough that anyone could easily confirm my death with absolute certainty. My corpse was found in the cousin's room on the second floor of the guest house. The direct cause of my death is unknown, but my neck was sliced open by a sharp blade. Oof. <laughs> the wound was deep enough that anyone could easily confirm my death with absolute certainty. Yeah! <laughs> my corpse was found in the cousin's room on the second floor of the guest house. The direct cause of death is unknown, but my neck was sliced open by a sharp blade. The wound was deep enough that anyone would easily confirm my death with absolute certainty. That's interesting. He's a witch. All right, so it seems like we've got. Let, let's take a moment to look at this. We've Blades got for everybody except for, for Hideyoshi. Hideyoshi. Hideyoshi gets a stake. All right, uh, that's good. And everyone else was slashed across the neck deeply enough that it. Okay, cool. These three were all found in the guest house. Oh, shit. I, well, whatever. Okay, that's fine. I didn't need to actually continue on, but whatever. <laughs> it's it's weird that Hideyoshi gets a stake, but also there are more stakes than there are stake uh, parts of the epitaph, so I hmm. guess that's not unusual. I guess we're all vibing in the parlor now. <laughs> I'm LD, caught up with our Umineko playlist just yesterday. Oh my gosh. Impressive. I, I hope he didn't mainline that entire thing, but <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Oh, yo, ZTS already. This is Dead Angle, right? Wow, think... they're really accelerating everything, soundtrack included, huh? I, I mean, yeah. Shit. Right now, no humans exist on this island except for those in this parlor. And with one exception, it has been shown that none of them have committed murder. And the culprit is among these people. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That means it's conclusive, isn't it? Unless the culprit is a witch who committed murder with magic, that is. Wait, hold on, what voice is it? Kiria had like a very breathy kind of like... My voice sounded kind of like this. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was you? You killed George? You killed my husband? Why? Why? I didn't kill anyone. I I didn't. Ugh, my eyeball's gonna pop out of my... Oh, wait, this isn't meta battler anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> Ow, my eyeball's gonna pop out of my eye, eye socket. <laughs> In a panic and with a voice that was far from calm. In a manner that was, to put it coldly, unsightly. Aunt Natsuhi denied the suspicion placed upon her. However, there was no longer any way around it. She stood up, brushed back her long hair, pointed at Aunt Natsuhi, and said it one more time. Who the fuck? Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Who the fuck are you? <laughs> okay, so you're tiny... Obviously a witch or something by the outfit. Is this like witch version of Maria? Or we we've seen witch version of Maria. Is this is this Bernie's stand in? Is this is Ber this Bernie's OC? Is this Bernie's human Sona? What the fuck? Who the hell are you? I rat. <laughs> Why is everyone in chat going rat time? I'm so confused. So that's, what do you what? <laughs> I'm so confused and alarmed. Rat? <laughs> I don't get it. Okay, rat time. Are you in the tips yet? Who the fuck is that? You're not that? in the tips yet. Who the okay. fuck is this? Who the fuck is this? The rat? <laughs> Post this rat? Okay. <laughs> Birdie, this is my original this is my original OC. Do not steal. 
You're the call. I, I guess. I guess. Just uh, we'll give her Bernie voice. I guess. Does that sound? Does okay. that sound okay to people? Okay. <sighs> You're the culprit, Usharomia Natsuhisan. <laughs> Everyone says no, no rat voice. New title screen, new song. Yo, this fucks. No, give her a high-pitched, annoying voice. All right, high-pitched, annoying <laughs> voice it is. Wow, I love that. I love that we've immediately changed gears. Like, <laughs> we used to have like these very somber but epic Italian flavored <laughs> themes, and now we're like, no, this is like season hey, one of an anime. She's in, the, she's in the opening sequence now. Why is she in the opening it's sequence? Like she's always been here. Is, are they pulling like a fucking Buffy with this one? Don't worry, I've always been here. <laughs> That's too close to what I give the gap though, because the gap, yeah. the gap sounds like this. So I need to find like a, a like. <laughs> uh, do you have a squeaky voice you can give this one? I I'm doing the closest I have is what I gave Lambda. Okay. What is that face? Why who stands Undertale? <laughs> Get the hell out of this game. The opening song also sounds like a fucking Steins Gate or something. Kel from Omori, but for, oh, you want Kel from Omori for her voice? I can do that. All right, we can do that one. If if people, this OP, yeah, this OP is great. This this is the Science Gate OP. It really it's it sounds like um. Oh, what's her name? Uh, I can't I can't remember her name at the moment. Uh, Ito Kanako. Ito Kanako, thank you. It does sound a little bit like Ito Kanako. Kel voice is perfect for her. All right, Kel voice it is then. What's Kel voice? Uh, you'll hear in a moment. Okay. It's one I've been working, I've been using in some of my newer uh, streams that I've been adding to my repertoire. It's Natsuhi. Please open up. As she knocked loudly and repeatedly, Natsuhi yelled. Shortly after, there was a heavy clunking sound, and the sound of the door to Kinzo's study unlocking could be heard. So Natsuhi just gets let into Kinzo's study, huh? Huh. I think that means we do have to reevaluate. Yeah. Huh. Well, we are in media rest right now. It could it could be the fact that she was already approached by the people that are conspiring around Kinzo's death, who we affectionately refer to as the KDA. Uh... That would seem to suggest that, wouldn't it? As the door opened, a heavily sweet, venomous odor flowed out. Not so he was always ashamed of how she automatically grimaced at that. So she's used to being in here. Oh my god, we got it so wrong. Yeah, we got, we got it so wrong. We got it so wrong. Natsuhi and Kraus have been in on this Kinzo's dead shit the entire fucking time. They might I feel not like be, an idiot. They might not be in on like the full... like. We're gonna kill people conspiracy, but they've absolutely been in on the fact that Kraus Kraus is a witch. That Kinzo's been dead this entire Kraus time. Kraus is a witch. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Doodling moments from the stream and posting them in the Discord for funsies. Oh well, thank you. We'll look forward to them. Yo, they knew. Yeah, it really feel like I I th I think there's no way out of no that they at least knew about the facade to keep Kraus's death. <laughs> Kraus is the witch of FOMO. Or, Kraus's death, Kinzo's death. Sorry. Um, I don't know if that means that they were in on the planning for the murders and stuff, but it at least knows that they knew that much. <sighs> Even though she thought it rude to the family head. So th okay, and there is someone that they already currently acknowledged the family head. Yeah. Kraus was waiting for her inside the study. Not so he flew into his arms. His father is he. Calm yourself. Nah. Dr. Nanjo is examining him now. Wait, what? What the fuck? What? Yeah, I don't know. Wha Gotta keep reading. Uh, okay. Hold on. With an uncertain gait, not so he walked towards the center of the study, supported by Kraus. 
Kumasawa does get let in here. Interesting. That's important for one of my theories. But. If this is what we think, but it seems like there. we just had a sentence that seems maybe it's not. Yep. A dignified bed fitting for the Ushiromiya family head could be seen, along with Nanjo, Genji, and Kumasawa. Dr. Nanjo is father. After sighing deeply, Nanjo left the side of the bed. On the bed, Kinzo could be seen lying down, asleep. <coughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe we were hasty to jump there, but yeah, yeah, but still, this is still weird, right? Father, father, sobbing, Natsu he slumped over the chest of that man who had fallen into a sleep from which he would never awaken. Unless this is a flashback, <laughs> madam, please stay strong. Father, father, this is just too sudden. Uh. <sighs> Wait, Genji's alive. This is a flashback. Shit, this isn't on the ah! game. This is a flashback. What the fuck? What the so this fuck? Is, so this is what we thought it was. So this is the moment that they figure out that Kinzo is dead. This is the KDA. Holy fuck. We were remarkably close. We were just too off on too strict in some of them. Yeah. Mostly because I thought Kraus was too stupid to keep this secret. <laughs> My Which God. I'm not wrong about. <laughs> Probably Genji had to be his handler. Oh, wow. Okay. Natsu, he couldn't stop crying over the death of the man whom she had loved like a second father. Seen ever since you made the KDA theory? <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that there's payoff. Yo, Burn Castle. We got Bernie in the chat. We got Beato and Bernie in the chat. Yo. <laughs> <sighs> Kumasawa rubbed Natsuhi's back, consoling her. And Kumasawa does appear to be in on the inner circle here. Yeah, that's who, You don't want to know who's absent from this, but who still absolutely had to be a part of it. Shannon and Cannon mm. are not here currently. Crouch slumped into his late father's favorite chair. By sitting there, he might have even immersed himself in memories of his departed father. Or perhaps he thought that by sitting there, he might be able to understand just a bit more of the madness of Kinzo's later years, which he had never been able to comprehend before. And Nanjo, just as he had when Kinzo once sat in that chair contemplating a chess move, turned his back and looked down over the outside world through a crack in the curtains. If only he'd been sick in a bed for a year or so first. I do wish he could have died after a grease period during which the proper arrangements could have been made. It's so irksome of him to die on us so instantly like this. <laughs> Man, I wanted him to suffer a while first. I mean, what's the point if he just kicks the bucket, right? <laughs> I can't believe the answer arc is giving us answers. <laughs> answers in my answer arc? <laughs> You're giggling so much during that part of the episode one retrospective. I'm so glad we could make it funny for you. This is this is good though. We were not we were not a hundred percent wrong. Our speculation was not in vain. No, it, 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 that, that's what we I mean. We were doing and the right even thing. Even though we even though we didn't even though we didn't peg Kraus and Nazi as part of the KDA, we had them as part of the conversation. Yep. And I think that's very important. I think I think that means we. I think that that's that speaks well to our speculation here. You had to hold it in so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't meet my father as an NF. <laughs> Reyna even asked us why didn't we think Kraus and Natsuhi were in on it. <laughs> like, I, I, directly. You did. you did. And I was like, no, Kraus is too fucking dumb. He is There's too no dumb. way. And, I, th and I, I, I do stand by our justification at the time. At, at the moment, we had, from what we had fresh in our minds, we hadn't had a reason to suspect that they had to be in on it. Yeah. But maybe that was too conservative <laughs> of us. Woo! Good times. Good times. At least times. it's as true as far as public appearances are concerned. Nanjo understood that as well. 
Shoromi Akinzo, who had risen like a comet and glittered like a supernova in the post-war business world, had died. His funeral would probably be of a fantastic scale, and it would also be the ceremony marking Krause's inheritance of the headship. He would have to arrange everything as the host of the event to carry out the funeral diplomacy perfectly, and make it clear to all that the Ushiromiya family still had enormous influence in the political and financial spheres. As Nanjo watched Krauss, he was vividly reminded of the time when Kinzo had suddenly been selected as the Ushiromiya family head. When Kinzo had been lost and confused. So Nanjo was around at that time. Interesting. Interesting. In this way, he was able to understand Krauss's distress and sympathize with it. Natsuhi's sobs eventually subsided. Watching this and leaving Kumasawa to care for Natsuhi as a fellow woman, Genji returned to where Krauss was. And, as though asking what should be done, Genji lowered his head slightly. No, so good, I and it was so funny to me that you did so well, but also discounted two of the most likely members based solely on Krauss being a dumbass. It wasn't only that. Could I make Nanjo voice a little more understandable, please? Okay, fine. <laughs> Genji san and I will deal with the formalities. Krauss san, perhaps you could contact the relative first. Is that a little bit more understandable for those of you <laughs> listening in the background? <laughs> Krauss, with his hands still over his eyes, didn't respond. Perhaps even though he had known this day would come, Krauss really couldn't hide his shock at how suddenly it had reached them. <sighs> Leave this to Dr. Nanjo and me. Krauss-sama, I suggest that you first speak with Madam. Maybe she heard that, or maybe it was a coincidence. As though responding to Genji's words, Natsuhi came over. No, even more muffled, like he's clicked. Like he's choking on his own mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting mixed signals here. Nanjo has the sentient mustache enemy from uh, fucking Dungeons of Dreadmore, and it's on his face trying to get him. The mustache isn't natural. That's what it is. That's yeah. what it is. Her eyes were red from crying so much, but she apparently understood the heavy responsibility that had been imposed on them even better than Kraus did. Wait, is this... Is this, this is Nazi. Starting now, you are the head of the glorious Ushromia family. Let us show everyone inside and out that you have splendidly succeeded your father. As your wife, I, Nazi, am prepared to serve you until the day our coffins are laid down alongside each other. Even if that day turns out to be distressingly soon for some reason involving witches. <laughs> for example... <laughs> I think Nanja's voice would be perfect if we got some stock recording of walrus noises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be pretty great. Trying to encourage her husband, who was overcome with shock, Natsuhi lent him some reassuring words. When Krauss finally lowered the hands that had been covering his face, he looked up at the ceiling with a blank expression and let out a deep, deep sigh. Please, stay strong. There are a great many people who will plan to devour everything Father has left behind. We must fight to protect father's honor and wealth. That is the first responsibility of the Ushromia had. Mm, I understand. I do understand. Dr. Nanjo, Genji, please take care of the legal and funeral arrangements. <laughs> Nanjo talks like doctors, right? That was the joke, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was what I was going for originally. Especially you, Genji. I ask that you take particular care and see to it that the funeral will be a fitting one for father. You do understand the concept of love? Nice. Nice. See to it that this will be a fitting funeral for father. For example, one in which a large chunk of the family gets taken with him. That is very specific, but... Some sort of creepy ceremony? Also, I could probably make that happen. Oh, good. I'm, <sighs> I'm sure I won't regret this. Certainly. <laughs> and Dr. Nanjo. Father didn't pass away in a hospital, so... Indeed. An autopsy might be required, depending on the circumstances. Can't you do something about that? 
even though he has passed away. Father's body is precious. Any damage done to it would not be acceptable. I understand how you feel. However, it is also important to deal with these matters properly. And, um, I don't really know how to say this, but several of the relatives might make things difficult, yes? Who knew how those vultures after the inheritance might try to find fault with them? They might claim to have found some reason to suspect the cause of death, using that as a point of contention to start some trouble. Right now, it was important not only to pay Kinzo's remains the respect that they were due, but also to solidify the position of the new family head, Kraus. Understood. Please keep it to an absolute minimum. Make sure that father's dignity is not damaged, even by mistake. That will be fine. Do not worry. In any event, leave Kinzo-san to us and stay by Kraus-san's side. Things will start to get quite difficult from here on out. But the text at the beginning said the difficulty was fairly easy this time. Oh, did it? That was my mistake then. <laughs> I understand. And you too, dear. Please stay strong. Krause was still staring blankly at the ceiling with a befuddled expression on his face. She understood the shock and heavy responsibility he bore. Not so he understood her husband's feelings as much as anyone. I will contact the relatives. Please rest for the time being. Don't tell me this was all Krause's idea. <laughs> because he was too afraid to start taking responsibility? <laughs> really? Alright. Alright. Natsuhi, thinking him to be just a bit unreliable at the moment, decided she must offer her support. Seeing her husband like this actually spurred Natsuhi to action, and a resolute expression rose to her face. Things will get busy from now on. Let's start by doing whatever we can right now. Let's, for example, stock up on Halloween candy for some reason. I'm sure my husband wants to have some time alone with father. We should step out for a moment. Kraus absolutely going to refuse to take responsibility. Yeah, yeah, you will. Oh, that's a good point. After all, this will probably be the last time he gets that chance. Ooh. Being in charge of a funeral is tiring work. There is no time to shed tears. If Cross were ever to be given time to cry for his dead father, that time would have to be now. Everyone agreed with Kumasawa's words. Even so, Kraus continued to blankly gaze up at the ceiling and didn't respond in any way. Not so he urged the servants to go. I'll go talk to Jessica, too. That child is now the successor to the headship. I'll make sure to tell her to be fully prepared. So does this time, does, is this implying that, like, every time we've heard people refer to Kinzo and Kinzo's actions throughout the game, that's been... Kraus? Doesn't seem like it, seeing as we have that yeah. whole scene with uh, Kinzo bullying Kraus, lifting him up by his ear. Right. Gotta be something more complex going right. on there. Right. It still seems like there's someone else that is Kinzo. Or... Maybe not that. Just seems something complex is going on. Yeah. Rather than Krause's Kinzo. Wait. They each started to make their way out of the study. Krause finally spoke. They stopped walking. I have a plan. We kill the Batman. <laughs> really funny actually yes wait yes <laughs> <laughs> hadn't she already stopped walking just like her husband had asked but despite that he told her once again to wait from those slightly weak words not so he understood that he'd probably stopped her because he wanted her to be by his side The rest of you, downstairs. I will stay with my husband. Please call us on the phone if anything happens. Certainly. I thought I told you to wait. Did you just start getting southern accented too? Nah. It's, it's spreading. I haven't done this accent in a very, very long time. <laughs> it's not coming back naturally to me. 
When Kraus suddenly raised his voice, everyone jumped around and turned. Unable to comprehend what she had done to spark her husband's wrath, Natsuhi ran up to him. What's wrong, dear? <laughs> Southern Natsuhi in 2015 fan animation papyrus are the best voices for Natsuhi and Kraus, and you simply adore it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you agree. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's wrong, dear? Have I said something rude? If so, please forgive me. No, that that's not it. That's that's not it at all. Wait, wait a second. G g give me some time. Yes, I understand. It's important to sort things out inside your heart. We were just gonna leave this place in silence to give you some time, okay? Really, already seems like Nazi he wears the pants in this family, huh? Yeah. And I'm telling you to wait before doing that. Listen up. No one move. Not even an inch. If you're tired, then feel free to sit in whatever chair or sofa you want. So just stay quiet and don't talk. Don't do anything. Those unreasonable words felt like a glimpse of how Kinzo used to be. Natsuhi couldn't hide her slight surprise at this behavior, which almost made it seem as though Kinzo had possessed her husband. The witch madness spreads to the family head. It's like the fucking uh, yeah. being president of the literature club in Doki Doki. <laughs> <laughs> wow, spoilers for like a half decade old game, but still. Oh, God damn it. I always forget that people haven't watched all our shit. People, I mean, I'm assuming that if people are, the, they, they know the twist behind Doki I'm Doki. I'm sorry point, for right? spoiling fucking Doki Doki Literature Club. I hope wow. you can forgive me. This is the second time, it... this is the second time I've done that on a live stream. This is the second time. I'm so sorry. If you keep doing this, you're going to create a Doki Doki panic. <laughs> Not so he told the servants to wait for the time being. She ordered them to sit on a sofa a short distance off, <laughs> approached her husband, and spoke to him in a small voice. If you order it, I will wait however long you ask. I won't move. <laughs> what do you mean half a decade old? Shut up. <laughs> I, I'm not wrong. <laughs> so, please, try and calm yourself. No, that's not it. That's, that's not it. <sighs> was it really blood, or was he actually being possessed? Krauss's disorderly style of speech strongly resembled Kinzo's. Maybe that is the implication. Hmm. It's, it, it, it's certainly giving us some fuel for that here. As she watched this, Natsuhi became certain that Krauss was Kinzo's son after all, and that he was the true successor more suitable than any other person. <laughs> Did someone say Jack Krauss gets bagged? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Natsuhi, come here. Krauss stood up and headed towards the window, trying to lengthen the distance between himself and the servants, waiting on the sofa by even a small amount. Not so he realized that he must have something secret to discuss. That's why it took so long for... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear, what is it? <sighs> the chat is talking about pegging, and I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> don't worry your pretty little head over it. <laughs> All right, if we you can... say... <laughs> we can explore that later. Y yes, honey. Father Dying is... <laughs> bad. But he has already passed away. We cannot turn back time. That is not it. It is bad that it happened now. What do you mean? I've been putting Father's fortune up as collateral. <laughs> I won't be able to hide it when the division of the inheritance comes into question. Laval. It was that. It really was just that all along? Laval. Really? Laval, Laval. I thought for sure that was a feint. All right. I guess that's just... I, I guess so, that... Take the dub, right? Okay. So we were wrong for what we were skeptical of Krausab. He really is too stupid to keep shit under wraps. It's just that this is what was going on. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> but this makes sense, though. I'm cool with this. Yeah. I'm cool with this. The best part is coming. Settle down, settle down. What? The double faint. 
collateral, you say? How much? You remember how I helped out Kondokun back in Melody Land? Didn't I tell you to break ties with that person? Who the fuck is this? I thought you said you'd refused him. Why? There is such a thing as a man's honor. I couldn't refuse. Krauss claimed to hold honor as a virtue. However, Natsuhi knew that he most often used this as an excuse for when he reluctantly went along with some deal that he just couldn't refuse. Is this new theme Krauss's dipshit theme? I love Krauss's dipshit theme. Yeah. That w wouldn't be a problem if we had plenty of money on hand, but didn't you borrow quite a lot of money for the plan to turn this island into a resort? Krauss is the gift that keeps on giving? Yeah, he is. Yes, I did. And there were people here and there who lent me a hand along the way. If I'm going to repay them, I can't just sit around on my hands. You need money to repay people. You need money to make money. You can't even get started without money. And even the plan for this island would be proceeding smoothly if only there hadn't been problems with the planning company. I made contact with the government official in the city. I even got the governor's word that this would become the newest travel destination in the Tokyo metropolis. Because <laughs> minor outlying islands of Japan generally get wrapped in with Tokyo metropolis. Mm. I learned this. That's a real fact. The groundwork and laid was completely perfect. Random chance and bad timing were against me. It was just a bit of bad luck. Like a traffic accident. That was no accident. <laughs> Happy Maria? Nah, Kraus dipshit theme. <laughs> yeah, basically. It was fraud. You were tricked. They were never drawing up plans for turning this island into a resort in the first place. That's not true! Ishikata kun's vision was simply overflowing with foresight. The way his eyes always focused on the whole world and the future taught me that things I believed to be mere dreams were only the tip of the iceberg of what was possible. Expand your what the fuck, Kraus? Kraus is so much stupider your dreams. than I thought. Oh, oh my god. god. Kraus. What a gullible fuck. You massive dipshit. <laughs> to the whole world. To the future. You heard him say that too, right? Yes, I heard, and I think I remember telling you what I thought after we returned home. I said that he was suspicious. That he only spoke dreams and didn't have his feet planted on the ground. And that you must not have any further relations with him. <laughs> but Natsuhi, don't let your memes be dreams! Here's <laughs> a Katakun is a wonderful, pleasant young man. One could learn a lot from the way he lives. I can respect him despite his youth. I won't have you insulting him. That's what you said about the whole moon tourism thing. What? What? No! 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 No, 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 no. Don't tell me Kraus was... <laughs> Don't tell me Kraus was taken into paying for moon tourism. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> <laughs> That's why all those to the moon memes were so funny. That's so good. Oh my god! <laughs> wow! Wow! You! There is so much payoff in the answer arcs, and it's been an hour only. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> what a moon. Yeah, right? <laughs> I pissed on the moon, you idiots. <laughs> wow. Diamond Hands, Crypto Bro Crafts. We were so right. Oh, man. You kept saying it was visionary, that it looked to the future, that it had high aspirations, and what was the end result? <laughs> Umineko is a very serious murder mystery novel. 
Eventually, you yourself admitted that it was utter nonsense, right? I was sure something was wrong ever since that strange man showed up claiming to be a high-ranking NASA official. Not even JAXA, it's NASA. Well, I guess it's the 80s, but still. That foreigner was nothing more than an international swindler. Both Mr. Sonazaki and I were... Oh. That foreigner was nothing more than an international swindler. Both Mr. Sonazaki and I were victims in this case, but right now his vision isn't mistaken. In the future, there will surely come a time when the richest people in the world develop a liking for space travel. Wow. Wow. He's not wrong, but not in the way you think. Oh. Oh. Hold on. I just, I need a moment. <laughs> just having visions of Bezos in his fucking stupid near space ship. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, man. And the very first enterprise in that area will probably be monopolized by a single private company. I can't believe that Ryukishi 07 predicted the existence of Elon Musk. <laughs> wow. That viewpoint is not mistaken. That was simply a group of international swindlers who were trying to take advantage of that fact to deceive investors across the world. And I'm trying to tell you that this Sonazaki man was one of them, too. Poor Kraus born 40 years too early. God. Finished episode four just around the time of the Bezos space shit. Yeah, it's... Oh, man. <sighs> oh. Just how gullible are you? Why do you always just accept these suspicious offers without any doubts? Take that! Oh, also, there's he's apparently slapping Natsuhi for this. Wow. Yeah, in case you had missed the sound effects. <laughs> Kraus is definitely beating Natsuhi during this. Take that back! Mr. Sonazaki is a man with brilliant future out of him. There is nothing suspicious about him. Nothing at all, because of the dreams he speaks of anticipate the future, they sound crazy to people who can't see into the future. A woman like you can't see into the future. Yes, a woman like me can't see into the future, but I can see the present. By the way, uh, hoping uh, uh, someone would tell us if the music was off here, since the music is much louder than it was before, but looks like it's all good. Right in front of me, I can see a pitiful husband who's been taken in by sly, double-crossing swindlers and still trusts them implicitly even after he's been tricked. By the way, he isn't slapping Natsuhi? Uh-oh. Okay. He could just be slamming the table. I guess, yeah. Shut your mouth! You don't understand anything about money or business or economics or business transactions! <laughs> Don't try to butt in on your husband's job. A wife should be satisfied with doing housework. Housework, I say. Keep your mouth shut. <sighs> wow. Without another word, Natsuhi fell silent, just as Kraus had hoped she would. She was already far beyond anger and sadness. And the emotion that lay on the other side of those was an almost indifferent pity. Kraus, who had been in awe of Kinzo since he was very young, had started to subconsciously admire the way his father lived. Without realizing it, he had come to believe that he could only be recognized as a man in his own right if he surpassed his father. Whip crack is just not to he veins popping. Okay, sure. However, Kinzo had been a mad genius, the likes of which had never before been seen in the Usharomia family's long history. His talent was a gift from heaven, and it definitely was not genetic, much less something that could be learned. To give the two of them a chance to talk alone, Natsuhi told the servants not to tell anyone about Kinzo's death, and they left the room for the time being. In fact, the servants are still there. Oh yeah, nah. They left now. And then she invited Kraus to her bedroom and made him to tell her everything about their current financial situation. These were things that Natsuhi hadn't been told about under the assumption that a woman had no business knowing. Natsuhi had herself, had herself made a point of avoiding this area in the past, thinking that it wasn't a wife's place to intrude on such matters. However, she was also far smarter than Kraus was, apparently. This also might have been meant that she had abandoned her duty as a wife to protect her family. 
Are the servants in this room too? We didn't see Shannon and Cannon in that room. Uh, they didn't mention anything about the ser or they didn't mention anything to tell us about other servants in that room. Yeah. Like we assume Shannon and Cannon are in on at least some of the facade because they're allowed into Kenzo's study. Yep. So by necessity, right? But the depths of the sin had been made quite clear to Natsuhi. Krauss was probably tired of trying to defend himself. Perhaps because he had gotten a headache and he hid his face and sank into silence. <laughs> they got a peck? It's 4 p.m. <laughs> Not so he noticed that the water in the electric kettle was boiling and stood up to refill her cup with black tea. God, I wish I had. So not so he has a kettle, electric kettle in her room. Nice. Uh, important detail. Yeah. Uh, Chekhov's kettle right there. Um, okay, but we had this discussion <laughs> about random tiny details that yeah. show up once and then d solve something later on. Yeah. yeah okay. I just, just, I'm going to keep pointing them out. God, I should have put my kettle on. God. Yeah, we could have tea. Yeah, and we didn't. Whose fault I've got is that? Yours? I have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> when she touched the cup of black tea, she noticed for the first time. The sound of the cup and saucer clinking together told her that her fingers were shaking. Kras had built up a large debt to obtain funds for his various projects and to cover the losses when they failed. Of course, he had put the mansion and property up as collateral. Oh, shit. However, doing such a thing above board would result in the mortgage being registered. In other words, there would be a record that Kras had put Kinzo's wealth up as collateral to obtain the loan without anyone's permission. Kinzo, Ava, and the others must not learn of such a thing. Oh, they're, they're speaking about like in, in, in like when Krauss was doing this. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Sorry, the, the use of Kinzo's name here was yeah. Specifically Ava. Because I guess they understand that Ava's the one that's on that's on his case. Mm-hmm. Therefore, Krauss had been putting those assets up as collateral using the worst possible method. I signed over the deeds and the power of attorney. And what does that mean? What Cross was saying probably meant that he had, in essence, signed away the rights to his assets. If these assets had been used as collateral for a loan, then Cross would still have some leeway under the law. He would have to deal with a bank, which would have absolutely no compassion, but they would be able to work something out within the rules set by society. However... Signing away the deed in the power of attorney was a whole different story. Holy fuck! She slept in a guest room in episode one? Shit, I didn't even notice that. There was already hints that early that there... Oh, wow. That's good shit. In other words, even the mansion they were living in. The person holding the deed were to decide to ignore his agreement with Krauss. And sell the mansion to a third party right at this moment. They would have no recourse whatsoever. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> Far from using his collateral for a loan, this was basically the same as selling their house to borrow money. They are so... They are much more fucked than I could have ever thought of! <laughs> wow! In other words, the moneylenders have the power to make or break the Usharomia family as they please. <coughs> if they were to suddenly sell our house on some slight whim, we'd have to pack our bags and leave right now, wouldn't we? Episode 5 is welcome back to the Ryukishi Mind Torture Dungeon. <laughs> Fuck yeah, okay. That is technically true! However, everyone I have done dealings with is very reputable. This isn't consumer financing. It's a transaction based on trust between economically literate men. <laughs> <laughs> you sure about that? You sure that's a fact, Kraus? I trust them. And they, in turn, trust that by lending me money, I will achieve great success in business and give them massive returns on their investment. I signed over the power of attorney as a sign of good faith so that they wouldn't have to doubt in the certain success of my business. And what happens if I hesitate now? <laughs> Ryukishi really managed to go, hey, isn't this guy such an idiot? And five minutes later, just go, lambow. <laughs> what does that mean? Even I have no confidence in my own business?
If you were such a successful businessman, we wouldn't be in debt now, would we? Natsuhi so only barely stopped herself from saying that. Father is dead. What happens next? Will your debt be exposed to the light of day, and will your siblings hold you responsible? That won't be all. It'll probably lead to criminal charges. Criminal charges? Why is that? It's better if you don't know. I'm not so sure that it is better that way. Yeah, yeah, I, you sure? I've been keeping things from you for a very long while now, and it <laughs> seems to have worked out swimmingly. <laughs> anyway, this must not be learned by anyone. <sighs> Crouch looked at the floor shamefully, shaking his head over and over. <sighs> if it would come to criminal charges, then he must have broken some laws. He's probably been so intent on raising a large sum of money that nothing had mattered to him but survival. Kraus had seriously believed that he would succeed with several businesses and that he would definitely gain huge profits. So he had figured that even if he had stepped over a few legal lines, he would be able to pay everything but back before too long and pretend that the whole thing had never happened. This may have been the factor that lessened his resistance towards breaking a couple of laws. And now Kinzo's death... The worst possible thing had occurred, and they wouldn't be able to keep it all hidden for long. What will happen to us? Oh, welcome to the stream, Escori. There's uh, no need to worry. <laughs> you may not believe it, but conditions are most certainly on the rise now. <laughs> <laughs> the green line go up. It's... <laughs> Hashtag Hodel Gang. The, the number always goes up. <laughs> buy the dip, Natsuhi. Buy the dip. <laughs> the value of the city real estate I invested in will rise rapidly. Right now I'm working on a project to integrate those and construct a massive business tower. It will be the most reliable of all my investments so far and will prove to be the most successful. Now it will take a little more time before that to bear fruit. It is absolutely certain... Absolutely certain. <laughs> certain? But that doesn't mean it will happen now. Will the success of that venture be enough to pay back our debts? Of course it will. I'll be able to wipe out all the debt I've accumulated so far. So have faith in me. I only need a little more time. Give me just a little more time. I don't know do, that one. Do, 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 do. I, don't no. know, I don't know what you're doing. No? I know the Pink Floyd song time. <laughs> I forget I forget who did this song. All right. Well, are you going to read your line? or? But father is already dead. We don't have that kind of time anymore, do we? I know. I know that. That's why I have to obtain money from somewhere and pay off those debts right now. <sighs> anyway, I need money. Money. A lot of it. And right now. This might sound familiar if you've recently played episode one. Give me just a little more time by chairman of the board. I don't know what that is, but I'll believe you. Nah! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Skeletor voice. <laughs> as Cross roared and clutched at his head, he writhed about as if in pain. As she watched, several emotions swirled about in Natsuhi's chest. Her emotions conflicted as she felt pity for her husband while also feeling that he was a fool. And she felt a mixture of resentment and regret towards her own irresponsibility and letting her husband run wild for so long. Even if this day hadn't come, it should have been clear that they were in a very critical situation. And yet he had carelessly waited for this moment to come and was now writhing about. Her husband was so foolish and so pitiful. It would be easy to let herself get fed up with this. However, she was his wife. For a wife ridiculing her husband as a fool would run in conflict with her responsibilities. If he was a fool, then she would have to support him enough to compensate. However, she didn't have a clue what she should do. Since there had been such a massive amount of money within arm's reach, it was only natural that Krauss had tried to dip his hands into it. By the dip, as it were. Huh. <laughs> it would also be easy to tell him that to be a man and give up on all of it, but 
That would also run in conflict with her responsibilities. She was Ushiromi Natsuki, the woman who had become Krauss's wife and sworn to support him, the new head of the Ushiromiya family, for her whole life. She had to somehow help her husband in his efforts to raise money. She understood it logically, but she couldn't suppress the indescribable dejection that seemed to rise up from the dark depths of her heart. Th th that's right! F f father's hidden gold! Ten tons of gold is worth 20 billion yen! <laughs> if I had that! That's right, if I had that, all of our problems would be solved! Natsuhi, that's it, the witch's epitaph! Let's solve that, let's solve it together! We can just find the gold, everything will work itself out! That's right, it must be hidden somewhere on this island! If we had that, if we had that! That hurts, dear, please stop it! Uh oh. Let's give this character the papyrus voice. Ends up being an unerotic moron tourism investor who would. Moon tourism investor who would be a crypto bro and Elon Musk fanboy if he was live today. Yeah, it just turned out well, didn't it? It, yeah. just, it just worked out. It just worked out. One of those Hail Marys that just. It, it, it's serendipity, perfect. I believe. Honestly, now pulling a shotgun on a witch is the least impressive thing she's done. Right? <laughs> Fucking hell, Natsuhi. Krauss, acting as excited as if he'd thought up a perfect, brilliant plan, grasped Natsuhi's upper arms tightly. Natsuhi couldn't help but be dumbfounded. She wasn't just taken aback because she'd heard him bring up something as fake-sounding as the hidden gold. This was Krauss, who usually mocked the story of the hidden gold, saying that it didn't exist and that it was an all an illusion after his father created to borrow a lot of money. That was why Natsuhi was doubly taken aback. Yes! Let's, let's have Jessica help us, too! Maybe some things can only be solved with the child's sensitivity. Uh, this is a family crisis, after all. All of us have to stick together. Yes, yeah, it's a, fa a fanciful riddle that father created. We should be able to solve it, and there's no reason we shouldn't. We wouldn't be able to solve it. it it's the only way. Oh, Natsuhi, this is wonderful. We still have an option left and right here next to us. The gold is on this island. If we had it, every one of our problems would be solved. <laughs> Natsuhi, call Jessica here right away. Let's overcome this family crisis together. Yes, right now, the gold is on this island. It is right beside us. Nah. Unable to withstand the pain in the arm he was twisting in his excitement, Natsuhi knocked Kraus aside. Kraus tripped over the edge of the bed and flopped over onto the floor. Please get a hold of yourself. And please calm down. Do you really think that this Ushirombia family crisis could be solved by something as dreamlike as that? <sighs> Natsuhi... Please cool your head and think of a realistic plan to gather money. I'm going to go cool my head as well. Wait! Wait! Natsuhi! <sighs> Maybe he had come to his senses the instant he fell over. Kraus tried to tell Natsuhi to stop, but she just kept walking. After closing the door forcefully, Natsuhi dashed away. Natsuhi ran through the corridor. Ow. I mean, I feel no pain as I am a <laughs> servant of the Ushiromiya family. <laughs> Even though she didn't want anyone to see her like this, she ran headlong into Genji. My deepest apologies. This is the most emotion I have shown throughout this entire series. <laughs> Madam, have you been injured? I'm fine. Leave me alone. Certainly. Oh, Genji. How are things going in Father's study? It is just as you left it, although Dr. Nanjo is in the parlor. Is that so? Do you have the key to the study? Yes, right here. Give it to me. Let me have some time alone with Father. If my husband asks where I am, tell him you don't know. Certainly. After grabbing the key to the study that Genji was holding out to her, Natsuhi rushed up the stairs. She then flew into the study, finally let out a wail, and cried. F 
father. Please forgive our foolishness. My husband and I aren't capable of inheriting all that you created. Please, please forgive us for our foolishness and our crimes. And if you can forgive us, please guide the way for us fools. Clinging to Kenzo as he slept in the bed, Natsuhi cried even harder. She kept imagining Kenzo sitting up suddenly and patting her head. <sighs> no, father isn't the type of person to pamper. More likely he'd yell at me to stop being so nosy. Noisy, even. However, neither of these imaginations came true, because it was an undeniable fact that Kinzo had entered an eternal sleep. But even so, Natsuhi begged the sleeping Kinzo to forgive and help them. It was only still a few hours after his passing. Perhaps his soul was still here listening to her. Believing this, Natsuhi begged for Kinzo's forgiveness and help even more earnestly. Too noisy. Haven't I always said that I hold silence as a virtue? Oh, no. Huh? Oh, no. That voice made Natsuhi jump up in surprise. Oh, shit. I told you, it was Pinky. See, the <laughs> Pac-Mans were here all along. <laughs> When she faced in the direction that the voice had come from, she saw Kinzo sitting at the study desk, folding up his reading glasses. Did you get in a fight with Kraus again? Oh my fucking god. Natsu, he has been fucking imagining Kinzo as a... Kinzo is a comfort to Natsu? <laughs> That's the fucked up part about this. So, she does have to deal with Kraus every day. Okay, yeah, and this imagined version of Kinzo as the perfect family head. I can see that. <laughs> because that's what she wants more than anything, right? To be, like, a legitimate part of the family and be important and useful. Kinzo may be a violent, insane, sexist jerk, but he at least has the courtesy to stay locked up in his fucking study. Right? So, like, <laughs> sh has she really been, like, using this imagined version of Kinzo as, like... Kinzo as a comfort is incredibly cursed and tragic. Yeah, the copium is... I, I do believe this is the first and only time I will ever fi I find that the phrase copium is is relevant. <laughs> Ugh. Did you get into a fight with Kraus again? Neglecting his wife like that. That Kraus only inherited my bad traits. <laughs> Father. What a wretched looking face. Wash it. Aren't you the wife of the successor of the Ushiromiya family? You mustn't let the servants see you wear such a shameful expression. And this explains everything that was going on when Natsuhi was in the study. Yep. She was doing this. That's why Kinzo was so eager to be like... Truly, you bear the golden wing engraved on your, your heart. heart. Because, because, of course, the, like Kinzo or anyone pretending to be Kinzo wouldn't be, be like that. Of course, only Natsuhi's fucked up comfort version of Kinzo would act. Fuck! <laughs> oh, shit! I, I gotta admit, I did not expect to have this pay dividends so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, it'll, it'll drip feed us some stuff now, right? Now no. I'm really alarmed no. at how the remainder of this and the three following games will be. Yeah. <laughs> yes, father. My apologies. Natsuhi understood. This was just an illusion, one that Natsuhi had created out of her desire to speak with a memory of Kinzo as he once was. No, that wasn't it. She believed that, just for now, Kinzo's soul had shown itself to her. She was sure that doubting this would cause it to vanish in an instant. <laughs> it seems that at the instant the family headship was passed on, the family has reached a crisis. <laughs> yes, father. I wasn't able to support my husband. I am truly very sorry. Hmm. The Ushiromiya family is so very cursed. <laughs> you don't say. It was in a terrible state See, when, when I, I succeeded the headship too. <laughs> oh shit, it's happening to me. It was in a terrible state when I succeeded the headship too. That makes your suffering seem almost cute in comparison. <sighs> uh. 
Kinzo's succession to the family headship had come suddenly. At the time, he had been nothing more than a single young man from a branch family, far separated from the Ushiromiya main family. The main family might have had honor and tradition, but Kinzo had nothing to do with that. Then the principal members of the main family were wiped out in the great Kanto earthquake, along with their businesses. On top of that, there had been a complicated antagonism between members of the family at the time, and the elders had all tried to impose their will on the others in that sinking ship. Because of this, they weren't even able to elect a leader to revive the Ushiromiya family. They then found a common ground and selected Kinzo, a youth with absolutely no ties to any of the opposing elders, to be head. So the elders hadn't really entrusted Kinzo with the rebuilding of the Ushiromiya family. Kinzo had been nothing more than their puppet, with his arms and legs pulled in opposite directions. Yes. Really? So this whole mythos about Kinzo being a business genius was a fabrication as well. I don't it was know just, about that. We're he, not... he was the the young and selected by a, a, the, the group of elders around him. I don't know. Hmm. We've only got the first part of the story right there. True, true. Yes, I know a lot about your days of suffering, father. And then the war started. At the time, I was already tired of life. I hoped I would die on the battlefield, but I wasn't sent to the front lines. Really? Hmm. However, the state of the war grew worse with every day, and the time for the decisive battle on the Japanese mainland seemed to grow ever closer. As terrible as it may sound, I prayed for that day to come quickly. Also, thank you for rot 13 ing spoilers. I know I didn't uh, post it in the thing this time, but yeah, if you're going to talk about spoilers and stuff, make sure you rot 13 after listening to the approaching footsteps of that reaper day in and day out, it is said that Kinzo started cutting his ties with this world one by one. And then, on that day when he had severed all of his regrets, when he had reached a state of enlightenment, it is said that he had a mystical experience. It is said that he met her, the Golden Witch Beatrice. Sup, that's me. <laughs> hey, you're not speaking yet! <laughs> Are you? Did that work? No. Shit! <laughs> I made a contract with the witch and was given the power of gold and madness. On that day, the old me died, and a new me, possessing the insane power of magic, was born. I know. And after the war, you used your ingenious cunning to revive the Ushiromiya family. The now deceased elders who knew Kinzo at the time had whispered to each other that Kinzo must have bumped his head on the battlefield and returned with a different personality. That was how much Kinzo had stood out after the war. Whether the story about Kinzo meaning a witch was true or not, there could be no doubt that the extraordinary experience of a war had prepared him for death and let him reach a state of enlightenment. If he wanted to describe the mystical experience following all that as a meeting with a witch, then that claim certainly shouldn't be dismissed out of hand. That's right. You returned from the war, conquered the witch Beatrice, and became the head of the Ushiromiya family in the truest sense. Weird verb to use, but all right. Correct. Before I met Beatrice, I was nothing more than a puppet, only the head in name. I only became the head after conquering the Golden Witch. Father, um... Will this golden witch aid my husband Kraus now that he's the new head? Oh, she will. Assuming that he has truly succeeded the headship. What do you mean by truly succeeded? I mean, it depends on whether he bears the responsibility and pride of the Ushiromiya family head in the truest sense. Natsuhi, you should understand this. The headship is not inherited by blood. It is inherited through spirit and conviction. Yeah, your yeah, your mental Kinzo would tell you that, wouldn't he? Even though Kraus is my eldest son, he cannot be called the true head if he does not possess these things. And if that spirit were to dwell in a human, even someone other than Kraus, they would make a splendid new head. Is not Sahi Kinzo? <laughs> I, I think we have a pretty good explanation of that, though, right? Kinzo is being imagined. 
by Natsuki here. There doesn't need to be someone who is Kinzo, right? No, there does, because there's one, remember, there's one scene in episode two where we get a first-person narration from the person support purportedly being Kinzo. Hmm. Which is, which would be weird to explain in any other way, unless there was someone who had succeed, who was succeeded as Kinzo and was being presented that way. Hmm. And if that spirit were to dwell in a human, even someone other than Kraus, they would make a splendid new head. Beatrice will lend her power to that true head. Just picking up and choking the fuck out of Kraus? See, I can do that. I can believe that. Isn't that right, Beatrice? Yo! It her! When Kinzo called the witch's name, gold butterflies seethed out of every corner of the room. This fantastical scene had an otherworldly beauty to it. It was like standing in the midst of a blizzard of golden flower petals being blown about a rose garden of gold. As Natsuhi stared at the scene in shock, the gold butterflies gathered and formed a human shape. Sup, I just like woke up. Can someone fill me in on what's going on? <laughs> I feel like I slept for like eight months. <laughs> <laughs> then the witch of the portrait appeared. Indeed. I'm the Ushiromiya family alchemist, the golden witch Beatrice. I am free to run rampant. I listen to no one's orders. God, even her characterization here feels weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> and there's only one person in the world who can control her. Me. That is why I'm qualified to be the Ushiromiya family head. <laughs> So, it's that pride of yours that qualifies you? Pride requires self-confidence and bravery. And it is the embodiment of the insatiable desire to gain power to match those traits. That is why I control you. Pride requires self-confidence and bravery. Body it is the embodiment of the insatiable desire to gain power to match those traits. Okay. Fucking capitalism, bro. Watching men who speak of pride turn those desires into reality can be quite pleasant. The quiet man of action is nothing more than an excuse used by the extremely lucky. <coughs> A true monarch also speaks of what he doesn't have, and he makes that pride a reality without fail. If one is to control me, they must possess such a monarch's pride. Do you understand, Nazi? A true monarch fears no hardship. They declare that they will overcome anything without fail, even if they haven't yet figured out how. This gives hope to the weak. They gather, revere the monarch, and swear to assist him. This is where power is gained and his word is carried out. Engrave that into your heart. Carve it into your soul, kid. Thank you. <laughs> yes, father. Natsuhi understood. Through this mystical experience, Kinzo was telling her how to prepare herself to overcome hardship, even after his own death. Feeling a warm sensation rise up in her chest, she let the valuable words Kinzo had given her echo through her mind over and over. A true monarch... In other words, the true head of the Ushiromiya family must not fear hardship. Such a person must believe they can overcome any hardship. If they can't even believe it about themselves, then they'll have no chance of overcoming their challenges. The true head of the Ushiromiya family, huh? She suddenly felt very ashamed of the way she'd entered this room, sobbing and asking Kinzo what to do. I was foolish. Of course, there's no time for crying when an Ushiromiya family crisis is upon us. And now that we've inherited the Ushiromiya family from you, Father, we must protect its honor no matter what. <laughs> even though you can't even draw a blueprint on how to repay Krauss's debts? <laughs> Beatrice <laughs> laughed unpleasantly. No, that wasn't it. She was testing Natsuhi to see whether she possessed the mental readiness to be a true monarch. Not so he wasn't confused anymore. She answered clearly, gazing into Beatrice's eyes. Yes. At this moment, I have not yet discovered the method we should pursue. 
However, my husband is the new head of the Ushromia family, and I am his supporting wife. So I will proclaim it in my husband's place. <laughs> Let us hear it. Ushromia Kraus and Natsuhi will definitely overcome these trials and protect the honor of the Ushromia family. You have nothing to worry about, father. Do you know the scope of Krauss's debt as well as the horrible state things are in? Yes. If the worst happens and we are ordered to leave this mansion tomorrow, we won't be able to refuse. During the distribution of the inheritance, the relatives might even file a criminal complaint. However, there is no need to worry. We will repay all the debts before then and restore our honor. As she stood at attention with a resolute attitude, Natsuhi proclaimed this clearly with Ushiromiya, Kinzo, and Beatrice as witnesses. For a while, they remained silent as though weighing Natsuhi's resolve. Then Kinzo chuckled and turned away. <laughs> How vexing. Why couldn't this person have been my son? The very fact that a woman with such a disposition married your son is another sign of your great luck. Beatrice, this is my final order. Now that you are no longer the head, I am not obligated to obey your orders. Oh. In that case, obey the orders of the new Oshiromiya family head. You are no longer the head, and Kraus is not yet the head. Who are you suggesting that I serve? I will leave that to you. It is up to you to decide who is qualified to succeed the Ushiromiya family head, and who is fitting to bear the mark of the one-winged eagle. You will ensure that it is so. Not that he's really just going full wish fulfillment here. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, if, if this was a fan fiction, I'd be like, hold up, hold up. All right, maybe that maybe with the self-insert OC, we're getting a little bit too, uh, too, too fantasy here. Do you remember that page in our notes that just says MAGIC IS COPE in all caps, exclamation point, question mark? I do actually remember that. <laughs> I also remember the part in our notes where you wrote, and I quote, Beato is Italian. <laughs> Cole, cavolo, I refuse. <laughs> I won't listen to the orders of a man who isn't the head. That's so he'd be like, you are just so lucky I married into this family because I'm the best. <laughs> yeah, she is. No, this is different. This is a will the last order that the head left behind for you. <laughs> Porco miseria, then it seems I will have to obey. After all, I can be quite accommodating. <laughs> Liar. Aww. You're only doing this because it caught your interest, aren't you? <laughs> I can't hide anything from you, can I? Nazi. Yes, father. Go and overcome your hardship. Yes. That might have seemed like a mere response to Natsuhi, but to Kinzo and Beatrice, it seemed to be something of much greater significance. Beatrice nodded deeply, and with a motion as elegant as her dress, she bowed deeply before Natsuhi. The Ushiromiya family alchemist, the golden witch Beatrice, is present. I shall give you my aid to assist the Ushiromiya family in overcoming another crisis. Thank you. I will need your power. We will most certainly overcome these trials. <laughs> I will not hold back on my support for your cause, but there is something I must warn you about beforehand. I understand that your troubles now could be solved if I were to grant you a vast quantity of gold, like I did when I saved Kinzo from his crisis. However, that is something I cannot do. I have to pretend Beta is my personal friend to make it through the day? Yeah, right? <laughs> Don't we all? It's also sad when you recall that Nazi is just alone with Kinzo's corpse. Yeah! Oh yeah! This is fucking terribly sad. Is that so? Sorry, Natsuhi. Beatrice's gold came from a contract limited to my generation. Talking about my generation. It was agreed that it could only be passed on to another if that person solves the witch's epitaph. Hey, that's a timely reference. What? That's a timely reference. That one was absolutely <laughs> around during this point in time. Unlike every other reference we make during this playthrough. 
circa 2010. <laughs> the gold is sealed away by the epitaph. As long as that is not solved, you cannot be given the golden magic. I understand. Then I shall search for another method by which we can save ourselves from this crisis. My husband said his plan would take time, but he also said that it would surely be sufficient to repay our debts. If we can buy enough time for that to happen, we will be able to overcome this trial. Also sadder when you realize that being alone with Kinzo's corpse was what she chose as a reprieve above anything else. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Good, Natsuhi. Continue. But Kinzo is already dead. The doctor and servants are preparing his funeral. You are about to contact the family members. By your own hand, you will bring an end to this ploy for time. <laughs> How charming is the guillotine where you lower the blade yourself? Ah. Oh. Startled, Natsuhi looked up at the ceiling. There wasn't actually anything there, but even so, Natsuhi had found something. So, the magical power has descended. <laughs> Natsuhi, have you made up your mind? What magic of miracles do you desire from me? And the miracle is to keep Kenzo alive. <laughs> Fuck! Oh, that's fucked. That's all kinds of fucked, isn't it? <laughs> Once again, all of those who had witnessed Kinzo's corpse were gathered in the study. Kraus was still impatient and clutching at his head. Kenji was as expressionless as ever. Nanjo and Kumasawa wore bewildered expressions on their faces. But in stark contrast to all of them, Natsuhi wore a resolute expression. Dear, let me ask you one more time. Your plan for raising money is absolutely certain? N yeah, yes, yes. Give, give it a year, no, just, just, just have a year, and it will certainly bear fruit. But it's impossible to just hope for anything right now. I, Natsuhi's got this genius nine-dimensional chess plan to keep everybody thinking that Kinzo's still alive and string this all out and, like keep fucking Kraus on a leash so that this doesn't fail, and yet still the end goal is just like, so it's gonna work this time, dear, right? <laughs> this one's not gonna fail, dear, right? Yes. Oh, you said, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, moon tourism. You know how it is. Uh, <laughs> then we will wait. But you said it yourself. Father is already dead. Father has not passed away. He's still there, as healthy as ever. When Natsuhi said this, everyone jumped and looked up, because they instantly understood what those words meant. However, Kraus alone didn't get it right away and asked her, What? What? What do you mean by that? Father is already... in reality, he's right there. I will say it again. Natsuhi wasn't only a member of the KDA, she was essentially the mastermind behind it. Yeah! Yeah, that yeah we, wow. we completely... Yeah, that, that blew us away. Yep, that... We were absolutely wrong. Now I'm worried, what if all of my skepticism about uh, Kyrie is for absolutely no reason and she's just some poor, innocent person? <laughs> I don't it know. It doesn't seem like she's in on this. We'll talk about Kyrie when she shows up, yeah. but she definitely knows more than she should. <laughs> I will say it again. Father is still in good health. He is busy with his research, so he'll be even less able to leave his study than usual. It's also important that this only solves, like, half of the Beatrice stuff. Yeah. Because remember, there's still this whole thing where Rosa has seen Beatrice, and Beatrice died mm -hmm. in Kuwadorian. None of that part of it is related to any of this shit going on here. Mm. So it's not like this, this gives us everything, but this definitely, definitely helps, like, elucidate a lot of what was going on. Because of this, we must handle all external affairs ourselves so that Father can devote himself to his research without being burdened by meaningless tasks. In short, nothing will change from the way things have been. Do you understand, Genji? Yes. The furniture of the one-winged eagle will continue to serve the master. Kumasawa, and you, Dr. Nanjo, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, um, uh, is that truly all right, Nachihishan? It may be true that father passed away today, but 
If everyone right here, right now, believes, we can revive Father with magic. You just gotta clap your hands if you believe. This is a Tinkerbell situation. I feel distinctly uncomfortable. <laughs> it's impossible, madam. That's just too much. The time of death will be made clear during the autopsy. We cannot stop it from looking suspicious. Father will not pass away, so there will be no reason for there to be an autopsy. Of course, she wasn't planning to make it seem like Kinzo would live forever. The fake life given to Kinzo would only last until Kraus could repay his debts. After that, Kinzo's soul would finally be able to rest in peace. Nanjo repeatedly said that the time of death would be discovered during the autopsy, but not so he kept saying that this wouldn't be a problem. Father will not pass away by being reported dead. No, I, I, I see. He'll, he'll be reported missing. After clapping his hands together, Kraus stood up, shaking his fists. Yes. Once we've managed to pay back the debt and finish our preparations for laying Father to rest, we will then announce that Father has disappeared. Oh, Rokunjima's vast, uncultured for uncult and cultured, uncultivated forest <laughs> was the perfect place to stage a disappearance. One day, Kinzo would go out to the forest for a walk, and he would never return. They would search for him without success, and then be forced to report his disappearance. If he disappears, we can file a report of his death, even without a corpse. In other words, we can hide him long enough to have him declared legally dead. What do you think, Dr. Nanjo? There won't be any problems that way. Uh, <laughs> yes, that, that might work. Ooh, is this really okay, madam? If we stay silent, then I'm sure we could keep the master's death a secret. Ooh, however, if we were to slip up even once and let someone find out. Kumasawa. Don't be so loud. Father is sleeping right over there, correct? Are you trying to wake him? <sighs> they must believe. I get it. Only until Kraus can repay his debts. How is that different from forever? Got him! Ooh. It isn't a corpse. Kinzo is sleeping. As Natsuhi he said that, Kinzo lay quietly on the bed as though there was nothing at all odd about her words. So do they not even embalm him? I thought for sure that they embalmed him. Because, like, otherwise, like, you got a rotting corpse going yeah. on here, right? Come, try to remember. What form did you have? Oh, yo. What sort of life did you enjoy? Once again, a storm of gold butterflies started to swirl, covering Kenzo's cold body. Then after the butterflies exploded into fine gold powder and disappeared, just like those fairy tales that have been told over and over since long ago, Kinzo slowly opened his eyes and sat up. Father. Natsuhi, let me first make one thing clear. I did not coax you into doing this because of my attachment to life. <laughs> you liar. Don't tell me you didn't anticipate this at least a little. How does it feel, Kinzo? On the embalming room, people talking about strange smells coming from Kinzo's room. Yeah, that, that's what we assumed that was. Why, like We talked about this. We're like We assumed that the strange smells coming from his room, which were covered for like his weird alcohol mixtures or whatever, tinctures, was actually like part of the embalming stuff, right? Because mm. they... Even if you're going to, ha like, pr pretend to kill the corpse later on and burn it, like, you still need to have enough of it together to fake that part with, right? Mm. So it's not like they're just letting it sit there and rot. How is your body? It isn't bad, but it feels somewhat like being in a dream. I feel light. You're a being that wasn't permitted to remain in this world, yet you still remain here. Don't start complaining about a little discomfort now. Is your body truly all right? Is it really okay? Hmm. Actually, it feels quite pleasant. If this is what the world after death feels like, playing the ghost might not be half bad. <laughs> How is this, Natsuhi? Kinzo has revived. That means a funeral is unnecessary. 
Your hardship has been resolved. We've never seen Kenzo's body as anything but a horribly stinky bird corpse. I thought Battler at one point did claim to see the back of Kenzo's body in chapter two. While drunk and getting witch domed. Right, right. And it's not like he talked to, to, to uh, uh, Kenzo during that yeah. point. But I always assumed that his body was being at least kept until it was ready to be burned. I, I feel like... Battler is definitely not in his right mind by that point. Yeah, so that could, yeah. Battler saw something. Yeah. That's about That's all fair. we can trust. <laughs> Beatrice. As Natsuhi so tried to find words of gratitude amidst her confusion, Beatrice waggled her pointer finger and spoke. There is no need for thanks. <laughs> Get you someone who looks at you like Natsuhi so looks at Beatrice. God, right? <laughs> How come there's not more art of these two <laughs> I fucking each other, huh? A ruler is allowed to be proud. I will not pay heed to requests, but I will follow orders. Even so, I'll say it. Thank you. This way, you've bought some time for my husband. We will handle the rest. Be warned, Natsuhi. Kinzo may have revived, but that is not an eternal thing. It will only continue as long as my magic does. Right? Just like just like the fucking vase! Just yep. like the fucking vase! Yep. Yep. It will eventually remember how, where it's meant to be. Yep. Yep. Because magic... <laughs> Fuck! So much of that foreshadowing. <laughs> be warned that the magic-resisting toxin might destroy the magic. You must understand the laws of magic correctly and work hard to maintain yeah, it. Yeah, see, I told you. It's a, people who use magic need to know exactly how it works, otherwise it won't get the results they want. I can show you a miracle, but it is your role to grasp it and hold it. It's hidden in the depths of Tumblr. On my way to draw Natsuhi and Beto ship art. Hell yeah! <laughs> Drop that shit in the Discord when you're done. I can't wait to see that. Of course, we definitely won't neglect the miracle you have given us. <laughs> Very well. Yes, it would appear masters need to be changed out every once in a while. Just like floor mats. So not to use the master then. Okay. I like it. I shall serve you. Ushiromiya Natsuhi. I'm the Ushiromiya family alchemist, the golden witch Beatrice. Call my name whenever you wish. I shall appear and grant you a miracle. Thank you. I'm Ushiromiya Natsuhi. I will employ you and protect the honor of this Ushiromiya family. Wow! If that isn't a fucking opening, I don't know what is. Gotta say, I had a lot of ideas about what Act 5 might be, and I didn't think this was no. at all it. Not so. at all. All right. Son We're about two and a half hours in. Um, so just so y'all remember what our plans are, we're planning to go for about eight hours or so. Which uh, is we fucking wanna, nuts. Which is fucking nuts. Uh, to make sure that that actually happens, we we take regular breaks. Uh, uh, if you're familiar with our streams, you should know that every two hours or so we take a break. So we're going to take a break for about 10 minutes here um, just to give us each time to go uh, use the little streamer's room and get some more water. Vivian, why don't you go first and I'll chat with, I'll talk with chat, refill your water, get some tea and stuff, and then I'll go when you come back. Ye Sound good? Cool. Yeah. I mean, I could just completely floors your expectations. It does! It does! It does! It does! It does! I am so... Oh, man. And I'm not even angry at, like, like the fact that our, that our speculation turned out wrong. I'm just more impressed at, like, well, like what actually turned out to be... Kenzo was kept alive with... You were mentioning that, Evie, weren't you? Kenzo was kept alive with magic. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, I, I got to admit, I, it makes so many things make more sense. Do I just, predictions for the rest of the episode? Nah, fuck it. I don't have any more predictions. Uh, I, I'll just, I'll just, uh, accept everything that is placed before me, I guess. <laughs> God. I, I got to admit though. It, 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 like, the, I think what I like most about this is that it does make things make perfect sense. And it's not like the the game didn't introduce all of these concepts to us beforehand, right? We had all of the pieces here, but just putting them together was incredibly difficult. I'm proud with how close we got. 
And I'm still waiting to see how, like, the rest of the on servants get brought into this, because they must. They, they absolutely must. And since, since tellingly she gets referred to as master there, I have to assume that, like, the person, like, Nanjo is playing chess with, you know, who gets served drinks, is that, that might be Natsuki. I, I won't say that for certain because I, 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 like, I haven't done, like, a point by point thing on the scene, so I don't know if, like, oh, she's tied up over in this location while the modern day, present day Kenzo is doing something over here. You know what I mean? But, um, huh. Let's imagine this hot witch who has the same hair color as my husband and serves me. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Well, I mean, we don't know what color hair color uh, Krauss has, but... In fact, I don't think we know... I think the only th guesses we have for hair color is that Cannons and Shannons are probably the same as Beatrice, so they're probably... I think that's I think that's about the only real guess we have cuz we have like we we if we I want to say suspect I think I think we pretty know it well at this point that the sprites are definitely um stylized representations of the characters. No one here Battler doesn't have red hair, none of that stuff. Um and on one of our theories Cannon and Shannon are very are close to identical. Um Black hair except for Beato, ignoring stylistic choices. Yeah, yeah, right? It's probably something like that. The Kinzo mess was flat out put forward by the siblings in episodes one and four's accusations. <gasps> they were, right? But, like, back in episode one, you're not primed to be suspecting these kinds of things yet. You still think this is playing by normal rules. Yeah, like, and until the game lays it out for you how these, how these other people work, it, you know, like, you don't have any reason to suspect that yet. Beatrice is blonde according to the text. Okay. What, never watch all your videos, but in the middle of watching the first of the rewatch talks. Fun going through your theories to this. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed them. <laughs> uh, I will say, the, our original playthrough, we were definitely not... We, it definitely took us until around episode three to get kicked into high gear with this. Uh, just, like, we needed to have it, like laid out before us and you know writ like we needed that kick in the ass that episode three gives you watching the theory of videos has been cool i'm glad to hear that uh, <laughs> clearly we've already been way off but uh those times you're inclined to view eva as scum and not he as noble yeah i guess I don't know. I feel like I feel like we're we still don't have enough of what's going on with the rest of the uh, the other sibling situations to really understand. We play this blind to try hard to figure out what was going on. Yeah. I wish we had more time to just sit down and keep going through the original episodes, but like, you know, real life considerations. At some point, we have to just keep moving on. And I think, even though we haven't finished, we didn't finish doing episodes three and four of the rewatch before going back to the answer arcs, I still feel like even sitting down and doing the rewatch itself was helpful in priming our and priming how we're thinking about the rest of this game going forward we are approaching this much much differently than we did the first four episodes and i think that alone is was worth the uh time weren't completely wrong though no and i, I feel good that at least like we did we did have to address nazi and grouse they were part of the conversation lesbian nazi fan art eva nazi he is a huge fa why oh well, like well why Pretty good on the KDA. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take like a little half feather in the cap, <laughs> right? It's not, it wasn't perfect. I think, I, th I think we had reasonable justifications for, it, but like in retrospect, yeah, it, it's probably, it was probably way more wrong of us to assume to, to, to take that very conservative view of it rather than a just be like, no, that requires much more work than if not the Cross are just in on it. It's not your fault, Vivian. Also, no one can hear you. <laughs> Why? Why wouldn't it be? They hate each other. Perfect shipping. Oh, you know what? You're right. You're right. That is that is that is perfect. Hate shipping is common. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, what if Natsuhi had been the spouse of one of the competent Ushiromias, right? <laughs> Umineko of Natsuhi's spouse didn't suck. People love women who hate each other. There's also some weirdly soft moments of Natsuhi pulling a blanket on Ava and then comforting each other in Golden Land in episode 3. Yeah! Yeah, that's true. Tells you the truth, but I'll dust it through characters readers are more likely to ignore at the time. Yeah! I can see that. Play some stream-related art in the Discord already? Fuck yeah! Alright, hold on. I'm, wa I'm looking at this. <laughs> oh, man! I'm not listening to you, Madoka Magical looking bitch! <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, this is so great! Oh my god, this is so charming, thank you! <laughs> Lambda trying to play card chess set! Oh, this is so good! <laughs> Moon Tour. Oh, I can't look at all this now. I'll look at all this, obviously, after the stream is over, but this is. Oh. Babe, it's 4 p.m. Time for another poorly thought up business investment. Yes, honey. <laughs> I can't do a good southern accent like a... I'm sorry, a good Kansai accent like uh, Vivian can. Please watch the Moon Tour. I will watch the Moon Tourism video after the stream is over at like 9 p.m. tonight. So, ad libs give me... I'm so glad that you enjoy the ad libs. I am glad that that, that lands. That is the one thing I'm always worried about with this stuff. Because... Like, 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 I'm glad we do it because it is definitely something that is unique to our channel. Well, it's not unique to our channel, but it gives our channel's playthroughs their own vibe that you don't get from anything else. And I'm glad that that lands. Obviously, we're not the only channel to do stuff like that. Like, we we like we take the idea from like press buttons and talk and other stuff like that. But I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that you that you find it enjoyable. Also, just realized Beato's T posing is with the arms up, so it looks like she's doing fucking invisible oranges bullshit. I love this. Moon tourism is only forty seconds. I, 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 I don't. I just, I can't. Audio setup. That, that, that's the short version of it. It's just good. Awesome. Uh we can see Kinzo, so surely he must be there, right? Exactly, exactly. When you start the game, why would you doubt that Kinzo is there? Except everything that is put before you, right? Tons you listen without watching the video and they catch you off guard so much. Battler <laughs> Those are my favorite bits. <laughs> I mean, are we wrong? I I don't think we're wrong. She is a Monica Magic, a little bitch. All right, my turn, Viv. Yeah. All right, keep the chat company. Okay. All right, see you all in about five minutes, chat. Vivian's back now. Oh, also, Vivian, make sure you check out the stuff in the Discord. It's very good. All right, fuckers, you're stuck with me now. Two thirty p.m. Time for a meme tasting. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Holy fuck! These little sketches are great. Aren't they? These are so good. Thank you. These are wonderful. <laughs> Lambda absolutely would be the one to play cards with a chess set. Oh. Good times. Good times. Good times. <laughs> I see. And someone's brought out the uh, Crypto Kraus already as well. Woo. <laughs> the blockchain doesn't lie, see? Oh my god.
Yeah, I'm really interested to see what the fuck is what the fuck is Bernie's OC's there's deal. I'm very interested in that. Um Krauss's Save the Day project. Building a huge business tower? I didn't quite catch if it was a reference to a thing or not. Business tower, business tower. Where have we seen one of those? A business tower? Was there a business tower in the... in episode four, in the outside the game board segment? Or what? Business tower. You want to answer that business? Yeah, is it that business? Does that mean Krause's last fucking bullshit scam actually works? Yeah. I'm back, bitches. All right. Natsuhi, the Funky Business Monkeys is a reputable organization, see? <laughs> uh, all right. Beto's War Towers or Business Towers? <laughs> oh, my God. Holy shit. I can buy that. Oh, well, my someone apes! Someone is asking how gone. to get into our Discord. Honey, the family can't know that father's dead until I get my apes back. <laughs> Someone's asking how to get into the Discord. Do we have an invite link handy? Oh, yeah. Uh, hold I on. I literally don't know how to get the invite link. I'm very bad at Discord. Um, fuck. Thing is, it's usually in every video description except this one. Hold on, let me find one. It's important. Discord. <laughs> I've been hacked. All my apes gone. This just solved. Please help me. <laughs> All right. Let's wow, that's so shitty. I'm really sorry, dude. But please change your profile pic since you no longer own it. <laughs> <laughs> and the subtle touch of Ava's Twitter handle and that one being evil MILF. <laughs> also, Ava being verified. Ava being verified. All right. You ready to get back oh, into it, hon? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the uh, smorgasbord of memes. That was a truly delightful meme tasting. We appreciate the memes. Thank you. And the fan art. All of it has been delightful. <laughs> thank you for letting us take a break, everyone. It keeps our voices going so we can keep the doing this longer. The thing that put the fear in me was when I started to feel my voice going, and then I looked at the clock, and we hadn't passed hour one. <laughs> this is hard to do. I'm going to be so dead for work tomorrow. It'll at least fine. you don't have to say anything. Probably. I probably do. The rose garden was truly splendid this year. The roses were blooming like meetings and shit. crazy, as if competing with each other. Just use text-to-speech. Replace yourself with Microsoft Sam. Your bosses will think it's just a funny thing. That would actually work. In that rose garden, Kinzo, <laughs> Cannon, and Natsuhi could be seen. Once again, the flowers have grown wonderfully this Kinzo year. Kinzo and Cannon. Cannon? Cannon? Interesting. It must be the result of your care. Thank you very much, sir. The weather just happened to be good this year. Thanks to your care, the garden is even more beautiful than usual. Good work. Uh, th thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Kinzo's like, I'm out. If today weren't so special, we might have been able to admire the roses while enjoying some black tea. <laughs> I see. You're reading through the LPR card to see how close we are to the scene, and oh boy, we can't. I hope we get to it today. <clears throat> Kinzo shrugged. Today was the family conference. When it came to the other siblings' businesses, none of them, none of the news had been good. 
On the contrary, those siblings probably plan to turn the conversation to the topic of Kinzo's remaining life and hold a quiet feud over the inheritance. Those people are quite unpleasant. By the way, what about Kraus? Is that debt repayment plan of his proceeding well? Okay, so this is... This is... Post Kinzo's death, then. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then what the fuck is Cannon doing here? Tending to the roses, obby. Must be resolved here, okay. And Cannon did respond to Kinzo here. So either... Cannon is completely in on the farce at this point, or Cannon is also being. Hmm. Or Cannon has enjoined enjoined Nazi's pantheon. All right. <sighs> it does seem to be a realistic plan. However, it's a plan on quite a large scale, and it doesn't seem to be bearing fruit quite as well as he expected. <clears throat> dead for over a year before the game starts? It seems like it, yeah. If possible, I would have hoped to have that resolved before today's family conference. Oh, sorry. If possible, I would have hoped to have that resolved before today's family conference. Yes, my apologies. Are you sure you're okay, Kinzo? Casually walking around in a place Why? like that? Wow, wrong <laughs> voices all around today. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Umarosh Usharomia family curse. Back at it. How had she gotten up there? Well, it's fairly pointless to wonder about that sort of thing when you're dealing with a witch. Beatrice was casually sitting on the roof of the arbor, almost as though she had been basking in the sun. <laughs> Those relatives were like a massive lump of the magic-resisting toxin, and they'll be intruding in on us. If you bump into them, your soul will evaporate in an instant. I am already dead. Evaporating would be no detriment. We can't have that happen. Please, for the sake of the Ushromia family, lend us your strength just a little longer. Natsuki, it seems the boat carrying the relatives has left the harbor. Perhaps it's about time to bring an end to this walk of yours. Is that so? Thank you. Please return to the study, Father. My, my, how tiresome to go back inside when the weather is this perfect. <laughs> Don't grumble, Kinsa. Right now, you're nothing more than a ghost I gave life to. It'll be troublesome for both me and Natsuhi if you're scattered away by the toxin. Madam, if you're done dissociating, can I just go? I've got, I've got more stuff to do today. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like... I, 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 there's, more, there's more preparations and things <laughs> that must be done, and it's just, I, I <laughs> just be a good boy. Shut yourself away in the study and wrap a blanket around yourself or something. <laughs> hmm. Merely receiving the chance to enjoy these roses after death makes me an extremely fortunate man. I understand. I shall return to the study. But I would like some black tea. Cannon, tell Genji to bring me some. Perhaps some Marco Polo would do well today. Hey! We've we've drank that tea. We've drank that yeah, tea. Yeah, we you've gotten that tea before. I don't remember much about it, because I, I my taste is not very I, I don't have very yeah, good. Yeah, that's then. from Mariage Frères. I don't have a very good sense of smell or taste for tea, but yeah. I don't remember it being bad. Certainly. Cannon is responding to Kinzo here. So this Cannon is either also an imagined thing from Natsuhi or... Fuck, how do we... Oh my god, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't square it. Either that or, or, or Cannon is well enough in on this at this point to know how to fill in the gaps. I can tell Lambda's running this game because everyone's saying certainty, certainty all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Then let us go our separate ways. <clears throat> Natsuhi, you must conduct the family conference splendidly in my absence. Whoa! Of course, father. He can't say it in front of them, but my husband's already the Ushromia family head. And I will do all I can to ensure that I don't embarrass him as his wife. 
compared to Krauss, who's had a stomachache since this morning. You are so very composed, Natsuki. My son is quite hopeless. Wow, Krauss does suck at this. So we were right to peg Krauss as being absolutely terrible. <laughs> I guess our, our faulty assumption was that he would have been the one in charge of this. Yeah. Yeah. We should, we should have followed through on that. Krauss is stupid. Too stupid to run his own shit. Therefore, not if, if, but if it's happening, not to... Yeah, you're right. If we had just followed that through a little bit more. Yeah, shit. My husband is talented in his own way. Supporting him where he's weak is my duty as his wife. Indeed. Carry out your task with precision. I will make sure to stay shut away so that I don't get in the way of this farce. Kana, go with father to the study. And then have Genji prepare some black tea. See, unlike everyone else, Battler does, like, and people do interact with canon. So there must be a person that is canon. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I don't know how to fucking square with this. I'm not so senile that I need your help to stand up. Here I go. Refusing Cannon's attempt to lend him a hand, Kinzo rose from behind from the flower bed he had been sitting on. The retired head left everything in Natsuki's hands and returned to the study at a gentle pace. You're looking well. You possess a sense of dignity reminiscent of Kinzo's deceased wife. On the off chance that the magic resistant toxin does reach father, will the magic dissolve in an instant? The access cannon and Shannon up to Kinzo's study, it makes sense that they'd be in on it, even if they weren't present when it first went down. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's why we definitely had them pegged as part of it. Indeed. In the blink of an eye. I can vanish whenever I please, but if someone already dead, such as Kinzo, loses his form, he'll be instantly tossed away like dust by the winds of the sun. All we are is dust in the wind. You must take care. <laughs> Noted Kansas fan, Beatrice. <laughs> yes. Given that I she's understand. Italian, I thought she'd be more into like the Italian prog scene. Like, <laughs> Banco del Mucho Socorroso and uh, Premier of uh, premier something bakery, whatever. I don't. Was Universe Zero premier uh, premier uh, Marconi bakery or something? Was Universe Zero Italian? No. They're Belgian. Yeah. Piss. <laughs> nice try though. Well, I was on the right continent, so that's <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> you may have talent as a witch. The magic resisting toxin has been building up in your system over the years. And yet, you are still able to understand magic. If you and I had met during your youth, you might have become a powerful witch by now. Remember, you're already past the point of no return. Evie, get the fuck out with this. <laughs> <laughs> this Kansas bullshit. <laughs> Ugh. I'm the wife of Usharomia Kraus, the family head. I would become even a witch or a demon to protect his honor. See that, how we brought back that phrase? Th that, wow. There's that refrain again. Yep. I'm deeply grateful for the power of your magic. I wouldn't have been able to protect the honor of the Usharomia family without you. Let's discuss that at another time. I'd like to enjoy it with just the two of us women drinking tea. A friend of mine who went to Sri Lanka sent me some black tea with a wonderful rose fragrance. Huh. You mean Dimbula? That isn't bad. Then you should also have some patis on the side. You must serve me some as a reward. If I manage to trick everyone for this entire family conference, it's a promise. <laughs> Beato can be bought off just by good tea snacks. What is... Understood. Pot? A fish sauce used as a cooking ingredient or condiment in the Philippines. I don't think that's quite right. Huh. What if it's a plural? What if it's a singular potty? No. No? Nothing? Interesting. Well, what if we look for Dimbula? You do that. That's a Ceylon tea. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. That's fine. This, um, this is Natsuhi. Understood. I promise. Then I'll see you later. Natsuhi just confirmed she inherited the title of Golden Witch after uh, winning a pegging contest against a <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yes, later. Remember how originally I was the one that had too many voices? 
The witch made her body crumble into the rustling winds, became gold flower petals, and scattered into thin air. Natsuhi watched her go, then turned on her heels and headed for the mansion. And then there were none left in the rose garden. Ha <laughs> ha! Title drop! Wrong book, but a title drop! Okay then. It's break time. Damn it, we took break early. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> You're right, we took break too early. <laughs> Got any complaints so far? <sighs> None at all. If you have to pee, why not just go and do it? <laughs> Shit, we did go too early. <laughs> what a rude thing to say. Kinzo is already dead, right? But he's walking around and talking, isn't he? Doesn't that mean this is magic? Of course, I doubt this move would work on you after all this time, Burn. <laughs> what about you, battler? Isn't this weird? Don't you have to accept the existence of the magic that revived Kinzo? <laughs> what? If you're trying to imitate Beato, it's pissing me off. So stop that right now. <laughs> Figured it out? Then come on, how are you going to answer, battler? Kinzo is just out for a stroll. Why not act like you always do and start holding your head, crying, This makes no sense. That's not what I sound like. Come on, use that old, it's all useless catchphrase, and then give me one of your classic nonsensical counter arguments. What are you, t I, I sound nothing like that. That's not my catchphrase. That's what you sound like. Shit. There's no way a human who's supposed to be dead could be walking around, right? Is this all because of some unknown virus called the Rokinjima Syndrome that causes mass delusions? That's too specific. Is that calling out a specific fan theory? Nobody knows. Or did the scales of a mysterious form of butterfly that only lives on Rokinjima happen to be hallucinogenic? Or is it all because a mysterious secret organization called the Mountain Dogs made an as-of-yet-undiscovered drug called Puru Puru Pico Puyo, which causes mass delusions? Let me hear tons of this wonderful crap. <laughs> Just shut up. This isn't even a problem. Grandfather is dead at this point in time. There's no way he exists. The only reason he's able to act like he's alive at it like this is because of Aunt Natsuhi's lie. Her attempt to make it through the family conference while hiding Grandfather's death. Oh, it's Natsuhi's lie? It is a reference? Okay, I, I didn't ca- I, it, was, it seemed very, very specific, but I didn't know what to. You can revive the dead by lying? Wouldn't that make it Nazi's magic? This world is like a brawn tube before you've looked in it. That is a reference to my favorite visual novel, Stein's Semicolon Gate. <laughs> it's the world of the cat box before you open it. We got there! We got- I mean, we've already had the cat in the box. Oh, I guess this is for, for answer arcs. Yeah! Okay, so uh, for the answer arcs at how long? Two hours, 48 minutes in? Two hours, 48 minutes into the answer arcs and we get the uh, the cat box. Hell yeah. That's SK's rule of visual novels. The longer a visual novel goes on, the probability that it references the <laughs> Schrodinger's cat th thought experiment tends towards one. <laughs> As long as Aunt Natsuhi says she took a walk with Grandfather, and as long as no one can confirm that it's a lie, it's possible to display Aunt Natsuhi taking a walk in the Rose Garden with Grandfather as Natsuhi's reality. Cool! So, Battler's just laying out... Yeah, like, this is basically how we suspected this works, right? Yep. Right, as, as, as long as, as there's no one that's able to, like, contradict that lie, someone can insist on this, and, we're, and the Game Master can display it. The answer arcs, it comes real early, huh? Yeah, right? <laughs> That means it's possible for Grandfather to appear. Don't clap for that. That extremely unflattering applause was coming from Burncastle. Bravo. You're much calmer without Beato around. <laughs> Quiet. You shut up, too. Wait a second, Battler. According to your theory, sure, it might be possible for Kinzo to appear if Natsuhi is the only person there. Oh, we're doing this now, are we? Okay, okay. If Natsuhi claims to have observed Kinzo in a world with no one except Natsuhi in it, then no one can deny it, right? But Cannon was in the same place, and he was also looking at Kinzo, right? How do you explain that? That's no problem at all. Cannon Kuna is the servant who works for the Ushiromiya family. Uh, Natsuhi probably ordered him to keep her story so that she could hide Grandfather's death. Because of that, Cannon can see Grandfather even though he shouldn't exist. Just like Aunt Natsuhi can. 
Ugh. Too bad, Lambda. Battler isn't going to fall for that kind of child's play anymore. <laughs> Seems so. Well, this is nothing more than an opening before the game's really started. Like an aperitif before a meal. An appetizer at a bar. Green tea at a sushi restaurant. Shut up. So we aren't going to get anywhere unless I say it again in blue text, huh? Looks like it. Would you mind? <sighs> the reason Grandfather is strolling around like nothing happened, even though he's already dead, is that people who want to make it seem as though he's alive created an illusion of him. People who think the same way can share in that illusion. Then they'll talk as though Grandfather actually exists and was with him all on until just a second ago. That is why he's strolling around like it's perfectly natural. Because of this, the illusion of Grandfather is unable to appear in front of people who aren't in on this with Aunt Natsuhi. That is why they made up the story of him shutting himself away in his study and refusing to come out. There we go. That... I, I feel I feel like we can get our, give ourselves at least a C on that yeah on that one right I yeah. feel like we got like sixty percent of it there was there was a very crucial part of it that we missed but I feel I feel like we, we get a passing grade right right if that was the end of the course we'd be able to put it on our yeah yeah okay in the games before now grandfather has always locked himself up in his study we never met him directly however some people said things that made us think he was locked up in his study in a bad mood such as claiming to have met him only a short while ago. We blindly accepted their statements and believed that Grandfather was in the study. That's why it was possible for an illusion of Grandfather to exist in the study. You get it? You understand yet, player? <laughs> Ryukis, you're just staring like, have I explained it enough for you yet? <laughs> That's right, in the games before now, the only people who met Grandfather were Uncle Kraus, Aunt Natsuhi, and the servants. That's not... True? Hmm. Other people purportedly met with him, and he showed himself purportedly in episode four. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 he's, he's, sim he's simplifying it, like being like, okay, here, here's the KDA. Because they all stuck to the same story, an illusion of grandfather was able to exist on this island, making it seem like he was alive. You even showed us a scene at the beginning of this game where Aunt Nancy he convinced Dr. Nanjo with the rest to cover up grandfather's death. I could have fell for a cheap trick like that after all this time. <laughs> well, not bad. This really do be the human echo for Dummy's Handbook? Yeah. You did pretty well? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is that enough of an answer for you, Nimrods? <laughs> <laughs> right? But I was hoping for the unknown drug, Puru Puru Pico Puyo. <sighs> There's no way he'd say something so ridiculous, right? After all, supposing that such a thing exists would be just as bad as surrendering to the fantasy genre. Whether it's a virus or a drug or an illness, anything that hasn't been discovered yet is in violation of Nox's fourth commandment. Isn't that the mystery rules? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, 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 because we were... And this also plays into Beatrice as a mystery writer, right? Mm. Yeah. Despite everything, this is a mystery game. Don't let the fantasy confuse you as to what is happening. Wait, what do you mean, the fourth commandment? Nox is fourth. It is forbidden for unknown drugs or difficult to understand scientific devices to be used. The rule states that such things can't be used during a murder. Also, isn't the implication here that the rules will be followed during the game as well? Maybe. Wait, what the hell? Unknown drug X and unknown scientific device X should be the best kinds of weapons to use when fighting against a witch. <sighs> That is what I'm talking about. All of those violate the rules of a proper mystery. Supposing an unknown virus, an unknown drug, an unknown sickness, or an unknown triple X was used puts it totally in the fantasy genre. My condolences. If that was your theory, then it's game over for you. <laughs> I'm glad. I don't think none of our theories really devolved into that yeah so, yeah so I, I like other than steak gun a steak gun is not implausible <laughs> it, you can make a steak gun i think the closest i got to this was th thinking about all of like what what physical analog there might be for something that people are seeing as gold filigree all the time oh yeah i think that's the closest we got to something like this but i i don't think we ever really settled on that one so i'm, I'm willing to 
Hey, what are you talking about? You think you've been fighting in direct opposition to Beato. That's not actually true. You haven't been in direct opposition. You've been fighting along with her from a slightly different angle. All this playing detective you've done hasn't been fantasy versus mystery. It's only been fantasy versus anti-fantasy. I don't have a clue what you're talking about, actually. But there's one thing I do get. It sounds like you're saying there's something wrong with my fighting style. Yes, so what Bernie's calling him out on here is like, as Battler keeps bringing up these unknown things and, and wild contraptions and whatnot that could work for this as a physical plausibility, mm -hmm. right? But that, and while that denies these weird fantastical elements, those are themselves a kind, like, they're just anti-fantasy. They're still not realistic. Mm -hmm. Right? And that that violates the rules of a mystery, of an, a mystery novel. The person reading the mystery along has to be able to figure it out along with you, right? And there's certain rules and expectations for that. Noxus commandsmen. Mm. Um, we talked about those during our first episode uh, rewatch yeah. discussion, I believe. So, yeah, that totally checks out. So, like, Battler isn't going to be able to get away now by just saying, like, oh, there was some weird device that did this. Or something Small like that. Small bums. Small bums that were also coated in arsenic. <laughs> so yeah, there's your no small bombs. Okay. We're fighting to kill the fantasy known as the illusion of the witch. That means interpreting this tale as a proper mystery. In other words, from the very start, we have to ignore any and all elements that violate the taboos of the mystery genre. It, but what? Ign ignore, you say? For example, several closed room murders have occurred in games before now, right? Yeah, so? At every single crime scene, you enthusiastically check with Beato to make sure there are no hidden doors, right? Then that leads to a flashy bunch of red truths weaving together all over the place, almost as though that itself is the battle. I call that a waste of time. After all, it's clearly specified in Noxus Third. It is forbidden for hidden passages to exist. <laughs> in the mystery genre, hidden passages mustn't exist. So if you want to interpret everything as a proper mystery, entering this whole debate over whether there are hidden doors or not means you've lost from the beginning. See? Okay, After all, gotta pull up Nox's there aren't any. Real quick. As soon as you suspect they might exist, it's already game over for you. Okay, 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 okay. So, here we go. Here we go. Criminal must be someone mentioned in the early part of the story, but must not be anyone whose thoughts the reader has been allowed to follow. Really? No one whose thoughts the reader has been allowed to follow. That's a strange one. Hmm. That's a strange one, but and would also immediately, immediately, like, if that was the case, that would immediately get rid of a bunch of different people, because Umaneko loves to let you have little snippets of the character's thoughts. Mm-hmm. Huh. That's fucked. Interesting. Stuff like small bombs in the 1980s isn't really different from magic, except in flavor. It's like preaching from a different form of magic. Yeah, I guess that's, yeah, that's fair. Oh, here's something. Here's something. Yep. Twin brothers and doubles generally must not appear unless we have been duly prepared for them. That's interesting. That's interesting, because that directly directly contradicts one of our major theories for episode sure one. Sure does. That's really interesting. Right? Although, I, I would argue we have been prepared for body doubles. Oh, my God. Know, oh, my God. Oh my if God. you know where to be looking, like, we have been prepared for body doubles. Oh, my God. Number nine. Specifically for a specific cadre of... Number nine. The stupid friend of the detective, the Watson, must not conceal any thoughts which pass through his mind. His intelligence must be slightly, but very slightly, below that of the average reader. Who do we know by that description, Battler? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, no. I'm worried now. <laughs> the Nox commandments in the game are slightly different from the real ones. Okay, okay good to okay, know. Okay, okay, The rules state won't be exactly the same as the ones Nox originally made. Basically, just think of these as Ryukishi's interpretation of the original spirit. Okay. Okay, that's fair. fair. That's fair. Yeah. I won't because get too hung up. It's on also it. clear that while this, you know, this does take very pains, like a lot of pains to constrain itself under a certain set of rules to be considered a mystery, this still certainly does not play by rules of the fan of the mystery genre. Mm -hmm. Any other mystery that presented characters walking and talking around as though they were fact, 
a narrative fact, right? Would would be laughed out. You because in any other mystery, you trust the authorial voice to tell you what is happening. Mm -hmm. So anyway, in other words, you can't assume that you, you assume that you can't start theory building just because no one's yet proven that hidden doors don't exist at the crime scene. That's why I call you naive and failure at the mystery genre. You've already lost once you start thinking that. I thought you were waging a fight to interpret everything like a mystery novel, right? And you've got to follow the conventions of the mystery genre. <laughs> Maybe we can throw out the fifth commandment? What's the fifth one? Uh, racist. Oh, oh, that one, right. The Yeah, okay, yeah, maybe we could just throw that one and out. And we actually did go look for Van Dien's rules. We totally did. Did we? I, I remember that we did. Did we bring those up in any of our... Um, I don't think we brought them up, but we totally did. Yeah, because that that was that was something that we brought up on our on one of our own discussion. I don't think that made it into any of our uh, any of our uh, theory crafting videos. Wait, holy fuck! A few of the devices which no self-respecting detective story writer will now avail himself of: one, determining the identity of a culprit by comparing the butt of a cigarette left at the scene of the crime with the brand smoked by a suspect. What do you, what do you, what's the... Remember in chapter three with the cigarette scene? No, I don't. It's, it's been a little while since chapter three for me. Uh, that Kyrie puts a cigarette into her pocket. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh boy. Get fucking owned. <sighs> she was probably smoking Never Knows Best anyway. Well, that's it in a nutshell. Hidden doors must not exist at any of the crime scenes. That means any time spent asking whether or not they exist is time wasted. I think I know what you're talking about. I've heard about it somewhere. Is this like the ten basic rules for mystery novels or something? Yeah, that's right. They're the ten wedges for drilling witches brandished by Knox, the peerless archbishop of witch hunting. The, Those yeah, are the true I, I, weapons with which to fight and defeat the fantasy known as the illusion of the witch head on. It's just like you, Burn, to bring in such a troublesome weapon. That's the fantasy genre's arch enemy. So you'll deny the existence of hidden doors right from the start without even investigating the crime scene? That sounds more like fantasy to me. <sighs> Lambda, who's in charge of the witch's side, is fantasy. I'm the one who's fighting her. Mystery, what are you? You're just barely an anti-fantasy, doing nothing but dodging over and over and denying fantasy. You're opposed to absolutely everything, but you can't make any coherent counter-proposals. You're like a politician from some country. <laughs> huh. Shut up! I didn't come here to speak gibberish with you two. Continue the story right the hell now! Be quiet. No! That sleeping princess behind you looks like she's in pain, doesn't she? What? When he turned around, he saw Beato's living corpse resting in her chair. However, sweat glistened all over her body, and it felt like she was breathing a little harder than normal. She looked as though she was suffering from a high fever. Beato, what's, what's wrong? Are, are you okay? What do you mean, is she okay? You sure do say some weird things. Aren't you fighting to kill this girl? We rewound this fifth game for your benefit, but right now, Byrne has done a good job cornering her opponent and is about to break through the illusion of the witch. Her existence has been almost completely denied. It's only natural that she's suffering. Just now, even you smashed the illusion of the witch by saying that there's no way that Kinzo exists. Here's the proof that your attack has reached Beato. This agony of hers. Wait, so is the rest of the answer arcs going to be that we get the obvious answer in chapter 5, but Battler's like, no, I refuse to believe it because I, I don't want to hurt poor Beato, whom I'm definitely not in love with. Oh, God. And it's going to take 
four fucking chapters for Battler to confront it and be like, nope, 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 nope. Okay, okay. I okay. mean, we have seen Battler to be pretty pig-headed, yeah. right? Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't start suspecting any of his immediate family members or any of that stuff, yeah. right? It took a very long time for it. So, I don't think that'll be the, for the rest of the thing, but maybe for this chapter, <laughs> that'll. <laughs> I at least tried to wipe away the sweat on Beato's forehead with a handkerchief. It is true I promised Beato that I'd let her die, but it was supposed to happen peacefully. I wasn't planning to make her suffer first. My own goals are to make the sleeping Beato suffer like this before killing her. As if they had seen right through to my mixed feelings, the two witches grinned. Definitely not in love with her. They don't know what you're talking about. Dad only overheard because you kept yelling about the inheritance, right, Anarchy? This isn't my fault. It was just an unlucky coincidence, okay? He just happened to be in the corridor and heard. It, it was an accident, I tell you, an accident. Could you two give it a rest? Just call it our bad luck this time and give it up. Wait, Ava? What? And that couldn't have happened, right? Dad only overheard because you kept yelling about the inheritance. What? Hmm. I'm gonna read the rest of your line, or oh, it's still my line. Okay, sorry, we hopped back, so I didn't know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, it's all right. If you leave a man alone, his mood will pop right back to normal. Hopefully, father's feelings weren't hurt so much that he writes up some strange will. Lamau. Lol. Lamau. The relatives took a deep breath and fell silent. Hey, you can't jump around either, Maria. What will you do if Angie-chan falls? What? Angie's here this time? This isn't the game board, though, right? Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Sorry to keep you waiting. The boat is ready. Okay, let's go. Won't get anywhere by complaining now. Oh, we eagerly await your return to this island. Not. Uh, they're they're leaving. Oh yeah, they're leaving. Okay, yeah, you're right. Natsu, he was sitting on a bench in the rose garden, looking completely worn out. Gee, I am so tired from gaslighting my family all day. Gaslight, gatekeep, go, boss. <laughs> That's what I always say. However, when she noticed that Cannon and Kumasawa were coming back, she immediately sat up straight, regaining the dignity of the head's wife. Did the boat leave? Yes. It departed just a minute ago. I see. Oh, I'm gone already. Goodbye. Good job seeing them off. What is my husband doing? He returned to his room a short while ago. He is, uh, resting. Since the previous day, Kraus had been almost overwhelmed by anxiety over the thought that Kinzo's death might be discovered. When the family conference ended, his weirdness must have suddenly gotten a hold of him. However, the way he had refused to let even a sliver of his true intentions slip out, and the manner in which he had managed to act as though everything was normal, showed that Kraus's nerve was nothing to sneeze at. Okay, so I kind of assumed that maybe Kraus would give away the game at some point. But not so he seems okay with his performance. Yeah. That that that's certainly interesting. How was it? She's gaslighting the family, gatekeeping their access to the study, and girl bossing her husband. <laughs> there you go. Did they seem to notice anything suspicious about father? Oh, not at all. Ava Shama and the rest were having a big ruckus over how the master overheard them talking about the inheritance, right? <laughs> Wasn't their panicking just priceless? Woo <sighs> Yes. They were quite shaken up. But, Kumasawa, you really are quite an actress. The way you acted all panicked in the corridor made it seem like Father really was there. Wow, we're just laying it all out. Okay, cool. Kumasawa-san is quite talented at that sort of thing. Sideburn. <laughs> <laughs> Come now, I don't deserve such praise. Ooh, 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 ooh. So is that another little hint that we should be, we should definitely be analyzing Kumasawa's actions a bit more deeply? Probably. Knowing that she has repeat, repeat, 
uh, repute for being able to uh, act convincingly. Yeah. Gaggle? <laughs> I always have to give Genji strict orders not to easily swallow your stories when you call in sick. <laughs> now that's just too harsh, madam. <laughs> you really did a good job. Both of you as well as Genji and Shannon will get your pay for a month's worth of past vacation time as well as five extra days just as promised. Pay for a month's worth of past vacation. As well as five... Oh, wow. Consider this as a confidential benefit. Talk with Genji when you collect your pay so that the other servants don't find out. So it is just these ones that are in on it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so so Goda definitely not in on it. Despite being okay. <laughs> sure, we understand, right? <laughs> Kumasawa san, your voice is too loud. <laughs> not good, not good. Ooh. Good point. Let's leave it at that for the time being. We should all return to our regular duties. That's right, I've had go to prepare some special tea. Tell him to serve it. Damn, after they mentioned the Marco Polo tea, I am now sad that we don't have any more of it. You could just order some if you want some more. Could. No one's stopping you. Uh, that's, that's right. I could, <laughs> I could be buying tea right now. I could you be c- buying tea 24-7. You could be. Not so he let them know she wanted to be left alone for a while so she could drink some black tea in the rose garden. The black tea that had been carried all the way to the bench was the Sri Lankan tea Dimbula that she had promised Beato, along with some patis. Sitting on the other side of the snack, staring at it curiously, the wife of the head and her witch could be seen. Her witch! Aww. <laughs> so this is patis. I just assumed it would be some kind of baked sweet. Apparently, Natsuhi, not realizing that it had a curry-like spicy flavor, had started choking after putting it in her mouth. To describe it in Japanese terms, it was like fried dumplings stuffed with mashed curry-flavored potatoes. As a household dish, it would probably be pretty popular with the kids. However, it was something of a shock to Natsuhi, who expected that a treat to go with tea would be sweet. Didn't you know? Dimbula always goes with this. Black tea always goes with cookies. Oh, but chocolate is good, too. You must have some sweet bean jelly with Japanese tea, although salted konbu also works. Chinese tea goes with Chinese dumplings. Though I like moon cakes, too. Don't you dare mention those moon cakes in front of me! (laughs) (laughs) Nazi's first annual will destroy the moon day! (laughs) Also, can we talk about Beato's childlike, sheer childlike joy for just like, let's talk about food right? and tea. <laughs> <sighs> I'm surprised. You like that Nazi continued to be a terrible boss to Shannon and Cannon after letting them on the scheme of to conceal Kinzo's death? Yeah, right? What the fuck? You know a lot about various cultures, don't you? Well, I haven't been living a thousand years for nothing. Also, I love this track. This is, uh, this is dye, right? Mm. I think. I've tried refined teas from all over the world. Perhaps you could call it a journey through the world of tea. That does seem like it would be a wonderful way to travel the world. Before today, I never knew that one could enjoy a tea like this. I will treasure this experience. <laughs> I know you're sitting on some very valuable information that could personally destroy me, but I'm assigning you to extra 12 hours for back talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how can she get away with that, actually? <laughs> I cannot leave Rokinjima. <laughs> this is the only way I can travel. What about you? I'm sure you've elegantly traveled the world like any wealthy wife might. Before Jessica was born, my husband took me to many countries. Before Mary and I never once traveled overseas, so each time was a fresh and new experience. Not so he has moon trauma. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
sounds like you were also born into a very rigid family. Dai is actually the music director of TNC. Not only composes a lot of the music, but also picks what tracks where. Oh, interesting. Cool. Th I was going to say, I have the Dai soundtrack, and I have the ZTS ones. Those are the only uh, soundtracks I currently have for this game, but I'm trying to find more. It was strict, but they gave me a wonderful upbringing. It would be rude to my father and mother to call that rigid. <laughs> That's a pretty eloquent way to call it rigid. <laughs> Kraus might have pitied Natsuhi. Or he might have wanted to take her away from the rigid Usharomia family for a little bit and let her rest. Or he might simply have wanted to take his wife abroad, countries he knew well, to show off everything he knew. Unlike father, my husband is fond of Asian nations. Hong Kong, Taiwan, Korea, Thailand. I think we also went to Malaysia. <laughs> Imagine forgetting countries that you went to. <laughs> that Krauss, was he trying to rebel against Kinzo's Western tastes? But Asia is good too. After all, the Japanese are strongly influenced by the West. When I think of foreign countries, only Western ones come to mind. But you mustn't forget the East. I myself knew a few things about the West, but I knew very little about the East. I seem to recall my husband making fun of me now and then during our travels. Beato subtly peered into Natsuhi's heart as the latter grumbled that the trips had all been very tiring. Nah! Are you listening? This is called an Areca Nut. It is a popular luxury food item around here. You gonna look that up real quick? Yeah. Okay. It looked like a small, round, gourd-like nut that had been smashed with cucumber wedged in it. At a glance, it looked as though it would probably taste like pickles. What's the word? Oh, it's the betel nut. Okay. Ah, see. So I just bite it here? She tried to bite into the one her husband was holding. He suddenly moved it away. Forgive my not to he voice. I'm covering for uh, Vivian <laughs> while she looks up where this comes from. It felt kind of embarrassing, like she was a fish after some bait. <laughs> no, wait up. You have to eat it in a certain way. Yes, you are supposed to bite it. Bite it. Chew it. But don't swallow it. Huh? Even though you bite and chew it, you can't swallow it? Yes. Bite and chew. Don't swallow. And don't drink the juice. It'll make your stomach hurt. I don't understand. Why would you eat something like that? Think of it as something like gum. Chew it and enjoy the flavor. Then take the scraps you've bitten and the juice and spit it out into a paper cup like this. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Dear, the inside of your mouth is bright red. Wipe it off. Wipe it off. Ah! Even her favorite handkerchief, which she had wiped Krauss's mouth with, had bright red marks on it. Something that's poisonous if eaten or drunk, and it makes the inside of your mouth so bright red. And having to spit something out after you put it in your mouth, how indecent! Thinking this Nazi, he adamantly refused Krauss's invitation. No way, no way. I don't need any. I don't need any. <laughs> this is a cross-cultural experience. What is the point of traveling if we don't do things that can only be done here? <laughs> Krauss kept chewing, ignoring the fact that even his lips were being colored bright red. Father likes these too! He must have ordered them long ago, because he used to chew away at them on the mansion's stairs. Them wearing the same Ushuraia fancy suits on vacation is really funny. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, it seems he stopped ever since you arrived. Look here. Father, the person you... Oh, sorry. Look here, father, the person you respect even more than me. Enjoy these all the time. Look, look, don't be shy. Take some. <laughs> no, no, stop it. Stop it, dear. Is this meant to be cute? <laughs> or is this, like, frightening? The PS3 uses a CG for this interaction. Oh! If someone wants to post that CG in the Discord, we'll take a look at it on the break. Drink travel cross at the innocence of a child. He didn't even conceal his jealousy of the respect Natsuhi normally gave to Kinzo. Just being able to see that side of her husband made traveling all the way to another country worthwhile. 
Proust urged her even harder to bite it, but Natsuhi, undaunted, ran from place to place and finally yelled that he was being too pushy. <laughs> Proust was miffed the whole bus ride. What a child to let a little thing like this get him down, Natsuhi thought exasperatedly. Then a native tour guide in the bus took out one of those areca nuts and started explaining about it. It had apparently been a beloved luxury item in these parts since ancient times, similar to tobacco. Just like in Natsuhi's case, it was starting to be disliked by young people and was becoming obsolete. Furthermore, it was treated as a good luck charm in this area, and was known as a symbol for couples. She looked at her husband's face. He turned away abruptly, but it looks like his cheeks had gotten a little bit red. <laughs> oh my god, fucking flushed schoolboy Kraus. <laughs> Did you know that the Eureka Nut is the world's fourth most consumed drug? Really? Apparently. What are the first three? Uh, the first three... Uh, nicotine, alcohol, caffeine. Yeah, okay, that checks out. So, you then leaned on your husband and held his hand, did you? What the heck? There's also a CG for blushing crafts. <laughs> que due pale. You and your husband share a pretty pure love, don't you? Maybe I'll finally get Senpai to notice me. <laughs> <laughs> did you get all fired up? You know, like that night. <laughs> Red-faced and avoiding Beato's eye, Natsuhi tried to hide her embarrassment by swallowing the pot as whole, chewing with her cheeks puffed out like a blowfish. Beato said, Yep, this is the best snack anyone could have with tea. And nodded several times, a broad smile on her face. I love that everyone who imagines Beato imagines Beato relentlessly bullying them. Right? It's like, you're the one who's bringing this about. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can imagine not being bullied at any time. Kraus can't even be like a fruit. Like, he's got to be like, um, by the way, my dad likes these too. <laughs> also, Evie appreciates your Italian interjections, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Kraus takes Natsuhi on the papyrus date. I am one cool dude. <laughs> However, that's only how it was when we were newlyweds. Right now, I cannot even leave Rokunjima. I'm a bird in a cage. Well, it's well, the sucks. same for me. Can't even leave Rokunjima, huh? I can keep dying, but I just can't escape Rokunjima. Yep, that's the endless magic. I'm also a bird in a cage. Despite all your rage? Despite all my rage, I'm still just a bird in a cage. When Beto says snack, she actually means not to heap bullying. <laughs> 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 I don't know much about you and I won't pry. However, I do see that you f Who's talking? Natsuhi. However, I do see that you face circumstances not to be taken lightly. <laughs> I have no desire to act like the chief prisoner here. Is that how Natsuhi sees herself then? Let's be friendly as fellow birds in this cage. I've taken a liking to you. <laughs> really? Thank you. The instructions and orders you gave the servants for this family conference were superb. You took everything from where Kinza would be and when, what he did, what he left behind, and put it all together splendidly without any contradictions. That detailed written plan of yours had the same beauty as a high-level magic circle. To make it look like Kinjo actually existed and was living life his own way, she had written his schedule for the day down to the finest detail and made the servants follow it to the letter. When did he meet whom and where, and what did he leave them? When did he do what and where, and what changed? As a result, even though the relatives never saw Kinzo even once, they hadn't suspected in the slightest that he hadn't been there. Ava and the rest truly believed that Kinzo had just happened to be walking through the hall when he heard them talking about the inheritance and went into a rage. Everything had gone just as Natsuhi's plan had predicted, down to the finest detail. And the cooperation by the servants had also worked smoothly, down to the finest detail. We had to stop this secret from getting out, no matter the cost. That's why I double-checked the plan thoroughly. <laughs> Your willpower and attention to detail summoned success with certainty. <coughs> <laughs> what? Sorry, what? I As a witch, <laughs> it seems that you're in Lady Lambda Delta's camp. At your current level, 
As soon as you become self-aware of that as magic, you will be worthy of calling yourself a witch apprentice. If you call something like that magic, then that would make Kumasawa the witch of feigned illnesses. <laughs> it's only on busy days that she calls us to say that she's taking the day off because of her bad back. Like every year's family conference, for example. The, really? witch, of, the witch of feigned illnesses is really funny given the whole uh, Sagan D's video. It really is, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, yes, of course we've seen. That's what part of inspired us for our uh, the, the announcement video for this one. Cole Kavala, no, you've got Kumasawa completely wrong there. She's a witch of a much, much higher level. If you knew what she really was, it'd shock you. Wouldn't it? <laughs> Wouldn't it? Why don't you tell us? These are the answer arcs. You can tell us. Tell us. Watching these two have their pleasant chat was another pair with the steam rising from their black tea. However, the second pair was in a world that the first couldn't see, where golden roses bloomed. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> Rodovi was kind enough to mix us some of that dimbula tea, too. Mm. You want some tea? Mm. It goes in your face hole! <laughs> it felt as though Beato muttered something. For the first time, it felt as though something had gotten through to her. Surely she had taken an interest in the black tea and felt like drinking it. Thinking this battler took Beato's cup and her hand, making her hold the cup. Makes suck on these jokes, but she also somehow incomprehensibly incorporates mackerels into them. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> Beato's eyes trembled sadly and her fingers shook, almost as though she couldn't even move her fingers as she wanted to and was mourning the fact that she could no longer enjoy the tea she had once loved by her own power. That is how she looked. So Battler put his hand on Beato's, grabbed hold of the teacup, and lifted it to her lips. No wonder people ship these two. My my brain can't stop playing um, Girlfriend in a Coma on loop. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be a better episode title for this one. <laughs> then, though it was only a single mouthful, Beato sipped. The days they had been locked in a killing fest with red swords and blue wedges already seemed like the distant past. Now, not only was Beato unable to do that, it was even difficult for her to make her body do as she pleased. Even just drinking a mouthful of black tea like this was hard. Who oh, is it? That rose aroma makes for a great black tea. Do you like it? Mm. Of course, Beato didn't respond. <sighs> what happened to you? Is this another strategy? Are you pretending to be in a slump so you can chuck me later? I need a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> was that a Baroness reference? Yes, it was. Oh, yeah. If that's what you're after, the same trick won't work again, so give it a rest. I can't get fired up with you like this. <sighs> hey, isn't it about time for you to start laughing loudly saying... Cut you, dumbass, or something. Any kind of joke stops being funny if you drag it out too much. Especially if it's a rehash. Or a really stupid voice. Laugh. La just like you're cackling over there as you drink without Natsuhi. <sighs> Can't you at least grin? Never again. This child will never laugh again. Those sudden words were exceedingly cruel. Oh, there's a special kind of mackerel that's found only in Shagandis. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wrong voice. Wow, yeah, wrong voice. Shit. <coughs> Sorry, it's the Ujaromia family curse. <laughs> I don't know how that affects witches now, but apparently just being in proximity to you idiots makes this happen. <laughs> How can you say that for sure? Don't you try to take Beato's right to laugh away from her? Or should I say it in red, then? I shook my head furiously. Then, with an expression that didn't reveal her thoughts in the slightest, Burncastle spoke while looking at Beato's face. And the word she used was completely incomprehensible to me. 
Congratulations. 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 <laughs> for, wait, for, for what? Is this a reference? Beato is like this as a result of your victory. What? What are you talking about? You said something interesting in a previous game. You said this would be torture, where you both torment each other. That was right. It is torture for Beato as well. And <laughs> you won that torture game. That's why Beato's soul was killed. Why she became a doll-like corpse. Are, are you saying I, I did this to Beato? The battle ends when one of you loses the will to try and win. As far as the battle between you and Beato goes, that was already concluded in the previous game. Well, it probably happened without you noticing, though. In that case, why hasn't the game ended if I've already won? Why is this game still continuing? The shackle attached to that girl's ankle. That's a rule Lambda made. Even if Beatrice tries... Oh, right. Narration. <clears throat> Even if Beatrice tries to yield or gets discouraged or gives up, she isn't capable of stepping down from the game. That's the rule. Or maybe it's a curse. In the past, I supported you when it looked like you were going to give in. Though you probably couldn't perceive it. I assisted you by giving you hints and making things go your way. That's why you're able to be here. Now. Remember? Remember how I saved you? Burncastle stared at me. It's true I wasn't aware of it, but just maybe. I was saved by her. In the same way, Lambda is supporting Beato. And this time, Beato is on the verge of giving in. That's why Lambda's been giving her support this round. To keep her from giving in. That is what that shackle is. <laughs> Just like Sword Art Online, SMH! <laughs> By refusing to let her resign, she's rescued Beato within the game. Rescued her from what?! Normally, there are only two ways for this game to end. Either one side will accept defeat and resign, or one side will win the game with a checkmate. Beato was about to collide with the first way. That is why Lambda crushed that chance and managed to just barely avoid losing. By the rules of this game, that is an impressive bit of support. So the only way this game can end now is if I win. At the very least, until I do win, this witch called Lambda Delta can probably try to buy time for Beato to make a comeback. But that'll just prolong Beato's suffering even more. Neither of us want that. Both Beato and I fought with all we had, trying to win. The game repeated several times because we were both giving it everything we could muster. Then, that one time, we confronted each other head-on with all of our strength. And... Beato acknowledged her loss. She said she wanted me to end this game and entrusted everything to me. So Burncastle's words are the truth. She said it's my fault Beato's become a living corpse. That's true, but it's something both of us wanted. Our match has already been resolved. Even so, the game won't end. That is why Beato put her trust in me. She told me to win quickly and end this game. <sighs> Bored stare. Bored now. Now that the game's been resolved, letting it continue any further means endless torture for Beato. Nothing more than a nightmare. I've got to give her a perfect checkmate, end this game in the truest sense, and let her rest in peace. For that reason, I'll keep fighting. But by continuing the game, Beato's eternal torture will continue. I felt as though I could only let her sleep peacefully by slowly strangling her to death. I'm starting to feel like truth doesn't matter anymore. As long as Beato's satisfied, who cares what happens in the game? Beato resigned. I'll abandon the truth of the illusion of the witch and return home with my family. 
there anything wrong with that? If only Lambda Delta hadn't placed the curse of that shackle on her, this battle would be over already. That is why I found it detestable. This game, which I can't finish without tormenting Beato more, is detestable. <sighs> Watch this. Beato's starting to look like she's in pain every time you get closer to the truth. So you're suddenly going easy on her. And go as easy on her as much as you can. Now why don't you just let Beato win while you're at it? Then your little sister can have a lonely, tragic future focused, forced on her endlessly. That's not how it is. Ugh. That's right. I have to return for Angie's sake as well. I know this isn't the time to start feeling compassion for Beato. In that case, make sure you kill her. Kill this witch without fail. Mm. Even though Beato was right there, Birdcastle spoke without holding back. Your goal is to kill this woman. In the last game, you said it at Beato's request. You said, I will kill you. Yeah, that may be true, but that doesn't mean you get to complain about it. <laughs> Did you know? When you tear one of your fingernails out, it's better to do it in one go. Pulling it out like you do, timidly twisting and slow, hurts so much more. What you're doing sounds much more like torture to me. Ugh. If you have any compassion, kill her all at once. That's how killing works. That is none of your business! I'm the one who gets to decide how to perform <laughs> her last rites. You and that Lambda Delta witch have nothing to do with this. I'll kill her. I won't let anyone else do it. As long as you don't lose that willpower, I'm betting on you. Okay? Make sure you don't forget. I've got a fiver riding on your victory. <laughs> so, like, make sure you win. Because otherwise I won't be able to get that pack of combos. Right. <laughs> They've got, like, pepperoni flavor, and just, I'm a little bit peckish, you know? It's that, <laughs> they're salty, but, like, not too salty, and, like, the little salt, like, pepperoni flavor is, it's a good combination. <laughs> oh, my God, I just figured out why they call them combos. <laughs> Unless this game is resolved, you will never be released. You won't be allowed to abandon this game, either. <laughs> I get it. I know what Lambda's after. She wants to make you lose your will to fight just like Beato, to make you a pair of living dolls, to keep this world in perpetual equilibrium. And she wants to do that because so she can undo what, Bernie? Huh? <laughs> you don't want that, do you? I wouldn't like it either. Why should I give a deal about what you want? Still, I won't throw this game away. I won't abandon my responsibility to fight against Beato. Well, I'm glad our goals are the same. So you'll be able to kill this child without any hesitation, right? Hmm. <sighs> That's right. Mm hmm. I have no way of knowing whether these those words eased her pain or hurt her, but I can tell by the dull tingling in my chest that I'll surely believe I've hurt her. I have no way of knowing what the silent Beato feels. If I think I've hurt her, does that mean she's actually been hurt? And if I didn't think I'd hurt her, would that mean no one's gotten hurt because of me? <sighs> so, about that Beato who's drinking tea over there with Natsuhi. You can handle that, right? Yeah, no problem. It's the same as it was with Kinzo. Beatrice doesn't exist. This is a fake illusion of a witch that Natsuhi created, since she believed she was borrowing a witch's power when she thought up a brilliant plan to overcome hardship. It only looks like they're drinking together because Lambda Delta, who is the Game Master and the one telling the story, interpreted it that way. 
Interesting that they're bringing in, in the uh, the agency of the person telling the story here. Indeed. Especially considering what we uh, pegged Beato as getting there. Mm. If you could stare at the scene without a fragment of love for Natsuhi, you wouldn't see an illusion like that. That's why with my eyes, all I can see is Natsuhi all alone, drinking her tea in silence. Without love, it cannot be seen. <laughs> they said the lie. They said the lie. They said the Oh my god, they said the lie. <laughs> because love is lacking, it cannot be seen. You're looking at a daydream Nazahi is showing us. Beatrice doesn't exist there. <sighs> Beato mumbled softly. It was a small voice that made it sound like she was in pain. The thorn of Burncastle's truth had stabbed into her chest. Yeah, that's probably true. I think your theory is right. But don't say that in front of Beato. Doesn't matter where I say it. This is Beato's world we're in. Also, it's not like I'm protecting Beato, but it's still possible Aunt Nazi really is drinking tea with some unknown person X who calls themselves Beatrice. This scene takes place a year before everything else, right? The number of people on the island on this day has never been shown with the red truth. Sure. Even Lambda hasn't said anything in red about the number of people in Rokinjima on this day. In that case, it's possible for Aunt Natsuhi to claim that she really did drink tea with a woman calling herself Beatrice. Just like I can't deny your theory and you can't deny mine. That means you can't say for sure whether the Beato here there is an illusion or not. Oh, is this that cat box theory? I thought we did that already. I don't might have worked on Beato, but it won't work on me. Why not? After all, Natsuki is drinking tea all by herself right there. <laughs> there was a violent sound of glass breaking. And the Beato who laughed happily and cracked jokes about Natsuki's newly wed years was erased. A lonely wind blew, and the one person who remained on the bench drinking tea with a tired expression was Aunt Natsuki all by herself. Um. Beato groaned. I could see clearly that she was in anguish. Another illusion of the witch had been smashed, drawing Beato towards death. In short, this is what the battle to let Beato rest in peace is all about. A second ago, Burncastle likened our fight to the torture of tearing fingernails out. If I had to tear them out anyway, then my last bit of compassion towards Beato should be to minimize that pain. In other words, even if I want to minimize her pain, I still have to cause it. I have to accept that look of anguish on her face. And at the same time, I realized what a merciless thing the red truth was. Right now, in this rose garden, there is no one except Aunt Natsuhi. In other words, there are no observers except for Aunt Natsuhi. So if that lone observer were to say that she had had some tea with Beato, no one should be able to refute that. If there's someone, something no one else can deny, doesn't that mean it's the truth? Does it? <laughs> Aunt Natsuhi enjoying the roses and drinking tea together with Beato. How could anyone have the right to mercilessly trample up that pleasant moment? <sighs> Burn is awful. I think I have a crush. <laughs> yeah, you and everyone else. <laughs> the red truth is like a blade. In a battle with a witch... It is the blade that sometimes tears your theories apart, but sometimes becomes a weapon you can fight back with. I know. So what? Don't use it without reason. A blade is a tool you use when you're supposed to, but it's a weapon if you use it out of malice. True enough, Aunt Natsuhi wasn't really drinking tea with a witch. However, saying that with the Red Truth probably has nothing to do with our game. Our game is the tale of October 1986. The two days of the crime give us more than enough time to injure each other without our red and blue blades glistening. This isn't about the illusion of the witch. It's about Aunt Natsuhi's privacy. Who could anyone have the right to expose that? 
do you want to acknowledge that a witch actually existed here and drank tea with Natsuhi? Weren't you trying to deny the existence of witches? That's right, if we're talking about our game, the two-day period from October 4th to October 5th <laughs> in 1986 specifically, those two calendar days, not when we arrive on the island, not when the storm clouds come, but specifically those two calendar days... <laughs> Battler tying himself into fucking knots to be like, actually, witches do exist, but I still don't lose because what I meant was witches just only don't exist those two days. But like the rest of the time, they exist and they're real and strong and hot and they're my friend and they bully me. <laughs> <laughs> but I have no desire to question whether or not witches exist outside of that game board. In the first place, the Devil's Proof argument makes it impossible to deny the existence of witches. And according to the rules of this game, saying something like what you did in red is a forbidden move that leads to a stalemate. You can't deny the existence of witches, not even with the red truth. True, I, I guess. I never thought I'd hear you talk so glibly about witches existing. <sighs> not bad, Lambda. You've done a good job getting Battler stuck between his human culprit theory and the idea that witches existing wouldn't be so bad. She really excels at controlling human hearts. Looks like I'd better start helping you out even more. I really couldn't care less about you two. Disappear. This game is between Beato and me. We're going to keep this game to ourselves. <laughs> what? <laughs> After all, <laughs> I'm enjoying this game too. <laughs> Burncastle disappeared, leaving only that unpleasant laugh behind. After that, all that remained was Natsuhi, sipping tea all alone. Beato, her hand still on the teacup as she stared blankly at the surface of the liquid. And me. Burncastle and Lambda Delta. Virgilia called them your friends, but... You really should choose your friends more carefully. <laughs> or wait, maybe they should actually make a good match with an ill-natured person like you. <laughs> Witchburn. Hmm. No? It's more fun when you talk back. <laughs> Beato didn't answer. Paddler took Beato's hand, made her hold the cup again, and brought it to her lips. Beato made a quiet sound in her throat and drank another gulp. <laughs> Better start helping you out even more. Is that a threat? <laughs> <laughs> then Natsuhi's lonely tea time ended, and that truth which Natsuhi's alone and observed by no one else had been defiled. Natsuhi's world, surely. That tea party, which had been peaceful despite her annoyance at Beato for making fun of her too much, came to an end, and the two of them parted ways. However, in Natsuhi's exposed truth, she was all alone. Natsuhi tottered away. On the bench, only a single person's cup remained. But Burn probably does smell like a litter box. Yep. <laughs> Episode 5 is ship bait. <laughs> I don't know. We're, I don't see it. What, do you think there's ship bait in here? We're like three hours in and we're, it's all, here comes the airplane, Beato. Here you go. Open wide. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Woo. Hold on. I'm going to have a sip of coffee here. I am also going to have a sip of your coffee. You can have the rest of it if you want. I don't. It's I lukewarm at this sip. point, which is perfect for you. After dashing to her bedroom. And yet the rest is yours. Oh, thank you. Jessica answered the phone call that had been transferred there. Uh, hello? We are nearing the scene. Okay. The scene. Huh? The scene, huh? Sorry to keep you waiting. Battler. Yes, that's me. Oh, wait. No, this isn't Meta Battler anymore. What do you think you're doing? Not contacting us for six years. How's it going? Oh, really? How the hell do I know? <laughs> shut up. <laughs> no, really, shut up. So that means you'll be coming to this year's family conference, right? I mean, it's been six whole years. 
I think I gave Jessica a different voice, and that now I'm doing the same one that I did for Lambda. No, you're, you're, it's a little bit less shrill. Okay. That's fine. Five businessmen in expensive suits were visiting in the parlor, giving Kraus and Natsuhi a progress report on their business. Spread out on the table were the blueprints and designs for a building, as well as documents related to expenditures and the like. So packed that even a teacup would have gotten in the way. Officially, they were here to give Kraus a progress report. But in actuality, Kraus had called them all the way over to Rokujima so that Natsuhi could hear from them directly. This was because Natsuhi needed to hear someone other than her husband explain what condition <laughs> their business was in. It's it's harsh, but it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't trust me either, see? <laughs> it's the blonde voice? No, the blonde voice is this one. This is the one the stakes get. And they all seven of them get the exact same voice, because there's no way I could tell them apart. <laughs> In other words, even though another family conference without Kinzo was approaching, their business had not yet earned them any money. Oof! After telling the guests to wait for a short while, Kraus took Nazi out into the hall and once again summarized the situation. In short, they say the work is proceeding even better than we imagined. This is where my personal connection to the governor really starts to pay off. <laughs> By now, it's absolutely impossible for this sketch to get away from us. To the contrary, it's growing so big that one one go will be able to regain not just the power of attorney, but everything we've lost up to this point as well. <laughs> Kraus spoke passionately. This made it seem all the more suspicious to Natsuhi, but this time at least she had to admit that everything really did seem to be going well. Certainly, this business Kraus boasted of had expanded in scope over the last year and was promising an even greater payoff than had been anticipated initially. Whether it would prove to be a winner or not, investors had gathered around it and they were rapidly gaining funds. This must be what they mean when they say money summons money. <laughs> the stakes are basically just mammon and six lesser mammons. Wow, burn. <laughs> it was probably the greatest success of Kraus's life so far. No, it probably would be his greatest success yet. That point was where Natsuhi's misgivings lay. True, it was certain, and Kraus had said, they wouldn't lose this catch now. However, the fish on the line had gotten too big. We'll definitely be able to reel this fish in. It's a real big fish. <laughs> if you uh, not no? All right. There's no need to rush. It's such a success that I wish I could show it to Father if you were still alive. Yes, I know. I'm going to shout this in the hallway. <laughs> However, I believe you made me a promise last year. You said you were sure you could manage something within a year. A pained look rose to Krause's face. They certainly had hooked a fat fish that guaranteed great success. However, it would require an appropriate amount of time to reel it in. Now, so he pressed Krause, asking if there was any way for them to make money before this year's family conference, but Krause kept saying that he needed just one more year. Kraus planned to use this unprecedented success to catapult them into further challenges in the future. Because of this, he didn't want to do anything that would raise suspicions by making them seem like they were rushing to get money. Certainly, fortunes tend to turn against people who take it for granted even in the slightest. Anxious beggars never prosper. On many occasions before now, Kraus had gotten cold feet and sold off businesses that would surely have brought in a profit if he had just holdled. <laughs> and had, in effect, given away his winning picks. Natsuhi also knew about Krause's FOMO. <laughs> she knew that guts were the thing her husband lacked most. That is why she was unable to refuse when Krause said he wanted to prudently wait just one more year. Also, Battler called Jessica? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> How wonderful that things are going well. It would appear I'll have to sit around here as a ghost for a little longer. <laughs> you don't look too disappointed. You're fated to be chewed to bits by demons the moment you leave this world. Is that what the... Okay. My apologies, Father. For one more year, you might not be granted peace. It is fine. Fear not, Natsuhi. I am no longer the Ushiromiya family head. The ghost of the study should obediently follow the current head's commands. I've taken a look at Krause's charts, and they aren't bad at all. Even from your perspective, Father. Kinza going straight to hell confirmed. All of these people are going straight <laughs> to hell. <laughs> Maybe not Angie. 
Hmm. Maria is going to help because she wants to. <laughs> They're pretty good, even from my perspective. Everyone is confident in victory, gathering together a significant quantity of magical power. As a result, that victory is growing ever deeper, involving more and more people and magic beginning to create gold. A perfect embodiment of classic alchemy. Lambda's going to help because Burn is there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> huh. If you've earned even the Golden Witch's approval, that is very reassuring. Rejoice, Natsuhi. This business of Krauss's will save the Ushiromiya family from its crisis without fail. Without fail. Without fail! <laughs> Thank you very much. And if you would once again... <laughs> Indeed. We'll have to overcome one more family conference, won't we? Yes, I think things went well last year, but I imagine some of the relatives will find it suspicious. I think this year's conference will be a critical time. During last year's family conference, you were correct to predict that the same thing might have to happen again. <laughs> Even for those who aren't witches, preparing for the worst case scenario is one of the basics for getting on in this world. So what will you do this year? Just like last year, I will see to it that a high concentration of the fa servants who know Father's secret are there on the day of the conference. High concentration of the servants who know Father's secret. So there are more than the ones we see on the island? On that on the game board? Is that the implication there? Or is she saying that so. the high concentrations of the servants that are on the island are those who know Father's secret? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not sure what I'm not sure what a high concentration of the servants who know the Father's Secret are there on the day of the conference. She doesn't say all of them. She says a high concentration of them. Yeah. So are there other servants who know Father's, who know about Kinzo's death that aren't on the game board? Oh, maybe. I don't know. That that That's what I was worried about. Yeah, it's unclear. Okay. Cannon can go to heaven as a treat. <laughs> Chair heaven. <laughs> Sorry, they don't let furniture into heaven, it turns out. <laughs> Some of the relatives may already have noticed that Father isn't around. A careless show might actually put us in more danger of exposure. Indeed, it is said that too much is as bad as too little. Then what will you do? Unlike last year, I think we'll go with a plan that has you staying inside your study till the end. That would be suitable. Barricades are straightforward and simple, a final trump card. No matter how strongly the toxin fills this mansion, as long as the closed room barrier remains around this room, it will be impossible to deny Kinzo's existence. I guarantee that myself. However, when forming a barricade, it is inevitable that you will be surrounded. I know. Even so, I beg the both of you lend us your power just one more time. I cannot disobey the orders of the new head. Furthermore, a ghost cannot disobey the orders of the living. So they uh, they are explicitly calling not and not say he thinks of herself as the head at this yep. point. Okay, that's important. If you tell me not to leave this room, I will obey. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not satisfied. If you want me to lend you my power, I won't listen to a mere request. Yes. You are the family alchemist. So, I won't ask you to help. I order you to help. Your magic is the one thing we can rely on. Use that power to create an <laughs> illusion of father just one more time. Incorrect. Furniture goes to Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Det <laughs> Detroit is furniture heaven. Because there, finally, for the first and only time, we are able to become human. <laughs> yeah! Dude, dude. You know who hasn't fucking shown up yet? Shannon? Yeah. Yeah, it's we weird. We saw her picture like once in the very beginning and she's not here. Does yeah. Shannon exist? <laughs> Shannon doesn't exist theory. That's a new one. <laughs> very well. I hear and obey. She was mentioned by name though. Yeah. Yeah. I find your confidence quite pleasing. From the shadows of the study. 
the shadows. The shadows of the study. Battler, watch the exchange between these three. I see. So we made it to this year's family conference. Grandfather was in a bad mood, so he shut himself in his study and didn't appear in front of anyone. Hmm. Not so he spoke boldly about how she would somehow overcome this year's crisis and protect the Ushiromia family's honor until the end. While Kinzo praised her, saying that her plan looked her plan looked promising. Beato also praised her, saying that Natsuhi's dignified confidence was even more well-suited for the headship than Krause's. However, right now, the true number of people in this room was... <sighs> the moment I thought that... No, just because I thought it, Beato grabbed at her chest and moaned. Uh... <sighs> Don't worry, this is still outside the game board. So I won't deny you or grandfather over there. Mm. I put my hand on Beato's side as she, Beato's as she tried to hold back the pain deep inside her chest. I've already told Burncastle the two-day period of the 1986 family conference is all I need to deny the illusion of the witch. In the last game, you said and read that grandfather's dead at the start for time for all games. However, you never mentioned whether grandfather was alive or dead before the start time for the games. In short. Even if Grandfather exists in this place right now, that doesn't create any contradictions. Whoa! I'm blue. Dabba D. Shannon can be real as a treat. I love that because the ad shorts the list of ever-growing characters who made up with a wife with a made-up waifu. <laughs> yep, you're right. You're right. My hand touching her left. My. <sighs> I'm gonna try that sentence again. Is that yeah. cool? Okay. My hand touching her let off a faint blue light which seeped into her chest. That light tenderly wrapped itself around the splinters in Beato's chest. And I also can't deny the existence of the Beatrice in this place. The number of people in this island outside the game board. In other words, before October 4th, 1986, has not been proclaimed in red. Therefore, there is nothing strange about Beatrice existing here. Mm. Beato's expression softened slightly. My blue light slowly began to melt the red splinters that denied the illusion of the witch. Mm. Beato still wore the same sad expression, but she lifted her face and looked me straight in the eye. Though she was silent, her eyes told me that her pain had subsided. The feelings that showed in her eyes were gratitude for taking the pain away and appreciation. I wasn't surprised for even leaving even a tiny bit of leeway for witches to exist. Unable to look directly at those pure eyes of hers, I reflexively averted my gaze. <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea. Oh, what? Yo, listen up. Here's the story about a little guy who lives in a witch world, and all day and all night, everything he sees are witches. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica gets an honorary mention for having a fake BF. She tried, but she couldn't quite live up to the Ushiromi imaginary waifu club. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea. I don't plan on accepting the existence of witches or surrendering. I just want to let that part slide and fight stoically so that I can win this game against you. I have no desire to bully you outside the game board as well. Beato hung her head. I was still facing away from her. However, we waited wordlessly for a while, my hand still on hers. <laughs> Gay! What? <laughs> 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 it is pretty gay, bro. <laughs> but it's straight! <laughs> Doesn't mean it's not gay, bro. <laughs> By now, no one would believe that this sad-eyed woman was the same person as that prideful Beato. So I asked once more. Even though I said it aloud, it wasn't a question to her. I was asking myself. Just what in the world were you thinking? Mm. That's right. Even though this is Lambda's game, I have to find you here. I have to find what you thought and what you were trying to do. Very soon, this game will also reach October 4th, 1986. The fifth game will finally begin. And this time, I will reach the end. The end of that journey. <laughs> Battler is straight in a gay way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I accept witches or anything, B -b bucka. I'm not worried about the surface-level stuff like murders and tricks. What did you 
the Golden Witch Beatrice. Think, and why did you do what you did? What were you hoping for? That's what I'm going to find out. That's right. I already know how I can reach the end of that journey. It's been made clear to me since the very beginning. This time I'll spin the chessboard around. Oh shit, there go the pieces. <laughs> I need to stop. Do it like, I gotta spin it like slowly. I'll read this tale not from my side, but from yours. Mm. And this time I'll understand you. I'll pick my way to your heart. I won't let you feel pain. Don't worry. I won't let those witches use you as a toy anymore. Hmm. Beato looked up at me again and gave me a small nod. That's right. The position of Game Master might have been snatched up by Lambda Delta. However, as long as I continue this contest with the intent of fighting against Beato, our fight will continue no matter who controls the game board. Very soon, the curtain will rise on our game. And before in Chapter 8, we discover that uh, Beato, Beato here is suffering really just because she's low on tomato sauce. <laughs> she just needed a plate of Bucatini alla matriciana <laughs> in order to get back up and going. What was the dish that gets... What's the Italian dish that gets mentioned in the game that we keep... That I have no idea. I don't I, I wrote it down in our notes somewhere, and it's weird that it keeps coming up. At this year's family conference, we must conceal the master's secret once again. Yes, there I she understand. is. Finally, she gets to appear in this fucking game. <laughs> Battler has also its huge closet buy vibes. Just gonna say it. His interactions with Runaway are very. By the way, did I mention I'm straight today? <laughs> yeah, that, that actually, you're right. Yeah. I am a little doubtful that the same trick will work twice. Madam shares your concerns. Because of that, it was decided that this year he will not leave the study even once. <laughs> Beato on that infamous Yabali's withdrawal. Yep. That's oh, exactly what's that's going exactly on. That's exactly what's going on. Someone give her some more Yabali's. <laughs> God, that stuff sucks. Why do we keep buying it? <laughs> Beato needs her zappies. She can only get zappies when she murders her boyfriend's family for fun. <laughs> I don't get it, Beato. Why is life like a staircase? <laughs> <laughs> all right, any more? Any more? Did we get them all? Did we get it all out of our system? Okay, I think I think we got it all out of our system. We're ready to go. Did you already read the Madam Shares Your Concerns line? I did. Okay. I'm waiting for you to... In other words, we'll make it seem like he's been shut away in his study the whole time. We're officially close to the scene. I feel like we have this... We've had this... The scene countdown for the entire game so far. <sighs> yes. And the only ones allowed to enter the study are the three of us, the servants permitted to wear the one-winged eagle. That just means the three of us will have to perpetuate the lie about the master. Correct. The relatives will probably question you about the master's health and mood. <sighs> Make sure you answer without hesitation, and see to it that nothing is seen as suspicious. Yes, I understand. I'm sure you'll screw up right away, Nason. Maybe it's better to say you have a cold or something so that you can skip that day. That's mean. Kenna wasn't just making fun of her. He only wanted to release Shannon from the burden of working on this most serious of days. Genji-sama, is it really necessary for Shannon to be on duty? We can manage things well enough without her. <sighs> that I cannot do. Madam gave us strict orders that the three of us be scheduled to work on that day. Yes, I am prepared to perform my duties successfully. Don't screw up. Wow, why is Cannon such a shit here? I won't. I've always been a little bit of a shit. <laughs> Shannon grew sullen and Cannon shrugged. Then Genji told them that they weren't taking this seriously enough. Shannon. Cannon. The master we serve has already passed away. However, until he, has to, until he has truly passed on, we will continue to serve. That study is not empty. The master is still there, hard at work on his usual research. Make sure you take that to heart. Yes, yes Genji-sama. Genji -sama. 
And the boys acting with the PS3 version, they're clearly being cheeky with each other. Oh, okay, okay. Cannon be, could be a little shit as a treat. He has a dis <laughs> he has a D sword. He deserves it. Fair enough. So, so we were talking about how it already seems like Ava coming onto the island probably already knows yeah. this. Yeah. All right. So we're taking a guess at who she's talking to here. I'm gonna say. She's talking to Kyrie. Yeah, me too. Yeah? I think she's talking to Kyrie. Father has already passed away? That's insane. Settle down. It's only a possibility. It's well known that Takeda Shingen said in his will that his death was to be kept secret for three years. Know about that? Is that how it went? My Japanese history is, isn't so great. At the time, Takeda was in the middle of a war with Oda and Tokugawa. If people learned about his death at a time like that, it'd probably have a bad impact on the war. Also, this is dead angle, right? This is more hmm. ZTS? Yeah. Because that he left Will saying that his death should be kept hidden for three years. Hideyoshi did the same thing, right? He totally suppressed information about the death of his master, Oda Nobunaga, so that the enemy wouldn't find out. Quickly made peace with Mori and defeated Akechi in the Battle of Z Yamazaki. I blue screened for a moment there because he said his own name. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's, it's the historical Hideyoshi. I, I also forgot that Hideyoshi was a total uh, a total Sengoku period otaku. Yeah. I feel you like that came up. Guessed and like were proven wrong. It did, it did. You guessed and were proven wrong a second later. Truly the answer arcs. Yeah, I think because we misread it as someone telling Ava that authoritatively, not someone. Yeah. Like, not someone uh, postulating that, so. Go ahead. On the other hand, Shibata Katsui failed at this. The enemy Uesugi learned of Nobuyuki's death, so Shibata had to deal with an unexpected counterattack and got slowed down. That's why later on he suffered a great loss against Hideyoshi in the fight for the succession. Hideyoshi, who had a strong fascination with the commanders of the Sengoku period, would always show off his knowledge when he got the chance. And his collection of figurines. <laughs> they are called Gunpla, and I will remind you, and I will thank you to use their full name. <laughs> Wincing slightly, Ava made him get back to his point. Don't sleep on Big Brain Hideyoshi. I, I, we clearly misunder we underestimated Big Brain Hideyoshi. So, basically, the whole time since last year's family conference, I felt as though something was strange. You mean the time where Rudolph and I were talking about the inheritance and Father overheard us from the hall? That's just it. Natsuhi saying and the servants kept saying Father was here or there and that he seemed to be in a bad mood. But not a single one of us relatives saw Father, right? Wincing slightly? Wait, wait, what? Wincing slightly. Oh, baby. Oh, I, okay. Sorry. I thought I thought that you were making a cringe joke. Okay, I get it. Sorry. My... If what you're thinking is right, what does that even mean? Does that mean Nissan's trying to keep all the inheritance for himself? Of course, hiding someone's death is a very dangerous thing to do, and all things considered, I'm not sure Krauss-san would be willing to do it just to have the inheritance to himself. But it is possible. <sighs> well, it's true that Nissan has always been greedy. He always used to take things that were meant for all of the siblings, keeping them all for himself. Kraus San is supposed to be the richest of the siblings. Kraus San scheming to keep the inheritance all to himself, to the point of accepting the risk of hiding father's death. Sounds a tad unbelievable to me. Even so, last year's family conference was so strange I can't help but wonder. <sighs> Ava and the others were painfully aware of how reckless it would be to try and see Kinzo when he was in a bad mood. So during last year's family conference, once I heard about Kinzo getting into a terrible mood, they never made an attempt to contact him. That was why to this very day they hadn't found it suspicious that Kinzo had never appeared. It certainly is worth suspecting, but... I wonder if Nisal would really do something as appalling as hiding father's death. For all his pride, that man has a coward side to him. Would he really make such a once-in-a-lifetime bet? 
Either way, it'd probably be a good idea to make sure we get a chance to meet with Father during this year's conference. So they have the same thoughts that we do, that no, Kraus couldn't pull something like that. He's much too stupid. <laughs> but they haven't figured out that, oh, it's because Natsuki, Natsuki is, is the one. Yep. Kraus is much too stupid Wait, to do this. no, Rudolph, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it, Rudolph. <laughs> Shit. <sighs> the rumors are really bad. Sounds like Anaki's business is failing even worse than we'd imagined. He's taking massive losses and he's giving it all like he's just got to try and cover it up. That'll make it very difficult to borrow money from him. Yeah, I could cry. Wouldn't being in financial stress also weaken Krauss's position in other certain ways? Weaken his position? Well, investors tend to have a keen eye. They hear that he's actually low on funds. They won't want to have anything to do with him. I guess trust is the most important part of that business. Kyrie smiled thinly. Rudolph was taken aback by that smile. He'd figured that his plan, which involved raising money to get him out of his current mess by borrowing from the affluent Kraus, would all come to nothing now that they knew Kraus himself was in financial trouble. So how did they figure it out? We'll see. Confidence in Kraus-san's abilities might be a requirement for his own businesses in the future. But it isn't necessarily... isn't necessary for our future. Are you suggesting that I blackmail him? I wouldn't want to, if it were me. For one blood sibling to make take another one down is no laughing matter. <laughs> Rudolph felt a shiver go up his spine at Kyrie's cold smile. At times, Kyrie was able to throw away all compassion and think in an extremely ruthless manner. Whenever he saw that, Rudolph knew he'd never like to have her as his enemy. I'd rather not threaten Onisan if we had any other way to get money. If there were any other way, we wouldn't be worrying. Don't you think it's a bit pathetic to waste time worrying about a problem when you have no other options? Nah. Uh, you worry me. <laughs> Rudolph stopped talking, folded his arms, and lowered his gaze. He still felt some of the terror he'd experienced thanks to Krauss's violence when they were young. And now that same Krauss was the one he needed to threaten. Rudolph would also be fighting against his childhood trauma. So to give her husband a little push... Please, not a literal push. <laughs> Kyrie smiled reassuringly, and perhaps coldly. I've never been a fan of doing work based on trust. It takes hard work to build up trust and only an instant to lose it. There's no less profitable investment. <laughs> You're right. All the trust in the world isn't worth a good banknote. Even though Krausan has been taking on massive losses, he ought to be capable of gathering enough money to buy us some time. Of course, he'd probably be forced to cash in all the trust he's built up so far. This is going to get ugly. We'll have to prepare sufficiently. We haven't been given any time or room for failure. Isn't that right? Among my Kyoto friends, I know a few who are talented in this sort of investigation. I'd rather not be indebted to people like that, but do you want to try meeting them? You can't expect people like that to offer you receipts, but I'm sure they'll dig up something that makes them worth the investment. <laughs> so is she referring back to her connections to the Sumideras? She's fucking introducing her hobby to her crime family. <laughs> I see. <laughs> My thought is that these two are seriously up to some shit. You know what? I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you on this one, Evie. These two seem to be seriously up to some shit. <laughs> so also, they're hanging out on a roof. Yeah. The roof, you could fall off, right? Like Angie. Danger. That one there. time. So it's looking more and more to me like everybody has their own ulterior motive. Because it seems like Ava and Hideyoshi independently figured this out and have a or plot. Or suspect it heavily. Yeah. Yep. Like, like you floated originally that Ava and Hideyoshi knew coming in. That was you. And you're oh, correct, you. I think. So I was super sus of Kyrie. And it looks like, yep, Kyrie and Rudolph have got their own thing, which doesn't seem to be connected to Avian Hideyoshi's. They don't mention him being dead. True. The Sumideras are from, Kyo from Kyoto. That was yep. mentioned in episode four. Awesome! So are we about to find out that Rosa also has suspicions in this scene here? I wonder. <laughs> <sighs> yes, Maria is doing well, too. That's none of your business. Oh, is this where Did we I find out? Did I fucking call it? 
Thank you. Is this where we find out who her father is? Kyoko? Yeah, Kyoko. You know, <laughs> Kyoko from Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. <laughs> that Kyoko. Thank you. Huh? Well, I'll have to look at my schedule. Rosa was talking to Rudolph over the phone. Rosa rarely received calls from her older siblings, so she braced herself for something serious. <sighs> well, the truth is, I want to have a little talk about the next family conference without Anaki. Between you, me, and Ava, nay, son? Sounds like a headache. I can't go into details over the phone, but I think you'll find it worth listening to. Something good. Of course. Anarchy's all for it. Nason is. All we want is your approval. We aren't going to ask you for money or anything like that. Most important thing is that the three of us stick together. Got it? In episode one, the siblings confront Cross, saying the guy that gathered evidence he had no financial backer that the in that might be the info curious Kyoto friends got. That does seem likely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Rosa let out a sigh. She did so because in the past, when Rudolph and Ava got into a fight with Kraus, they always seemed to talk to her like th this right before dragging her into it. First, tell me. I stand to gain something too, yes? Yep. Three of us will each grab 200 million out of this. If one goes well, we might be able to squeeze out more. That should be enough to handle your debt, right? And when can we expect to grab this by? Of course it'll be within a year. I need it. Anarchy needs it. And you need it too, Rosa. All three of our problems will be settled. So the chances of success are good enough that Nason's agreed to it. Now do you want to hear? I know it's a bit sudden, but let's meet next Sunday, 1900, that coffee shop you like in Ginza. The only time Anarchy's schedule and mine match. Any problems? If we're talking 200 million, then I'll have no choice but to listen. Then let's meet at 7 p.m. next Sunday at Leopold's. Leopold's? Have we heard that name before? I don't think so. Oh. And Maria Chan. You can bring her too if you want. Don't talk about money in front of that child. She set the receiver down with a clunk a little violently. Apparently either Ava or Rudolph had gotten a hold of one of Krauss's weak points. They would probably threaten him with that at the next family conference and force him to pay up. Even before hearing the details, she knew full well that it would be nothing good. But even so, this might be her once in a lifetime chance to pay back her large debts. Letting the days go what by, debts? water flowing underground, once in a lifetime. Oh, that's what you were doing. Rosa took out a notebook from her handbag and started to mark the day she'd be meeting with Rudolph and Ava. Then she frowned and smacked herself hard in the forehead. Because written there was DZL with Maria, something she had planned to do with her daughter. Huh. <laughs> Maria was in her room, playing around with excitedly with Sakutaro and the others. It was because she was going to go to that recently built amusement park, Dell's New Land, the following Sunday. Looking at the clock, Rosa saw that it was just past nine that at night. Maria was breaking the lights out rule. After covering her face and agonizing for a while, Rosa stood up and stomped over to Maria's room. The room would probably be a mess as well. At least tonight, that was convenient. As she stood outside the door to Maria's room, listening to the happy laughter seeping through, Rosa's face twisted in anguish once again, and she looked at the floor. Then when she raised her head again, her brow was furrowed, and her face had become an ugly expression of anger. Piping herself up to do the child battery. Okay, cool. Wow. Maria's yeah it, it was mentioned that Maria's that Maria's father ditched them with debt so it's just we don't know what the shape of that looks like mm -hmm. right we just know it, it vaguely exists the weather wasn't that great according to the weekend forecast a certain tropical cyclone would likely grow into a large typhoon if unhappy premonitions tend to be right this year's family conference will probably take place in an absolutely horrible weather no, I wish a typhoon large enough to stop all boat travel would seal Rokunjima away forever. If that happened, I'd be able to hide Kinzo's death as long as I wanted. If only the typhoon would keep them at bay forever. Not so he let out a deep sigh. Just doing that made her headache throb. As the day of the family conference approached, the intensity of her headache just kept on increasing. At that time, the phone rang. Not so he turned the TV off and picked up the receiver. Hello? 
apologize for I don't know who this is, so I'm just gonna give them a neutral voice until we know. Okay. Uh I apologize for calling during your rest. Oh. I apologize for calling during your rest. It is Genji. There's something the matter. There is a phone call for you from the external line. However, they will not state their name. They aren't saying their name? Yes. The person in question said you would know when you spoke with them. What should be done? It might be a prank. What did they sound like? (sighs) I believe it was a young man. Any idea who it might be? A young man? Not so he didn't have a clue who that might be. In the first place, there was no one amongst her acquaintances who would do something as rude as refusing to state their name. And on top of that, a young man. As a wife, she must avoid any contact that might be considered suspicious with anyone other than her husband, much less a young man. As soon as she thought this, the phone call suddenly seemed like something dirty. But despite that, she also wanted to know what they wanted to tell her. Could it be some kind of trouble related to Krauss's business? What if there was some particular reason they needed to talk to Krauss's wife instead of Krauss directly? <sighs> no matter what it is, it's my duty as a wife to listen and report to Krauss. If it's some bizarre threat, I'll just have to firmly refuse to confirm Krauss that I received such a phone call. If it's something offensive, I just have to tell Genji to never send me anonymous calls again. So not that he thought this, just as Genji was suggesting that he hang up on the man as though that's what she'd naturally choose, she told him to connect her to this person. She then set the receiver down. After a short while, the phone rang again. Hello? This wasn't the internal line. This was the external phone line, which Genji had redirected to her. So it should already have been connected directly with the mysterious man. However, the person on the other end didn't respond. Not liking this at all, Natsu, he spoke one more time, sounding displeased. Hello? Who is this? Tell me your name. Do you hear that? Yeah. She heard something that sounded like a sigh. She gulped reflexively. After remaining silent for a little longer, the man finally answered. (laughs) It's been a long time, huh? That was the first time the man had spoken. Just how long has it been? How many years? What are you talking about? Who are you? The voice certainly did sound like a young man's, but it's hard to learn much about someone just by their voice over the phone. It sounded like a young man, but it might actually be a middle school-aged boy, or a man in his prime but still a youngish voice. I mean, it might be too soon to be sure this is even male. Okay, so that it's a bit of a more boyish voice, okay. However, one thing was certain. Natsu, he could think of no one who would speak to her in an overly familiar manner like this. It'd be easy for me to tell you my name, but that would just make me very sad. I'm... Something like that? I think that's a little bit better. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Who are you, and what business do you have with me? If you can't tell me that, I'm not interested. I'm hanging up. What I want is for you to remember. And what is it that you're telling me to remember? I don't know you, so I have nothing to remember. (laughs) Please do not say that. I am your child, am I not? What the fuck? What did you say? What are you talking about? What? (laughs) Do not say things that'll make me so sad, mother. That unsettling word thrust itself mercilessly into the depths of Natsuhi's heart and started churning it about. In her entire life, Natsuhi had never been told something so unsettling. In her bewilderment, Natsuhi left her heart beat so loudly that it felt like it would explode. I I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what you're planning, but I'm hanging up. I, I came back for revenge. Revenge for your crime of 19 years ago. <laughs> We've moved past six years ago. Now we got to go further into the past. What the fuck? 19 years ago. 19 years ago? What the fuck? So, who was alive then? Um, George would have been, like, a baby. Like, four or five, right? A toddler. 
Jessica's not alive yet. So this is before Jessica was born. Oh, did she? Okay. So did they have a child before Jessica? Because this would have been just before Jessica was born. Like the year before or like... I don't know. Well, so, we, as far as we know, she didn't. As far as we know, yeah, she didn't. Because so. like they can have mis miscarriages, but this definitely Battler would have been born right around then, huh? Battler would have been right, right around then-ish, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't have any reason to suspect he's not a he's child. <laughs> this is weird. Nazi's mind went blank. And no, Battler is 18 at the start of the game board, specifically 18. Okay. Yeah. And from beyond the wind howling outside the window, she most certainly heard the roar of the sea from that day. So, you actually do remember, do you not? I told you I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Never call here again. I have not forgotten how you treated me 19 years ago. <laughs> to curse you, I still call you mother despite that. Oh, because of that. The family conference will be here very soon, right? I am your son, mother. I will come on the day of the conference. After 19 years. So that I can have my revenge on you. Interesting. Thought Battler was specifically 19. If Battler is specifically 19, then this is Battler? <laughs> what? How does that check out? <laughs> what? How does that check out? I mean, how else are we going to fit an, uh, an extra young man amongst the folks showing up at the okay, conference? Okay, no, 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 no. Chad is, con Chad is confirming. Battler is specifically 18. Okay. Okay, cool. Hmm. <sighs> okay. So then, unless Battler's lying about his age... That's fucking weird, though. Because that would mean Rudolph slept with Natsuhi? <laughs> It's Rudolph. I, I don't know. <laughs> Hold on. I don't know what to make of this. Breathing so hard, her shoulders heaved. Natsuhi he slammed the receiver down and hung up. Then she hit the phone violently, knocking the receiver off, so that no more calls would come through it. I fucking hate phones. I can hear the roar of the sea. That voice I hear from beyond the howling wind is certainly... Even if I cover my ears, even if I cover my ears, the headache won't. Completely pale, Natsuhi kept shivering as though cold. So that means Natsuhi thinks Battler is her child? <sighs> Lambda, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm anywhere you want me to be, Burn. Weird, but let's not interrogate But in that like right an now. enemy's way, I promise. Okay. Then crawl into the cupboard under the kitchen But like floor, enemies who share a bed. Or in a jar of nice rice bran paste, if you like. <laughs> oh, you're going to dip me in bean paste and bite into me? But then I'd rather you dip me in honey. In return, I'll cook you in sugar water. At least make sweet soy sauce with sweet sake. So, what's up? <laughs> now that we've exchanged our usual pleasantries. <laughs> you gonna make me repeat something? That's right. Is not so phone conversation here real? Lambda Delta grinned unpleasantly as though sizing Burncastle up. She was probably trying to tease Burn for making that demand. You refuse to repeat it? Well now, should I refuse or should I respond? As the game master, that's up to me to decide, and I get to make that decision any time I want. Answer arcs when the two of them flirt openly. Yeah, right? Uh, uh, <sighs> Unless I state it in blue, you aren't obligated to respond. That's it. <laughs> For now, you're stuck wondering about Natsuhi's secret of 19 years ago, okay? Make sure you're sitting on the edge of your seat. <laughs> of course, this fishy telephone call happened before October 4th, 1986. This is still before the start time of the g Fuck! So there's basically no need to question whether it's true or false. Since you, the Game Master, went out of your way to show me this, I'll take it as a preparatory move for something else. Might be a trick, but I'll at least keep this move of yours in my memory. <laughs> so, you'll leave without turning the card over. Ouch! What? Direct attack. After suddenly being conked on the head, Lambda Delta was bewildered. But perhaps this incomprehensible exchange was funny to her because she quickly went back to giggling. 
I can't believe you bypassed the rules of the game port and attacked the opposing player directly. <laughs> That's it's cute. much more effective that way. Are you done preparing the game board now? Yeah, that's right. Now I'll finally move on to the game. On to October 4th, 1986. I wonder what number October 4th, 1986 this is. The endless witch, huh? Beatrice. She truly is a frightening child. Any moves from your side yet, Burn? No. If you've refused to repeat what I asked, then I'm done. Turn and right... Untap, upkeep, draw! <laughs> I'm going to play my most powerful creature, Stinkweed Im. <laughs> Wait. Better. Stormcrow. You'll never beat my chimney imp. <laughs> yeah, they play magic. Apparently, they just play Magic the Gathering. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Come. October 4th, 1986. <laughs> oh, my God. What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell do we make of this? <laughs> because... The only person that could, like, be of, like, someone that... Unless it's someone completely new. Someone just completely out of the blue. Someone we haven't met before and have no way of knowing it's about. It's Goda. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> uh, then it would be Battler. But, like, what? Is there any way? We've I brought, I brought this up before. Is there any trick by which we could get another different person on the island still? Um... The number of humans is set in stone, and we seem to have an, and we seem to have enough players to fit that number of humans. The way that we'd have to get out of it would be that one of the people we think is on the island, whether or not they have that name, is not actually there, or is playing two roles. Mm. That would be the way we get out. Because there's no more than 17 people on the board. We have 17 Dramatis Personae that we assume are there. Mm -hmm. So either one of them that we assume is there is not there, that frees up a spot. Or someone is somehow playing two roles. Hmm. That would also free up a spot. But that also seems... We don't have a reason to suspect that yet. Either one of those moves would get us another person on the board. But it's remember, Shannon. this is a mystery. It's Shannon. Mm. It's Shannon. You think it's Shannon? I don't. <laughs> I think it's Shannon. <laughs> no, hold on. I like this, though. Could be sh could it be Shannon? Could it be Cannon? Maybe. No, she would recognize Cannon's voice. She'd also recognize Shannon's voice. She wouldn't recognize Battler's voice. Yep. Weird. What if it's just a ploy? What if it's just a thing where the other siblings suspect that some stuff's being set up? So, so they start by just being like, let's just do something weird. Let's set them on edge. It doesn't matter if this is true or not. We're just going to get some guy to call her. Right. So, like, immediately set her off on the back foot. Yeah. Okay. That's not... Uh, it's a weird idea, but I guess it could work. And yet it seemed to land. She That's seemed true. to remember someday. Tran in Theory Part no, 2. Tran in Theory Part 2. Put out a funny voice. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's 4.30, so we've been at this for four and a half hours. We're going to take another short break here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go first this time. Okay, go first. Go first. Have fun. Uh, so we're just going to take a couple minutes here. Vivian, you catch up on chat in the Discord. Say hi to everyone. I'll be back in just a moment. Wow. They totally did do... Um, they totally did do um, fucking CGs for the Kraus Natsuhi date. Where Kraus is all blushy blushy. That's so funny. That's so funny. Lamau. Ooh, my mic. Trannon theory. Cannon has practiced many voices and knows how to hide his voice. That makes sense. It could actually be anybody on that call, really. 
It's just a phone call. Nobody can do multiple voices. Evie, Evie, I see you're on board with Shannon is canon theory. Shannon and canon are the same person who is also the person on the phone who is hiding in plain sight. Yeah. I feel Shannon is canon theory was my first crazy theory. And though I don't think it's plausible, I still have to believe. <laughs> I've just realized that the entire plot of Umineko involves everybody just making up a guy and then getting mad at that guy. <laughs> I'm about to go for one. What? Okay. I'll think about it. Hey everyone, I'm back. I'm hungry for Italian food. You can have Italian food later tonight if you want. Okay. If you say so. <sighs> Alright. There might be a couple crunching noises on my end because I might munch on a cracker here just to keep the energy up. Oh gosh. I would love some vegan cold cuts actually to go on these crackers. Thank you. A little bit. Now the one thing about that scene is that... What are the rules of the game, right? Either that stuff happens, or someone has created the story that it happens. Right? Even even the bits that we can doubt in the in, in the historical parts of the game board are bits where, like, Natsuhi has created this. There is a person ascribing that has to ascribe agency to the lie. So if that scene didn't happen, as Bernie brought up, that means someone has a reason to pretend it did. Which is weird. Weirder than just assuming it's, like, happened. I actually got the Shannon Cannon theory from us from the, from the When We Cry pod. And we backed... Yeah, we backed off of that one. Oh, shit. I've got some vegan cold cuts now. This is fucking awesome. How much of them do you want? Do you yes, want I want them. Crack? No, this is good, thank you. I don't want to eat too much. We've been at this for four and a half hours and we're planning on going for like another four, so forgive me if I take a moment here to eat something. I've eaten sustenance. Ugh. What are people worried about in the Discord, by the way? Was something posted there that I wasn't supposed to see? Eating and taking breaks is good. Thank you, Garfield. Oh my god, the Garfield! Oh my god. The Garfield! Wow! I'm such a big fan of your work, Garfield. If you ever come to the Discord, I'm banning you. <laughs> 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 My boyfriend might be fake. Girl, you don't even know the half of it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we do, I mean, there's the important rule, right? We, we can't break the rule. Ugh. You did a fucky wucky and commented a spoiler in chat. Oh, okay. Well, just I won't reread the chat then. 
That's fine. Everyone in Jessica's school has witnessed Cannon outside the game board, so he must be real and stuff. They witnessed Cannon, who showed up in a very, you know, very tall coat covering all of his identifying features. Definitely Jessica's boyfriend. Uh huh. Everywhere I go, I am persecuted. This is just like Goomin Echo. <laughs> Why am I persecuted here? Cannon in the Dysphoria hoodie. Exactly! Just a waifu pillow in a trench coat Jessica was making voices for? Exactly, exactly. It's called Drip. Oh, my bad, my bad. You're right. Speaking of which, I'm getting in the mood uh, for the second half of this. I am actually going to pour myself some bourbon into my coffee. So... Why didn't you Photoshop the Supreme Code onto Canon? Oh, Vivian, why didn't you do that? That would be incredible. Also, Jessica knocked out all of her friends with bronze knuckles. Yeah, that's kind of weird, huh? The mystical forbidden Garf in chat. Hey, it's only on the Discord. It's only on the Discord. I, I've got no problem with Garfield outside of the Discord. You back, Viv? Wow, we got so many new people in the Discord. Oh my god. That's so many people. Uh, I'm just going to do these aloud. Hi, Lillian. Hi, Heath. Hi, Ruri Moon. Hello, Weetupo. Hello, Ratty. Hello, Meld. Hello, Elena. So many new people. And Lane and Lily Metal. Thank Welcome to the Discord, everyone. Please enjoy your time. Cannon drip. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad someone figured that. Thank you. I appreciate. Got us. All right. You ready, Viv? As ready as I'll ever be. I'm gonna have one more cracker. Wait. Someone has done the cannon drip. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 I'm back. All right. Let's do this! Woo! So again, if we're to take that scene at any kind of face value, then either it happened, or someone has a reason to lie about it happening. <laughs> and the only person who seemed to be would lie about it happening would be either Genji or Natsuhi? Mm -hmm. The only two people involved in it, right? Yeah. Hmm. Episode 5 has already been so high. This episode has already blown all expectations out of the water. I can't believe it. This is fucking great. I feel like this happens every time we play an episode. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Jessica gave her friends concussions, then told them that her super cute and very real boyfriend was totally there, and they all met him when they woke up. Exactly. <laughs> and then she played Toho music. Canonical Toho fan. Jessica Usharomia. Patan, patan, suru patan. <laughs> uh, this oh wait no this isn't meta battle anymore this rose garden really no uh but if we're giving him the same voice that we gave on the phone this rose garden really is a masterpiece are we giving him the same voices from the phone? no i'm just giving him my neutral voice because i can't fucking <laughs> it's gotten even more awesome than it was six years ago <laughs> you're so lucky to have this as your yard are you kidding for me, it just makes it a longer walk to the harbor, and that's a real pain. <laughs> that's a pretty luxurious worry. You, whoop. I'm back. Did you all miss me? Yes, everyone missed her. <laughs> Getting to say hi to the roses every morning must be awesome. You must get laid after saying hi to so many roses. You, whoop, 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 whoop. Shame about Angie, though. If Jessica was a true Toho fan, she would have dodged the stakes. <laughs> <laughs> she was out of bombs, all right, and they got they got her in the corner. That's how it worked. That's how it worked. Oh my God, they're actually talking about Angie now. Yeah. I hear her stomach gets upset easily, right? Probably all those small bombs. Jessica singing Toho music about flat-chested girls to her boyfriend wearing his dysphoria hoodie, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to see here. Apparently, it's probably her intestines that are weak. 
She's almost always got the runs. Has she considered she might have been lactose intolerant for a long time and not known it? Like seventy percent of people. <laughs> it's more common than you think. You, you shouldn't say something about like that about a lady. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I forgot. Nothing comes out of girls' butt but marshmallows, right? So, uh, Angie got sick, and the marshmallows turned into syrup. <laughs> Okay, that's really way over the line. George and Jessica slammed a knee and a fist right into either side of Battler's gut. <laughs> okay. The smack, though, was probably the sound made when his knees hit the ground as he fell over. Normally, Battler possessed the good sense you'd expect of an 18-year-old man. Or if it seemed that his reunion had brought him back to the mental age he'd been six years ago. And bit by bit, Jessica and George realized that they were also returning to the way they'd been back then. Ow! No, it's cool. Don't, don't. Ow! Don't worry about it. Whenever Maria is on screen, the other characters should be saying, "Where's Maria?" You're right. And whenever she shows up, she should pause, look directly at the camera for a while, and go, "Ooh, ooh, 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 ooh!" And yeah, then yeah, everyone yeah, erupts yeah, into yeah, raucous applause for like five minutes. <laughs> that sounds about right. That sounds about right. <laughs> Not so he gazed at this charming chat through an open window in the hall. Madam Krausama is searching for you. I'll go in just a bit. It isn't even lunchtime yet, and alre I'm already tired. Just a few moments ago, the sparks had already started flying between them and Ava's group. The others had pounded on Kraus and Natsuhi over and over to get Kinzo out of his study. Apparently they had been fully tricked at last year's family conference after all. There are no problems with father, right? Rokenjima has chemicals in the air that cause mental age regression? Has someone checked the frogs? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Leave it to me. Shannon and Cannon are also fully prepared to handle today's arrangements. Kumasawa is a good liar, so I'm not worried about her, but I am a little concerned about Dr. Nanja. Interesting. She believes Kumasawa to be a good liar. That's good. I get the feeling he's bad at hiding things. Leave that to me. I intend to support Dr. Nanjo from nearby as much as possible. It's so reassuring to have you there. It truly does help a lot. The oo and applause would have saved the anime, right? <laughs> That's all the anime needed was a laugh track for every time Maria went ooo. <laughs> Without your strength, we wouldn't be able to succeed. I am honored by your words. <laughs> Don't worry. The closed room barrier on the study is perfect. What the fuck is happening here? As long as the barrier remains unbroken, those katsones will never be able to expose Kinzo's secret. I see. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, I understand. Still, you heard that conversation in the parlor just now, didn't you? <laughs> Indeed. It seems that some considerable suspicions were aroused last year. The terrible toxin has been accumulated and is being spread all around. Umaneko, but every time someone dies, there's a 10-minute laugh track. <laughs> Categorical improvement right there. <laughs> so basically our playthrough. Mama, it's called a fursona. <laughs> <laughs> it seems this year's conference really will be crucial. <clears throat> we might be able to overcome this year somehow, but... Madonna Santa, there is such a thing as pushing our luck. It's probably best to assume that next year won't be manageable. <laughs> With this much of the magic resisting toxin filling up the place, it will probably be difficult to pre preserve Lord Goldsmith's magic for yet another family conference. <laughs> Who are you? Just thought I'd slide into your DMs. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, no need to be surprised. This testa di cazzo here serves as my head furniture. Greetings, Madame Nazi. My name is Ronove. It is a pleasure to meet you. This man's reliable. He's also helping to protect the closed room barrier. Is that so? I am Uchromia Natsuhi. I thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> of course, madam. I will be aiding you from the magic world. Please rely on me. 
In that case, I guess I'll introduce myself next. Hi, Risha. What? What name is that? Long time no see. Oh, Beatrice. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Ha, ga the Gab. I'm glad to see you're here as well. <laughs> well, I only came here to have some fun. If you need an extra hand, let me know. <gasps> nice to meet you, madam. This is the first time I've said hello, but I'm always right by anyone's side. <laughs> <laughs> the Gap here is quite the prankster. Remember that headache medicine you dropped on the floor of your room and lost as you were getting dressed? <laughs> the Gap was the one behind that. Whenever you set hey, something... Hey, no snitching! <laughs> Whenever you set something small down somewhere but can't find it later, it's always a good idea to suspect that it's one of her pranks. The gap, raucous applause. Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. Long ago, she used to tease me all the time. <laughs> Two Natsuhis, maybe more! <laughs> Two Natsuhis. Maybe more. <laughs> is that so? In any event, this is the Usharomia Mansion. As long as you are here, you will obey us. You understand, correct? <laughs> of course. We understand. Think of me as a Genji of the magic world and give me orders whenever you wish. And even I know how a guest is supposed to act. I won't let the landlord lose face. You can count on Ronave and Gap. The Gap. However, <laughs> the magic world and the human world are two different sides of the same coin. The Gap here to yeet Natsuhi's enemies straight to the pegging dungeon. <laughs> this really is a new season of a sitcom reintroducing every character with laugh tracks. It really is! <laughs> I understand. Of course I will do all I can in the human world. Let's work together and protect Father's secret. Indeed. So, do we have a thought yet on who the Gap's equivalent is? I don't know. She said she's a guest on this island. Hmm. So, like how Ronave is Genji and Virgilia is Kumasawa. Who does the Gap line up with? Puzzle. We've speculated before. But I don't think that our speculation is right now that we understand the difference in how Natsuhi... Yeah. View. So the not so the gap would have to be someone not so he views as an ally, which is puzzling given that also a guest. Yeah. So it would have to be s s one of the people that just came on the island, but is also an ally of hers. Hmm. Is Nanjo a guest? Oh my god! It could be Nanjo. Nanjo, in the fucking the gap dress. <laughs> It'd be great. <laughs> Everyone asked who is the gap, but. What I want to know is why is the gap, right? Donjo gap? It could be. You don't think the gap is a person, Evie? That's interesting. I don't know why that would be, like, she would be the one to break the rule, but I guess that's a fair point. Nanjo and the gap are the odd ones out. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad someone's already done that edit for us. They don't have to be actual people. That's true. That's true. It's just weird that they would be the ones that don't line up with someone. So... Whatever. I mean, it, I'm it's, sure it's just the, food for thought. I'm sure as the witches proliferate, we'll get more and more that don't line up with people. Yeah, it's it's just food for thought. I th I think it's worth pointing out that our original theory of who the gap was was um, Kyrie. Mm -hmm. and that doesn't seem to be quite. That right. doesn't seem to f quite fit anymore. And that was more because Kyrie was acting sus for other reasons. But yeah. that doesn't seem to tie into what's happening here. So that's that's likely not the case. Ugh! This happens every time. Looks like we won't get anywhere until the next day. Hmm. Well, sure. October 4th is like a prep turn for me. My combo deck can't go off until, like, turn three. <laughs> but when it does, just you wait. It'll be awesome. Oh my god. Yeah, canonically, that's what they're doing. They're just playing Magic the Gathering. <laughs> if you don't feel like doing anything, why don't you just sit around till October 5th? I'll call you after the first six die. <laughs> of course. That was an incredibly irritating way to put it. The fight wouldn't start until the crime occurs. However, waiting for the crimes to start would mean turning a blind eye towards the murders of the first twilight. In other words, it would just be the same thing as being content with the fact that six people would die. <sighs> Did you know? They say that in chess, the player who moves first is twice as likely to win. That's not the case. 
Is it? It's not twice as likely. That'd be a really fucking unfair game. Yeah, that would be. You gonna read Lambda's Although line? that can change as the tactics of the match progress. Don't they say the second player has a much better chance at a draw? Even I know the phrase the first to strike wins. It's called first strike. You can find it on several cards from the hit card game Magic the Gathering. <laughs> so, what are you trying to say? <laughs> this is why you're so incompetent. <sighs> Seriously. Are you listening, Battler? There do exist puzzles that can be solved even on October 4th. Know which one I mean? You don't mean... No, but... <laughs> Well, watch and see, Battler the Incompetent. So, okay. Warlock of Incompetence, Battler. She's saying that there's even stuff we can solve on this day, although I don't know quite what she's alluding to. Mm. I have a general idea of what these witches are talking about. I've tried solving it several times myself in the past, but I still haven't found anything resembling an answer. On the contrary, I still can't even understand why that puzzle exists. That's right. The reason it exists... Why did Beato prepare a puzzle like this in the first place? We all discussed it together from time to time in past- Oh, is this the epitaph? However, I started to avoid thinking about it, under the assumption that there's no point in trying to solve a riddle that can't be solved. This time, I should change my viewpoint. I shouldn't just focus on the surface level stuff, like the truth of the riddle and how to solve it. What's more important is why that riddle was set up in the first place and displayed for us to see. That is what I should be thinking about. And the one proposing that riddle is Beatrice. Even if I can't solve it, I should be able to try and figure out what Beato was thinking when she showed it to us. That was what we were talking about, right? Mm. Like, even if we can't figure it out, like, we should be thinking about why... Why, uh... This... Why it's there and being shown to us in the mm. first place. Okay, this time I'm spinning the chessboard around. The witches keep calling me incompetent. Let them laugh. They aren't my enemies. I'm continuing our match, Beato. The stakes aren't people equivalents, neither are the bunny chesters. No, but we know what the chesters are equivalent to. And I guess that kind of applies to also the stakes as well, that they're personifications of weapons. But at least that's what it seems like. Oh. Looks like it's finally started raining. Dang. <coughs> Wish the only downpour was the one inside my heart. The people in the parlor noticed the raindrops that were starting to drip down the window. Now we have nowhere to run until the family conference ends. The same thing goes for Nissan. I won't let them escape, you can be sure of that. The cards we're holding aren't bad. Nissan is just bluffing. I'll make sure and certain that he surrenders. Well, there's more to a deal than making your opponent lose. You've got to get a pitfall ready, praise him a bit, and convince him to stand on it of their own accord. hideyoshi sounds right. We pressed them a bit too hard last time, Eva Nesan. That was perfectly reasonable considering it's Nissan we're dealing with. Heh, <laughs> Rose has fallen asleep. She was complaining about how early she woke up this morning. Well, guess there's nothing wrong with taking a nap. The chance we might be forced to spend all night on this. Getting a nap now is probably a smart idea. Out of consideration for Rosa, who'd fallen asleep on a sofa, the others quietly left the parlor. Unaware of this, Rosa slept. After telling Maria to just stay where she was after that tantrum over not being able to find her rose, Rosa slept, unaware that the rain had started to fall. So that happened the same. Gap is the vents. You're right. That's who the gap is. <laughs> I can get pretty sus when I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Would you describe Lambda Delta as a sussy little baka? <sighs> Lambda, are you a sussy little baka? Hell yeah. <sighs> what the fuck I'm are you two talking about? Baka. <laughs> what the hell is a mogus? <laughs> The rain poured down as though it had been saving up for this moment. Of course, Maria noticed that the rain had started falling and was soaking her to the bone. 
However, that just made her even more stubborn. Unable to find the poor, slightly unhealthy rose that she herself had marked, she just couldn't stand having that search be interrupted by something like the rain. So the more the rain fell on Maria, the more stubborn she grew. She wandered through the rose beds. And as she did, from behind Maria's back came a patter, patter, the sound of approaching footsteps. Then the footsteps landed in a puddle, making a small splashing sound, and Maria finally heard. However, even the slight distraction of that sound irritated her, and Maria ignored it. Hello. <gasps> Maria turned around, bewildered. After all, that voice was one she didn't recognize at all. On the sealed-off Rokunjima, that voice belonged to no person she knew. Mm. We just got an achievement called You Are Not Alone. <laughs> <laughs> Kraus-sama, madam, I was looking for you. Something important has come up. Kraus and Natsuhi had been privately discussing what should be done next in a deserted corridor on the third floor. Genji had searched everywhere for them. <laughs> what is it? It must be something more urgent than a few sheets getting soaked in the rain. What is it? Has some sort of blunder been made? A short while ago, someone arrived at the mansion, claiming to have drifted here after an accident at sea. Mm. Uh-oh. If you could see the face I'm giving the game right now, just like... You sure about that? Kraus and Natsuhi he couldn't help but go wide-eyed and stare at each other. This was the first time they'd ever heard of someone coming to this island uninvited. Someone drifted here? Is that true? The poor thing! Treat this person politely, like a guest! What are they doing now? Dr. Nanjo is performing an examination. He hasn't finished yet, but from what I could tell by looking, the drifter seems tired but uninjured. Thank goodness! Natsuhi and I are having an important conversation right now! When it's over, we will go check on this person. Please tell this drifter that we want them to feel at home. Certainly. When Genji bowed deeply and started to leave, Natsuhi called him to a stop. Genji stopped walking, and Natsuhi jogged up to him. Genji, is this drifter a man? No. She's a young woman about the same age as my lady. A woman? I see. Very well, back to your work. <clears throat> it's not suspicious at all anymore. Yeah! <laughs> it's a good thing trans people don't exist. <laughs> the parlor of the mansion was bustling. The adults gathered worrying about the health of this sudden guest. Well, she was able to walk all the way to the Rose Garden by herself. Her life probably isn't in danger. It always helps to be prepared. It's probably all thanks to the life jacket. Sorry, my brain blue screened for a bit there. And Without to the that, best of us. she might have drowned. What kind of girl is she? Older or younger than George? Or Jessica? You, she was younger than Jessica. She wore a life jacket in a swimsuit. Looked like she was all tired out. If she washed up somewhere near the harbor, that must have been a rare bit of luck in the disaster. It would have been terrible if she'd landed on the opposite side of the island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you know all about what happens on the opposite side of the island, Rosa. <laughs> Still, you have to feel sorry for her. With this weather, the boats won't be coming. I imagine she'll also be stuck on this island all day tomorrow. At that moment, the door clunked open and everyone looked in that direction. Oh, hi, would anyone like some tea? It's me, Goda. I've got a very cheery and round voice. <laughs> it was Goda and Cannon, with the latter pushing a serving cart laden with a tea set. Goda understood well that doing a little extra at times like this would earn him points. The relatives, hungry for information, crowded around Goda. He ordered Cannon to serve the tea and became the sole object of the relatives' attention. Goda-san, how's that kid doing? Does it look like she's okay? Rat, rat, rat. So just, just to remind, just, just so we're clear, we decided we're giving the rat Kel voice. Was that, that was what was recommended earlier. So unless we got objections to that one, I think that's what we'll go with. Well, I don't know about that, but there's no need to worry. Doctor Nanjo is giving his full attention to taking care of her, and Kumasawa and Shannon are with him. Please have no fears. 
Why not relax with some black tea for now? <laughs> Come on, Kanan san. Quickly, serve it, serve it. <sighs> Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Kanan knew this tea was just Goda's way of earning points, so he lined the cups with a slightly sullen air. Yeah, boop. I'll help too. Oh, it, 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 it's okay. You can just wait here, Maria-sama. Yeah, boop. I want to serve tea too. Didn't you talk with Dr. Nanjo? Did he say anything? Yeah, when I met him a short while ago, he said that there weren't any serious external wounds. From what I could tell out of glance. <laughs> Rat voice, awesome. F- Fem smug, annoying Kel voice. Got it, got it. And just as Gota had successfully captured the gazes of all present and was about to start talking knowledgeably on the subject, Nanjo returned. Of course, Nanjo instantly became the center of attention. Cannon turned his back on Gota, who seemed downhearted. Dr. Nanjo, how is her condition? Does it look like she'll be okay? Not to worry, everyone. She is fine. She had no injuries at all. She seems to be quite worn out, but there shouldn't be anything to worry about tonight. As long as she doesn't develop a fever. That's good to hear. We're lucky enough to have a doctor, but this is no hospital. Everyone was relieved to hear that the girl was in good health. When Nanjo gave more detailed results of his examination, concluding by saying that she was young and should be therefore be fine, everyone who no longer fell under this description nodded in assent. Ew, ew that's are really scary. Fall, fall. Battler was right. Maria-chan, let's not tell Battler Kun about this. Hmm. <laughs> what does Kyrie know? Oh, madam, Krausama. Gota, who had lost his nerve and was handing out cups, called out in an excessively loud voice. Apparently he was that desperate to get everyone's attention. How was the guest? Yes, sir. Her condition is not serious. I see. That's great. Where is she now? I believe Kawashawa-san and Shannon-san were guarding her to the bath. They said they would get her some clothes afterwards. In that case, they'll probably arrive here soon. Everyone, this may be the day of the family conference, but we have a guest brought here by an unfortunate accident. She wasn't invited, but I want you all to welcome her. What a convenient distraction, and good thing we're all fixating on this. <laughs> Battlers afraid of riding boats. We do know about that, yes. Who could disagree with that? I'm all for it. Same here. Wow, we're all just kind of taken in by the surprise. I guess that is weird, but like, it's weird that also everyone stopped and fixated on it, right? Didn't Mom always tell us to be nice to girls? Maybe, but you didn't need to make that your life's motto, honey. <laughs> it's probably best if we call George and the rest over here, too. Let's all greet her together. But... Wouldn't that just make her more uncomfortable? Why is she the rat? Ava stood up and made a phone call to the guest house. At that moment, they heard the sound of a knock, followed by Genji's voice. It is Genji. The guest has arrived. At those words, everyone fell silent, and the people who had been sitting stood up straight. All right. It's me. I'm the guest. Sup. <laughs> then moved off to the side, bowing deeply and urging the guest forwards. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the guest had Shannon and Kumasawa following by her side. So we don't think they dressed her in this, right? Yeah, that just doesn't It'd check be it. funny if they did. And even after seeing the large number of relatives waiting for her in the parlor, she didn't seem overawed in the slightest. Her clothes were all soaked, so they had to dress her up in one of Jessica's spare Toho cosplays. There you go, there you go. And just this single point showed that this girl possessed a dignity appropriate for a guest invited in by the Ushiromiya family. <laughs> Rodin. Furudo-sama, allow me to introduce you. I think that's Genji, probably. Oh, shit. Furudo-sama, allow me to introduce you. This is representative of the Usharomia family head, Usharomia Kraus. Welcome to Rock and Jima! Though you arrived due to an accident, you are the guest of the family! We welcome you! Please make yourself at home and relax however you please! <coughs> Alright. Yeah! Thank you very much! <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself! I am called 
Bruno, Erica. My deepest apologies for disturbing you, members of the Ushuaia family. Like this. Ushuaia family, like this. I am truly grateful for the warm welcome I've received, despite my status as an uninvited guest. <laughs> <laughs> This was greeted by an impressed sigh arising equally from all corners of the room. <laughs> the clothes she had been lent were probably Jessica's formal wear from I long fucking ago. called it. Yeah, you're right. She's wearing one of Jessica's cosplays. That's going to kill my voice. Have you been here for the Amori streams? <laughs> I'm already killing it. <sighs> but the composure of her introduction didn't seem those clothes in the slightest. The girl's name was Ferudo Erica. She looked slightly younger than Battler and Jessica. But her composure and mannerisms were beyond what anyone would have expected from a high schooler. Almost as though she was a well-to-do family's daughter. The most perfect voice? I'm glad everyone thinks that's good for her. How old would you say she is? Say about 19? <laughs> about 19? That would be a good age, right? <laughs> wait, 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 wait a sec. Who the hell is this? With an incompetent like you as the main character piece, the game wouldn't go anywhere. That's why I've placed myself there as a piece. OC, do not steal. <laughs> check wow. tips? Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm being told to check tips. Uh. Oh, she takes Beatrice's place here, huh? Ferudo and Erica fell from the pleasure boat's eternal maid two mid-cruise in the waters near Rokunjima. That, that checks out. <laughs> There's no lie here. On October 4th, 1986, she drifted to Rokunjima, and the Ushiromiya family welcomed her as a guest. She managed to drift to the island unharmed thanks to several miracles, including the fact that she was wearing a life jacket. Miracles, huh? Right? As long as the chance is greater than zero. Right? Do we have anything new on the, the, the demons page? Yeah. We do. Oh, she's on the demons page too. Okay. Burncastle's double and servant. Also a piece who has manifested into the human world. Because she is human, she cannot use magic and the like. However, she can appeal to Burncastle on a higher level plane to obtain miracles and various authorities she can use. So it would probably be no exaggeration to call her a human capable of wielding the power of a witch. Through Burncastle, she has been given the detective's authority while on the game board. Why is there a next button on that screen? That's a good question. Therefore, even though she is an outsider to the Ushiromiya family, she possesses the right to demand full attention from everyone when speaking. The right to advance proceedings, the right to investigate the crime scene before the police arrive, and many other special abilities. She gets pleasure from the process of solving riddles, but her greatest joy comes from using that victory to sneer at others. Wonderful. I see. <laughs> wow. So this is another mystery trope, right? The outsider a detective on, on like the closed-off island. Mm-hmm. It's another thing that is, is definitely not without precedent. Yep, yep. Well, I guess we'll find out why she's called the rat at some other point, but I'm glad everyone's happy for this rat here. Well, it's just a bit of a bonus. Even in a closed circle, it'd get boring to see the same crew every single time, right? Quit messing around. This beast doesn't exist on Beato's game board. Beato, I won't acknowledge it. This is Beato's game board, right? If Beato refuses, then I'll consider it. What do you say, Beato? It's Toho Colombo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, and just just one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> Beato was unable to answer. Lambda Delta grinned triumphantly. Wanna try complaining about the rules and stepping down from the game? <laughs> Isn't that a favorite move of you mystery people? She is a rat <laughs> because rats are rats and she is a rat. Okay, cool. If there's even a tiny element that goes against your expectations, you throw a tantrum and totally stop thinking. <laughs> the Kel voice is too perfect for her. I love it. Okay, I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad that was a good call. Ugh. Don't worry. I'll make a detective proclamation regarding this piece. A detective proclamation? I proclaim that Frudo Erica is the detective. The detective isn't a culprit. No proof is needed to show this. In short, there is absolutely no need to suspect this girl. Even if she appears as a human piece from now on, you can build theories the same as you always did. 
Get it. I sure can't. There's more people on the fucking island. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to this entire time to be like, how can we get more people on this island? Right? How, how can we s- pack some more folks in here? I, I don't. It's so weird because what like what is the equivalent of what's uh, it's I, I got nothing. That's Knox's seventh, right? It is forbidden for the detective to be the culprit. There was an exception clause in the original, but for this game, the detective isn't a culprit has been proclaimed in red. So you don't need to consider the exception. I hate word games, so I'll say this in red too. Frudo Erica is not the culprit. Repeat it. Frudo Erica had no influence on any of Beato's games before now. Sure, no prob. Furudo Erika had no influence on any of Beato's games before now. She's nothing more than an extra character who appears for the first time this round. She does not exist in the worlds before this one, nor does she influence them. So what does that do to the number of people on the island right now? Of course, it's plus one from the previous number. <laughs> How do we get more people? Burn just throws a rat in the door. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure, all right. For remembering Knox in the episode we did, yeah, thank you. I, I'm glad. I'm glad that that one actually wound up being useful. But don't worry, Furudo Erika only increases it by one person. Besides her, the number of people on this island is exactly the same as it was in the previous games. I see. Okay. Fucking sure. I. All right. Fine. Yeah. Whatever. OC. Do not steal. At that time, the sound of people dashing down a corridor could be heard. It was Battler, George, and Jessica, who had come from the guest house after being called here by Ava. They immediately spotted a guest they didn't recognize, and their eyes went wide. <laughs> whoa! Who are you? Ew, a guest. She came by fall, falling. Huh? Fall? Fall? Genji-san, who is this person? <sighs> this is a guest for Rudo Erika sama Furudo Sama, this is the daughter of the family, Jessica Sama, along with her cousins George Sama and Battler Sama. Um, oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> Gets all flustered when she meets a cute girl. <laughs> I'm just saying. Dressed, it, dressed in my clothes, too. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I just think Gee, I hope sweet. that doesn't awaken anything in me. I'm Ushiromiya Jessica. Hello, my name is... <laughs> 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 My name is Furudo Erica. I'm very pleased to meet you. Though Battler George and Jessica didn't have a clue what was going on and were utterly bewildered, they each introduced themselves. Isn't that convenient? This way the number of people is clear. The people in the guest house have joined up with the rest. And now all of the pieces, except for Kinzo, all of the humans have gathered in the parlor. Looks like it. In other words, the number of people in this parlor now is equal to the total number of people on this island. Oh, so even if there's a fake thing going on where one of them isn't there, then that would that would then pr- mm-hmm. preclude. Okay, yeah, I'm cool with that. There were supposedly 18 people on the island, but since Grandfather's actually dead, that became 17. And now one piece of burn castles has been added. The number of humans on this island has returned to 18. Stream has been wonderful and hilarious, and I'm so sad I have to go now. Oh, no, what? Thank you for coming by, Beato from Moomin Echo, real not clickbait. Really honored that you showed up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, feel free to watch the rest of it later, and we'll be posting more videos of this as we record them. Hell yeah. I glanced around the humans at the parlor. The guest, Furudo Erika. And behind her, Kumasawa-san and Shannon-chan. Off to the side was Genji-san. Uncle Kraus and Aunt Natsuhi were welcoming the guest as well. Goto-san immediately started showing off, and Kanakun was being unsociable, wearing his usual blank expression. There was Dad and Kirie-san, Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi, Aunt Rosa and Maria, and Dr. Nanjo. And on, other, on either side of me, George Aniki and Jessica, this is everyone. The true number of people on the island at the moment. Was that everyone? Hmm. Was that everyone? I just, I just, I, I know it is, but I just want to double check. Kumasawa, Shannon, Genji, Kraus and Natsuhi, Goda and Cannon, Dan and Kyrie, Eva and Hideyoshi, Rosa Maria and Nanjo, 
George and Jessica. Okay. Well, all of us are Usharomias. Please don't feel obligated to call us by our family name. I'm George. And I'm Battler. <laughs> nice to meet ya. Thank you very much, George son. Battler son. I'd be pleased if you would call me Erica. Nice to meet you, Erica san. It was decided that Erica would be welcomed like a guest and allowed to borrow the bedroom next to the cousin room on the second floor of the guest house. In front of all the relatives, she had seemed dignified and a bit stiff. However, as she talked with George and Jessica, her expression began to soften gradually. And so, the detective Ferudo Erica was placed on the board. What the fuck is this game anymore? <laughs> Oh, you thought you were out of mysteries. You thought this was only answers. I'm surprised Jessica's old clothes suit her so well. Hey, Vivian, what does Ferudo Erica sound like when you say it fast? I know, right? I know, right? I don't, I don't know, actually. Uh, you wouldn't. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Kumasawa made the decision on her own to use Milady's old clothes. Please forgive her. I love when stories have characters. You know what? Me too. The clothes Erica wore were Jessica's old formal attire. Though the guest possessed a dignity that would put most adults to shame, her body was still physically similar to a middle schooler's. That's okay, though. I'm actually a thousand. <laughs> Jessica's old clothes fit her perfectly. Not to worry. They match this guest perfectly. If she likes them, we might even let her keep them as a sign of friendship. Certainly. Thank you very much. Have you contacted the police and her family? Yes. They seem to have been quite distressed. By the way, our guest really was involved in an accident, right? She herself said that she fell from a boat as it was returning to port. Is there anything to back up that claim? <sighs> I checked with the Coast Guard. It seems she fell from the rear of a pleasure boat unnoticed by the others on board. We don't know the exact location she fell from, but it was probably somewhere near this island. It was foolish to play on a boat with such a bad weather forecast. However, is it really conceivable that she nearly drowned in the nearby waters and drifted to this island? It is not impossible. Tales of drifters washing ashore exist in several of the islands around this area. <sighs> I do believe it likely that an accident occurred. We're in the middle of a typhoon. It would not be possible to land a boat anywhere on this island. Genji had already considered what she now suspected. Honestly, he probably suspected that this mysterious guest who had arrived during the already high-stressed family conference might be the agents of some conspiracy. So Genji had already checked to make sure that the accident was real, that Ferudo Erika was her real name, and that there was nothing suspicious going on. I understand. My husband has ordered that she be politely entertained. Make sure that there are no blunders. However, you do understand, don't you? Yes. I won't let her anywhere near the family conference. After dinner, I will see that she retires to the guest house. Make sure they don't start trying to force us to let her meet father or anything like that. Of course. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> Furudo Erika, was it? It's rare for guests to come here to Rokinjima. Doesn't this look like it'll be interesting? <laughs> She's probably Lady Burncastle's piece. Though she will follow the rules of the humans, the player is a witch. We mustn't underestimate her. Hmm, there is no problem. Even if she were Lady Burncastle herself, since she's a human, she's no match for us. After all, we have the gap with us. Humans certainly cannot win against the gap. <laughs> Thanks. Still, it's not a good idea to overestimate yourself. The definition of a witch doesn't only imply the ability to use magic, you know. <laughs> True. A joker in the eye of a typhoon. That is what a witch is. 
I'm the only one who gets to call herself a witch on this Rokinjima. Only I, the Golden Witch and Endless Witch Beatrice. Let's see how good Lady Burncastle's next piece after Angie is. I intend to watch very closely. What the actual fuck is even happening in this game anymore? Why was Burncastle mentioned in this thing that is happening in Natsuhi's mind, allegedly? I don't know. It's so weird, isn't it? I don't... I don't know. Why would she know what Burncastle is? Also, pulling out all these voices one after the other. I, I work hard for all y'all. <laughs> I know, I know we're all well-meaning amateurs here at APR, but we work hard. <laughs> I'm going to have another cracker because I work so hard. You deserve it. How was your cracker? Pretty good. It was a good cracker. Mm, excellent, excellent. Erica's seat was the lowest one in rank. In other words, it was at the inferior end of the table. Since Kinzo's seat was high at, high at the end of the table was empty. He spun the whole thing around. It sort of looked like Erico was the host of this dinner. <laughs> Is this guy leaving it all in the field today? I want you to know, we came out here prepared to put on a show for y'all, and we intend to follow up. <laughs> huh. Well then, everyone, I would like to begin tonight's dinner, if I may. After Goda's announcement, dinner began with the applause that had become almost customary. It was finally the beginning of the dinner orchestra conducted by Toshiro Goda. Except for Crasher's household, sitting at such a majestic dinner table was no everyday thing for these people by any means. However, they were all used to this event and acted as though it was completely normal. Once again, if anyone was to be surprised, it should have been Erica. And yet she showed no signs of amazement at this dinner and acted with composure. Blending in with everyone else, there wasn't even a sliver of the fear that one might expect from someone who had wandered here like a lost puppy. What an odd child. She doesn't seem the least bit flustered by the Ushiromia family's grandest dinner of the year. Kids these days have nerves of steel. Definitely not something I dislike. Darr, if Rhoda-san used to such meals such as this one, she seems to be quite composed. No kidding. She looks really experienced. Heck, I still get confused about which fork I'm supposed to use next. Hmm, was it this one or this one? <laughs> Without showing any confusion over the line of utensils in front of her, Erica gracefully ate her hors d'oeuvre. Hideo, she started joking around with her, gripping a fork in each hand. Of course, the president of a company in the food service industry, like Hideo, she obviously knew his table manners. However, thinking that Erica must be nervous over this dinner, he had intentionally spoken with a comic tone of voice. You just have to start on the outside and work your way in. If that's a pain, then just ask for some chopsticks. <laughs> if you're Japanese, you gotta love chopsticks, right? Yeah. <laughs> chopsticks are so great. It's one pair of those and you can deal with any kind of food. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as she began talking about chopsticks, her eyes started glittering. The smile she now showed for the first time was far different from the dignity she'd displayed before. More like something you'd expect from someone her age. <laughs> but even you would use a spoon for curry and rice, wouldn't you? <laughs> Just make it a Donbury bowl. Is there anyone who eats beef bowls with a spoon? Of course not. <laughs> For the Japanese, it's absolutely, positively, totally chopsticks. So, Goda-san, would you mind bringing me some chopsticks? I want to show everyone how a true Japanese person should eat without any shame. <laughs> By the way, what are we eating next? <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> that would be soup. <laughs> <laughs> I love they give her silly sound effects and shit too. Right? As she imitated a shrugging gesture, Erica winked at everyone. She's acting like the main character in a fucking sitcom, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That is. It's like she. She's. She's fucking Columbo. That and is she what is she the is. Main character. Now. She's. She's the main character. Umineko took a bold choice not introducing the main character until part five out of eight. But we finally got right? there. Uh, <laughs> of course, no one was laughing at her. She obviously knew that soup came after hors d'oeuvre and a full course meal. Furthermore, Erica had noticed both that she'd been performing too perfectly and creating a sense of tension. And that Hideyoshi had tried to break the ice because he thought she was nervous. That's why she started acting a little childish and lighthearted. Acting at the part of a guest enjoying a harmonious dinner. Pretty soon, not only Kiria, but everyone else caught on. 
Though she was an uninvited guest, she was apparently worthy of participating in an Usha Romeo family dinner. Smart kid. Did she really just come here by coincidence? Don't tell me you secretly called our illeg- your illegitimate child t- to today's family conference, Nissan. <laughs> wow! That's <laughs> super... Just laying po- it out on the table there. That's super pointed, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Like, not to he's over there just sweating, grabbing her, like... <sighs> <laughs> Whatever could you mean Snap. about, <laughs> say, a child who would be about 19? There aren't any of those. It seems he even has the smarts to brighten the mood. And her manners are simply wonderful. Wouldn't it be bad at all to have this girl as a daughter? <laughs> That's pretty cruel. Where does that leave Jessica Chan? <laughs> That's mean, Rudolph Nissan. What's wrong, Jessica Chan? Headache? Once you know you're doing your best to just hold back on chanting rat, rat, rat over and over. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I get the feeling my reputation's taking a dive. <laughs> Not as big as a dive as the one I just came back from. Am I right? <laughs> Up top. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you're the daughter of the head family, you'd better not let her beat you. <laughs> Try using those table manners and dignity on Oz. He's always training you with it. Fight back! Yeah, I want to see. I want to see. I want to see table manners. Hey, jumping around is bad manners. Come on, Jessica Sean. Show us how it's done. <laughs> sure, of course. Jessica straightened up so much it looked like someone had poked her in the back with a pole. She had good posture, but it somehow lacked elegance. She looked, well, kind of like a triangle ruler. She sat at attention with her gaze fixed straight ahead and tried to bring her food to her mouth despite this, and failed miserably. Dad, who was sitting next to her, suddenly realized that something was up. Huh? Well, what's wrong, Jessica Chan? Stomachache? <laughs> Jessica turned bright red. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. We laughed our heads off. Jessica protested, still bright red. Aunt not he scolded us for being too improper. No matter how much we try to smooth it over, we are who we are. We couldn't pretend any longer. Still, that laugh really did help us to relax. We were so concerned about the guest getting nervous, we'd gotten even more nervous ourselves. Our chatter from the center of this long table spread to both ends, and ultimately the dinner went even more smoothly than usual. <laughs> a rodent, as you might say. A tiny skittering mammal, as it might be called. <laughs> I don't get the jokes yet. With some delicious cheese and coffee. Cheese! She's a rat! There it is! <laughs> I found it! I figured it out! I is didn't... coffee poisonous for rats? I don't know. That's a good question. I hope not. Is it poisonous for right dogs? Now. Oh, bad news! Bad news! <laughs> may I steal one sip of your coffee? You may. Just Here one. Just one, though. Uh, I will warn you there's bourbon in that. Okay, just sorry. I realized I didn't tell you that before you were halfway in. I'm sorry. With some delicious cheese and coffee, our peaceful meal came to an end. Goto won unanimous acclaim and was praised for his skill by all present. After a short period of harmony following the meal, it was decided that we would return to the guest house. Normally, dinner tended to have a very dark atmosphere about it, and the adults would often keep that mood as they moved straight on to the family conference. However, perhaps because this year's dinner had been oddly peaceful, everyone decided to take a break, the adults included. <laughs> rad, truths are just, rad jokes are just a fundamental truth. You will feel it someday. Okay, fine. Funny how this is the most peaceful dinner they've ever had so far, right? What the <laughs> hell? Including the years when there's not murders. Right? It's just fucking bizarre. <laughs> After eating, taking a bath, and relaxing while watching TV, I wonder if they'll gather again at the mansion with all this rain and resume that high-tension family conference of theirs. I'd rather not think about it. Apparently, Aunt Ava was getting really worked up trying to convince the rest to start the family conference right away, but it didn't look like many people agreed with her. They would probably call it quits for the night. Since they had guest house duty, Godasan and Kumasawa-san were chosen to guide us to the guest house. It's got to be rough for Godasan. Even after making and cleaning up such an extravagant dinner, he also has the late night shift at the guest house. Heard that Kumasawa-san, old as she was, would be going to sleep soon. Seems like she was assigned a spare room. Allow me to guide everyone to the guest house. Erika saw my room has also been prepared for you. Thank you very much. Why not rest a bit? Are you sure you feel okay? 
<laughs> That's right. I totally forgotten, but you nearly drowned and floated here, didn't you, Erika-chan? You'd probably be better off taking it easy and getting to bed early tonight. I'm perfectly fine. On the contrary, I'm so nervous and excited that I doubt I could get any sleep. Yeah, whoop. Then let's play. Let's all play together. Let's do a let's play. Let's play. Erica's smile. Erica's that fucking smile. Aww. <laughs> It's the kind of smile you give someone after you've poisoned their drink. <laughs> yeah, it's all play cards. You ready to play Uno? It totally reminds me of Kasumi Sumedera's smile. It totally does. It does! <laughs> it, do it has that same kind of shit eating malice to it, right? <laughs> she's called Rat because she's being controlled by Burn Ratatouille style. Oh, okay. Uh, that makes sense. You could also be lying to me right now, and I would believe you. Precious rodent smile, you want to punch her? Nice. <laughs> that smile, it's all because of that fucking smile. <laughs> Maria latched onto her, giggling. This lack of restraint peculiar to youth was very much like Maria. However, we really should be concerned for Erica's physical condition now. Maria, why don't you play cards with us? Erica Onechan is tired. I like cards too! Please let me join you after I've had a short break. All right. Hey, Sakutaro! I meet a new friend today! <laughs> uh, who is that? As she passed through the lobby of the entrance hall, Erica stopped walking. When she saw what she was looking at, the rest of us also stopped. Woo! That is the Golden Witch Beatrice-sama! Woohoo! The Golden Witch! <laughs> what are you doing, brats? Go on and head back to the guest house. Dad Kirie-san, Aunt Ava, Uncle Hideyoshi, and Aunt Rosa all came over. The entire guest house party had gathered. However, Erica's gaze was captured by the portrait of the witch, and she simply stared at it for a while. Erica has the most precious slime. <laughs> I know you meant smile, but still. <laughs> it's just a natural byproduct. Don't worry too much about it. <laughs> Yeah. Supposedly, Dad has a stash of hidden gold worth 200 billion yen. And this epitaph shows you what, where that gold's hidden. Perhaps it was too early for them to all disperse into their individual rooms, because their relatives who had returned to the guest house all gathered on the first floor, continuing their chat. The topic was the witch's epitaph, which Erica had taken an interest in. It really is a fascinating riddle. He stuck it out in a place where anyone could see it, challenging our intelligence. I love that kind of challenge. <laughs> Whoa. You seem surprisingly interested, Erica John. Do you like solving riddles or something? Did we already looked at we already looked at her in the right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one thing about the one thing I will say for the Pachinko sprites, they give you a much clearer idea of how tall everyone is. Mm. Whereas the old sprites are very much uniform tall. Yep. You're either like at seven eighths of the screen or like seven and a half eighths of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't challenges like this seem interesting? It seems pretty clear that Kinzo-san wants to use that epitaph to choose his successor. When she said that, the adults stopped moving and slowly turned to face Erica. Why do you think that? Aunt Ava spoke with a coaxing voice, though every now and then there had been whisperings among the relatives that whoever solved the epitaph's riddle might have been given the family inheritance. This had been no more than wishful thinking, since such a thing had never been specifically stated. And yet, though she had only read it once, this outsider had already reached that conclusion. How did she come to it? No, that's not the problem. If you solve the epitaph, you could become the next head. She wasn't trying to make it sound like wishful thinking, but an outright fact. So they closed in around Erica, asking why she was so sure. She's so perfect at everything, be it smiling or sliming. Well, yeah, because she's the detective. The detective is supposed to be perfect at everything, right? <laughs> they're, they're the detective. Yeah. That, that's their role they're in the story. Detect. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I... <laughs> It's fairly common for an extremely rich person to relinquish his or her wealth to the solver of some sort of riddle. Uh, furthermore, Kinsosan didn't publish this epitaph in a newspaper, but displayed it in his mansion. That means the riddle's directed at the people in the mansion, you know? Nah. You're right. Since it's inside the mansion, there's no way for someone who can't enter the mansion to solve it. So that means Grandfather had been challenging the people here. Good. Well, well thought. Despite the simple fact that the epitaph's inside the mansion, it's possible to figure out that much. 
At first, this Feruda Erica girl seemed to be the fairly silent type, but that apparently wasn't the case. As she grew excited by a challenge to the game of wits, she became much more talkative than I'd imagined. Ah, I see. Well, it does make sense that an epitaph inside a mansion would be there so the people in that mansion could read it. But can you really be so sure that the one who solves it will be given the headship too? Oh, if the treasure came by solving the riddle were something small, I wouldn't have even considered that. That's right. Hidden gold is worth 20 billion. You might consider that gold itself to be the wealth of the Usharomia family. Inheriting something like that would almost be the same as inheriting the Usharomia family itself. In other words, this riddle of the gold's hiding place buried within the epitaph is nothing less than a way of selecting the de facto successor of the Usharomia family. The idea that the one who solved the epitaph would be chosen as the successor had been passed around by some of the relatives for a while now. However, since it had never been specifically announced, it was nothing more than an optimistic dream. Thinking this, they decided to abandon all consideration of this point until the details were made clear. Erica had clearly decided that this uncertain point was in fact true. If one of the relatives had said it, people would have thought it to be merely an optimistic dream. However, when this was declared by a complete outsider, those words seemed even more credible. Everyone remained silent for a while, slowly considering what those words implied. Simply by the existence of the epitaph in that place, this level of reasoning is possible for Furuto Erica. Well, what do you think, everyone? Sorry Praise to butt me. in. Praise me! <laughs> but my dad's the successor. Finding the gold would be one thing. But that doesn't mean you get to be the head. Erica. <laughs> I have a very high IQ. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica thought the treasure hunting part of the epitaph was really fun. However, she couldn't help but let her expression grow bitter once they started talking about undermining her father's position. Oh, but by using deductive reasoning based solely upon my theory... It seems like the kids of Son doesn't want the successor cross Son to inherit that position too smoothly. Why is that? Oh, so she's a Sherlock Holmes type. Mm -hmm. Where she's like an asshole who lets her you know, perceived intelligence get in the way of everything else that she does. <laughs> ah, okay. That makes more sense. Uh, because becoming the head of the Rusharonia family with all the vast wealth that entails would mean gaining a great deal of influence in political sense. So under normal circumstances, as the succession should be overseen rigorously without letting any element of chance creep into the equation. That's right. Ava says nervously, you're hurrying to agree. It happens a lot in those stories about Sengoku military commanders that my husband loves. <laughs> when there are, that my husband and no one else loves. When there are multiple candidates for the successor, it usually results in internal squabble. That's right. Jessica getting salty at the thought of being dispossessed a little bit. That's why it's important to clearly specify successes so you can avoid any trouble. Sometimes there's even a purge of all the competing successes. She's a true crime podcast fan, basically. I really enjoyed listening to Serial, and, well, it just kind of snowballed from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zekengoku commander Hideyoshi admired, Totoyomi Hideyoshi, made his son-in-law Hidetsugu commit seppuku. But it was rumored that he might have done this to make Hideyori, who was his real son and born after Hidetsugu, his true heir. In other words, naming a successor was a way to make it generally known that a single, unique person would be acknowledged by everyone, and a way to remove any chance of another person becoming an opposing candidate. Good! That's exactly right! The only purpose for an epitaph like that would be to cast doubt on Krauss-san's position as the successor. In other words, if Kinzo-san wanted Krauss-san to become the head smoothly, he'd have no reason to go out of his way and display something so dangerous for all to see. And that's right. If you spin the chessboard around, you could certainly say that. It would be odd if he handed over the position of the head normally, but only handed the, over the 20 billion yen in gold to the person who solved the riddle. Kenzo would pass on the title of family head, but he would only give up the 20 billion yen in gold to the person who solved the epitaph. You really couldn't call this passing on the headship in the truest sense. That's just how it is. By this theory, we are able to doubt whether Kenzo san truly acknowledged Krauss as his successor. Simply by the existence of the epitaph in that place, 
This level of reasoning is possible for Bruno Erica. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying my name like I'm a fucking Pokemon. I love Pokemon. her catchphrase. I love her catchphrase. <gasps> what do you think, Jessica-san? The person who just stands to lose the most for this? What the hell? I'm gonna have a cracker. How do you call that reasoning? That's bullshit. It's screwed up. Jessica let her emotions lay bare and glared at Erica. Erica, on the other hand, looked exceedingly calm with an expression that said, well, that's just the truth, right? I see. It looks like table manners aren't the only way this girl is fitting for the Ushiromia family. It seems she really does match the family, even when it'd be better if she didn't. Erica's such a smug ass. Like, if you thought Banto was smug, right? More smug. Okay, take it easy, Jessica and Erica. Let's leave it at that for now. Well, uh, we can put all this successor stuff to the side for now. Anyway, there's no doubt that it's Father's big question for us. <laughs> it's 20 billion yen. Maria Chan, what'd you use it for if you found it? <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait. The golden land isn't just gold. It's a sacred place. Uncle Hideyoshi kept trying to force himself to chuckle and improve the mood. Everyone else tried to play along, but Jessica's mood didn't get any better. <laughs> so, Erica-chan, would you like to have a go at the Epitaph's riddle? Yeah, sure. My little gray cells are itching to get started. I'd like to start solving as soon as possible. George Anaki slow, smoothly turned the conversation around. Just like the time she made everyone laugh in the dining hall, Erica looked about with gleeful eyes and jumped at the chance. <laughs> I like it. Well, since Erica seems so interested, let's all try and solve it together, just like last year. I'll make some coffee. Raise your hand if you want some. Only if there's bourbon in it. <laughs> Not for you, Maria. You never let me have the good stuff. <laughs> You won't be able to sleep. Ew, mommy, I want it black. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Nanako? Daddy, I want it black. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, there's an explicit Poirot reference. Oh, I have... So, I know basically nothing about classic mystery literature Me other neither. than, like, the names of the characters and the authors. And that's only because I worked in a bookstore for, like, half a decade. Like, I, I know what authors are popular and what titles are popular. That's about it. So, I, I haven't read any on my own. Amazing character synergy. I She lives rent-free in my head. Don't they get you excited, riddles like this? I love them. Erica said that and smiled, though she must have known that she tr ticked Jessica off and made the atmosphere sour. She just smiled nonchalantly. <sighs> See? Without even waiting for the crime on October 5th, there's no riddle you can solve. Hey, how come you sound so different on the game board and in the metaverse, huh? That's not allowed. How can you have two different voices, huh? Could you imagine the inconsistency? Little or literal or gray cell is a Poirot catchphrase. Oh, okay, cool. There you go. Thank you. I've tried to solve it many times myself, but but you didn't have a clue. So you gave up and stopped thinking, right? Hey, d I, you know, we tried really hard with the fucking epitaph. We did. Okay, I don't want, I don't want to like, I don't, just because we didn't talk about it a lot in our uh, speculation videos, I don't want it to come across as us not thinking about it. We thought for a long fucking time about the epitaph. We just c could get nowhere with it. Like, we, yeah, we, we eventually gave up in the end, but it's not for a lot. It's not because we looked at it and said it was too hard. We gave that our level best, and it, it's just above our pay grade. I don't, I don't know that we did give up, right? I don't think we gave up, but we certainly moved on to other things. 
I think we've continued to consider the epitaph in its role, even if we don't have a good answer for it. Yeah. We've never just been like, ah, fuck it. Burn calling out the audience here. I know, which is why I feel so defensive all of a sudden. <laughs> Piss me off, but I don't have a good counter for that. After all, I don't get the epitaph at all. I don't even know what the beloved hometown means, much less the parts about the Sweetfish River and the key. Thinking that a few more hints would show up if I waited, I kept on waiting and just stopped thinking. <sighs> Have you figured out an answer of your own? Because I'm about to solve it. What the fuck? What? <laughs> this is where Burns solved the riddle of the epitaph. I'd expect no less from the Witch of Miracles. This part made me feel like apologizing to the game. I definitely feel like, like, if I had known that, like, episode five, scene three, we'd be, be like, here's the answer to the epitaph, I probably would have given it a better go, but, like, we we were working hard at it, and we had nothing. You have to hear it for the PS3 VA for this part? I, I, you know, I, when I decide to replay this game, I'm going to play it with the PS3 uh, uh, VA stuff on because I want to hear the real interpretations of the characters. Obviously, we don't listen to them on our thing because we have our own versions of the characters to keep up, right? Mm -hmm. so, but after that's all done, I'll probably take a look. If a riddle is solvable, she can solve it without fail, regardless of the difficulty. How many years did it take to solve this one? That's rude. I only fished through a few hundred fragments. <laughs> you really are terrifying. You weren't going to cheat That's by suddenly cute. saying the I answer like red or something you. like that, right? <sighs> Don't worry. Just like you, I follow the rules as a player. Well, shall we begin? It's cramped in here. Why don't we talk over the sea? Okay. Don't get queasy, battler. What? What do, you, what do you mean by the sea? What? I thought the whole world had turned pitch black, and the next moment I was struck by a strange floating sensation. This must be what it feels like to suddenly have the floor drop from under you, sending you into a bottomless pit. When I looked, I saw that the two witches and I had been thrown into a pitch black universe. In this space, every direction was covered in an endless darkness, and it felt like a limitless expanse filled with countless glittering objects. Some people might have likened it to the depths of an ocean where innumerable sparkling fragments drifted. <sighs> Didn't she tell you not to get queasy? If you want the concept of gravity, just create it yourself, okay? God, you can't even do that. Come on, calm down and look at us. Gravity is hard! Come on, don't we look like we're just fine? Believe that your feet are on the ground and that you're being controlled by gravity. If you do that, you'll find your equilibrium. Yeah, the two witches are standing normally as if their feet were planted on transparent pieces of glass. I'm the only one floating about like someone in a rapidly plummeting elevator. When I saw that they were doing just fine, I started calming down, figuring that there was no need to be scared. Then just as Lambda Delta said... I gritted my teeth and kept telling myself that there was a place to stand here, and that I had to stay calm. Ow! Ow! Oh, fuck! Ow! Why didn't you tell me it was gonna be d oh, You know what? Never mind. Whoa! Very good. Very good. What's your name? What? Who should will me a battler? Who else do I look like? Okay. You mustn't lose your will, emotions, or form. After all, this is the ocean. If you lose your purpose, you'll fall into the depths of eternity and become a scrap of ocean seaweed. Be careful. What? Why are we here, then? I don't get what Lambda Delta is saying, but I should calm down for the time being. It seems that I regain my equilibrium the more I calm down. Gradually, that weird floating feeling, like I was falling forever, began to disappear. It still felt strange, like trying to stand up straight at the bottom of a deep pool, but... It was much better than before. Oh, hey, I have cell service! <laughs> Finally! Oh, God, 47 missed calls? How long were we in the fucking smoking room for? Does she live in a Faraday cage? What the hell? <laughs> then let us begin. I'll weave together some fragments for solving the riddle of the epitaph.
Burncastle opened both of her hands. Then, like a planetarium, all of the fragments throughout this empty space began to spin, leaving tails behind them. The expression planetarium might have been surprisingly fitting. Multiple fragments were tied together by gold lines, and what looked like constellations zoomed by us rapidly one after the other. It felt almost as though we were dashing through space at an incredible speed. And then, with tails of light drifting behind them, several brightly glowing fragments swirled around Burncastle. It almost looked as if she created her own solar system with her as the sun. That solar system surrounding Burncastle grew to a radius large enough to swallow us up. And every once in a while, one of those satellite fragments zoomed right past me. What? 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 Those were screens from the question box. Uh, can we take a look at them? We can't. We can't. Okay. Uh, shit. That's fine. When those fragments passed by me, it felt as though some kind of memory welled up inside me. So I sensed it. These fragments were probably like a crystallization of memories. They aren't memories. They're fragments of worlds. Well, I guess they might feel like memories to you. Most things feel like memories to me right now. I've got a strange sense of synesthesia. <laughs> Then let's begin. Let's start with this fragment. One of the satellites in this solar system was slowly sucked into an inward trajectory with Burncastle at the center. After drawing a spiral and approaching her, it settled down on the palm of Burncastle's outstretched hand. Then it glittered brightly, painting over the world with pure white. Behold the sweet fish river running through my beloved hometown. You who seek the gold land, follow its path down river in search of the key. Travel down it, you'll see a village. In that village, look for the shore. The two will tell you of. There sleeps the key to the golden land. So this is young Ava. What voice did I give young Ava? I gave her like an annoying kind of whiny voice, right? Yeah. Like, the beloved hometown definitely won't betray our expectations. Yeah. The only past father held dear happened during his childhood years. So that would have been before, during his childhood years, before he even became the head of the Ushurumi family, right? Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. This is from the third game, when Aunt Ava was just about to solve the riddle of the epitaph. We're taking over with this witch inside her, or whatever. <sighs> That's right. And from these thoughts, she made her way to the correct answer. In other words, this fragment shows a vital hint for reaching the truth. It means that this theory is not mistaken. Okay. So, beloved hometown being where Kinzo lived before he was saddled with the Ushiromiya headship. Son of a bitch. I don't fucking remember that. I don't fucking remember that either. So, you're saying we should assume this beloved hometown isn't a metaphor or anything like that? The place grandfather actually spends his youth? That's right. At the very least, it is an Odawara. Where did he spend his youth? Odawara? Oh, well, thank you. Odawara is definitely where he was born, but I don't think that's the hometown he loved. Imagine all of his siblings have the same place in mind. Right. This probably isn't Odawara. From what I've heard, he had a very fun time as a youth. So this was before the war, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's right. Aunt Ava and her siblings said it wasn't Odawara. Not only that, it looks like everyone guessed where Grandfather's hometown was. <sighs> right. And annoying that the actual location isn't spoken of in any of the fragments. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> well, duh. If I told you that, there'd be too many hints. If it wasn't a hard riddle, there'd be no point to it. Uh-oh. That's a hint, too. <laughs> Just where is this hometown of grandfathers? We can't even start if we don't know that. You mean you couldn't start? So you stopped thinking? Since it had to be a place where he could have lived, the number of possibilities is limited. Well, this is the toughest part, after all. You were the witch who could have certainly solved any riddle that could be solved, weren't you? So you took those limited possibilities... In other words, everywhere on the earth, he considered every single piece of land the grandfather might have lived on? <sighs> that would work too, but 
that way, no amount of time would be enough. So I needed to take some more hints into consideration to ring out the answer. Didn't you say it yourself? You said it didn't have to be a river with water flowing down it. The word, word sweetfish is too complicated. Why not forget it? Think of a river. A river. Linking it with a family tree wasn't a bad idea. Try thinking about how to link a river with something else along those lines. A sweetfish river running through the hometown. However, this river isn't truly a river. Ava thought of something else, something that could be linked with a river. Like a family tree? But if it sure, but if it isn't, isn't a river, then why the sweet fish? Think, a river that runs through the hometown, but it isn't a river with water running down it. Something that can be likened to a river. Family tree? I mean, that was advanced and didn't seem to be it, but yeah. something like it. A river that runs through the hometown, but isn't a river running down it. Something that can be likened to a river. Okay. Ugh. Behold the sweet fish river running through the beloved hometown. Ava knew where the hometown was, so she could forget about the sweet fish hint. However, since we don't know where it is, this could be a hint for us. I worried too much about the sweet fish river. The sweet fish part didn't really matter that much at all, did it? <laughs> that isn't true. It was an excellent hint, wasn't it? Of course, maybe there was no need for it to be sweet fish. Like a trade route? What are these sweet fish? Hmm. No, you want some sweetest fish. <laughs> Burncastle, do we have any Swedish fish in this weird space between fragments? <sighs> yes. <laughs> if the river isn't a literal river, then of course sweet fish probably doesn't mean the kind of fish that swims. Yeah, and on top of that, Rosa tossed it aside, saying that sweet fish weren't that significant. <sighs> on the other hand, Ava said that it wasn't important for them to be sweet fish, but that it was still an excellent hint. In other words, the sweet fish is a key to make you think of something else. And something is a different word, but a word that sweet fish makes you think of. Then Ava's line about how it probably didn't have to be sweet fish makes sense. I'm not gonna lie, I'm still fucking confused. From these thoughts, Ava formed some theory, went to the library, looked through some books, and verified that she was right. In short, a Aunt Ava formed some theory about the true nature of this sweet fish river running through a hometown. Then she opened a certain book to determine whether that theory was correct or not. In other words, this theory was something that could be verified through some kind of book. Also, after she figured out what the sweet fish river was, she figured out the rest of the riddle, riddle very quickly. Good thinking. The epitaph continues on, saying, As you travel down the river, you will see a village. At that point in time, Ava hadn't yet solved the three lines starting with this one. What is this village? What does it mean? What do you find? Do you find one if you go down the river? Ah! Ah! Right before my eyes, the pieces that I hadn't been able to understand at all began to snap snap into place all by themselves. I couldn't even remember to close my mouth. My throat grew completely dry. Is it really okay for this to be the answer? Really? Really? So, if we figure out what the Sweetfish River running through the hometown is, then that leads us directly to understanding the as you travel down the river, you will see a village stuff. And then we get the key to the Golden Land. That is correct. And we know that because even Ava didn't know what the village meant until she checked the book. Damn it! Just what is this book? But this isn't six characters at all. I'm absolutely sure this is the answer, but this doesn't reach six characters at all. Did you stop thinking again? In that case, think of a way you could read it with six characters. If you can't think of one, then research it. It has to be an answer. You must not doubt that. I was believing in that too much for you. Why don't you just cry yourself to sleep and you could just give up and die? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, six characters. 
I found it. This, this is the, the key to the golden land. Then Ava found the key to the golden land. Yeah. And this key was some kind of word, number, or string of characters. Six characters long. <sighs> That's it. We know the key's true identity has six characters. The meaning of the first twilight changes drastically. Well, the first twilight offered the six chosen by the key as sacrifices. The six chosen by the key. Six characters? In other words, it means to sacrifice the six characters chosen by the key on the first twilight. Are there six characters that are shared between every single peop all the people that are killed on the first twilight? Well, doubt it. Is this where not knowing ca characters are going to come to bite us in the ass? <sighs> this key indicates a certain group of six people. No, we should say it indicates a certain group of six things. This doesn't mean a literal command to offer sacrifices. For example, it could be an anagram. Man, anagram? Do you mean playing with letters? <sighs> also, I'm not reading chat right now. Just as an FYI, if you're throwing stuff out at me, I'm not going to be able to see it until after this is over. Because if we, if this is our chance for us to solve it, then I want to make sure we do. You know. Yeah, Kyrie Athena, I've been thinking that way ever since that moment. On the second twilight, there are those who remain. Which means that at the very least, that something has a limited number of characters. You could read it like it's telling you to continue with the remaining characters after the first six characters are removed. In other words, on the first twilight, we take a list of the characters that's longer than six, kill the six that are the key, and then soon do something with the characters that remain. That's right. But, like Kyrie said, what should we kill the characters from? We don't know this longer string of characters that we're supposed to be killing from. On the first twilight, kill the six characters that are the key. On the first twilight. In other words, by the time we reach the first twilight, some string of characters already exists. It must be a set of Japanese characters, but when grandfather's taste, it could be something in English? First twilight is more than six characters, even though the Japanese phrase is just four. Twilight has six characters in it. Six graphemes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's important. <laughs> Good. That idea of yours isn't bad, battler son. We can interpret the six sacrifices chosen by the key as a string of six characters. I think it's a very clever concept. That way the key doesn't necessarily have to be key-shaped. I've also considered the possibility that it's an anagram. I'm going to think of it. You did say something like that before. But in that case, where do we take the six characters out from? <sighs> That's right. Since we're taking six characters out, it must be at least six characters long. We need to read Twilight in some way that gives more than six characters. Huh. This is Rosa, by the way. If we follow Father's sensibilities, I guess it probably is English after all. Yeah, if it looks like we're getting stuck, why don't we move on to the second twilight and look for hints? Those who remain shall tear apart the two who are close. We could probably think of those who remain as the remaining characters after the first six have been taken out. In that case, what does it mean by two characters that are close? Literally next to each other? I see, I get it. So that's what this is about. For example, let's take the following list of nine characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then let's say that the six characters offered as sacrifices are one, two, th are one, three, six, seven, eight, and nine. In this case, we wait. Wait. We do have numberings for the characters. How so? Their positions at the table. Hmm. Everyone has a very well-defined number and position at the table. Would that help us here? It just came to mind. 
In this case, we erase the aforementioned six characters from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and get X, 2, X, 4, 5, X, 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 X. Are the two people killed on the third Twilight always people who sit next to each other on the table? No. It's unlikely. No, it's not. That's not true. Sh Jessica and Cannon die on the Twilight, mm -hmm. so that's not it. Okay. So two, four, and five are left. So what? Oh, four and five are close. Yeah, I get it. So the two who are close are... X, two, X, four, five, X, 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 X. <laughs> yep. There's a gap between two and four, but four and five are right next to each other. They're the two who are close. The break beats are Cut. kicking in. I, I I like the break beats, yeah. Good. Well, well done, Bad Order Son. We can't tell whether tear apart means to crush four and five or to put a gap between them, but I think that's a good observation. Noted atmospheric jungle fan, uh, Furudo Erika. I just think it's good music. <laughs> I don't tend to look at genre. <laughs> Then what do you think about the third Twilight? Those who remain shall praise my noble name. Since there's a good chance that we're playing with letters, this might just be the same thing. <laughs> Characters that remain shall praise my noble name. Hmm, that's tough. What could it mean? Anyone know? I think I do. Huh? What is it? Tell me. Is this also an anagram? <laughs> Once again, good. I understand you're a pretty flexible thinker. By anagram, you mean playing with letters, right? That means... In other words, maybe you can make some kind of word by changing the order of the remaining letters. <laughs> yeah. If so, I may be getting ahead of myself with this theory, but maybe the original list of characters that the first Twilight's removed from is 11 characters long. Well done again! I reached the same conclusion! Why's that? Why do you think there are 11 characters? We think killing a single sacrifice means crushing a single character. If we interpret the tear apart of the second Twilight to mean adding a gap between two characters, then there are 11 characters total. If tear apart means to crush the two characters, then we can assume that there are 13 characters. After all, from the fourth Twilight to the eighth Twilight, the word kill appears five times. In the ninth Twilight, it's written that none will be left alive. If we know the part about the witch reviving for now, I figured that after crushing the first six, separating the characters that are close and then crushing five more of them, there should be no characters left. So that makes 6 plus 5, or 11 characters. Tearing apart the two are close in the second, by what means to kill both of them. That makes 6 plus 2 plus 5, or 13 characters. There's a chance the word symbolizing the first Twilight has 11 or 13 characters. Hmm. Okay. Wait, couldn't be that easy, could it? Okay, that wasn't it. Wonderfully done! That's the exact same theory I thought of. Looks like you were gifted with excellent great little gray cells, just like me, Battler Son. <laughs> hey, quit it. Just doing what comes naturally. Hey, what the hell? The piece of me is pretty damn smart. There's no room left for me to make theories. Oh, <laughs> Sorry about that. You weren't around at this point, so I just controlled your piece for you. Is it nice how smart I made you look? <laughs> you look smarter when Burns playing you. Why not step down as the player and concentrate on being a piece instead? I joined in on this game partway through, well after the first murders occurred on October 5th. It means the piece called me was controlled by the player, Burncastle. So I guess that means it's possible for Burncastle's reasoning to be announced through my mouth. The game I'm watching now is nothing more than a replay of part that's already ended. However, that's probably good enough for now. After all, this burn castle Sama is going out of her way to solve the epitaph for me. I'll watch closely for now, and I'll try to find out what it means. Lambda Delta let it slip herself just a second ago. Well, duh, if I told you that, there'd be too many hints. If it wasn't a hard riddle, there'd be no point to it. Uh-oh, that's a hint too. <laughs> so the fact that the riddle itself is hard is... okay. This theory about Grandfather creating the epitaph in order to choose a successor isn't bad at all. Bur Eric and Burncastle's logic is extremely reasonable. But that's only if we assume Grandfather was the one to create it. Mm -hmm. So we talked about this too. We did. Right? We did. Like, 
because it, we don't know like what the perfect uh, the, the timeline is for when the portrait went up versus when grandfather died. Because grandpa's been dead at least for two, one and a half, two years, which is about when the portrait went up. Yeah. But if not him, then who and why? Because mm. if if it was someone else acting on his behalf, it would have been part of the KDA. And why introduce themselves to that liability? I right? know, right? He was probably alive at the time the epitaph was displayed, but of course, grandfather's already dead by 1986. And in the games up until now, Beatrice threatened us repeatedly with letters, saying that the only way to survive was to solve the epitaph and trying to force us to solve the riddle. In other words, it was Beatrice's intention, her hope, that we would try solving the riddle of the epitaph. The epitaph is so confusing that in most cases, the relatives never seriously tried solving it until the threatening letters started to arrive. That's why Beatrice fired the starting pistol that made us take a go at it. Why is Beatrice carrying out Grandfather's will after his death? Like the theory proposed in the first game, is Beatrice really Godfather's confidant? Grandfather's confidant? Who is following his orders even after his death and trying to select the successor in the riddle of the epitaph in Grandfather's stead? <sighs> if, he did if she did that, it would mean Beatrice really was Kinzo's trusted underling, the family alchemist she claimed to be in that letter. After Grandfather's death, Beatrice managed the ten tons of gold and took the title of alchemist. She was entrusted with the epitaph's riddle, and without ever embezzling the gold, she waited for a human fitting to be the successor to appear and solve it. And if that human didn't appear within a set time limit, would that be game over? Certainly, Aunt Ava, who solved the riddle in the third game, became the only survivor and automatically the final head of the Usharomia family, inheriting everything. Up until now, no one has ever survived past October 5th except Aunt Ava, the one who solved the epitaph. That was the only case where Beatrice let anyone survive. Beatrice's loyalty to Grandfather the thing that drove her? Was she so loyal that she faithfully carried out some terrible order to kill everyone if the epitaph wasn't solved? I must not stop thinking. Don't stop thinking. Don't just think of the riddle itself. Think about why it's significant. Why is Beatrice telling us to solve the epitaph? Why is she making us solve such a confusing epitaph? If Beatrice makes us try to solve this epitaph, we have no real chance of solving, and by some lucky chance a miracle occurs and someone is able to solve it, what significance would that have to her? I don't know what such a miracle would be worth to Beato. Hmm. Anyway, if we figure out the first Twilight, we'll have to give up on... Until we figure out the first Twilight, we'll have to give up on the rest. We tried looking at it from several different angles, but in the end we got stuck there and made no further advances. Uh. <sighs> Maria let out an extra large yawn. This calls several other people to yawn. We'd been using our heads so much that everyone had gotten a little sleepy. Jessica, who'd been silent and irritated the whole time, quickly stood up. I'm going upstairs with Maria. We'll watch TV or something. Okay, I'll go up too. Hey, why don't we all play cards upstairs? When George proposed this, Maria completely forgot about the big yawn of hers and started jumping up around, insisting that she wanted to play cards. According to the clock, it was nearly already 10 o'clock at night. It was already about the time you'd normally take a bath and get ready for sleep. Even the adults seemed pretty weary from traveling. We decided to continue this later and went our separate ways. Will you play cards with us too, Erica-chan? I appreciate the sentiment. I overstepped my bounds a little for forgetting that I'm a simple guest. I like to take it easy and rest for the night. I almost forgot I was recently in an accident. Nah. Nah, seriously. Such high spirits, it's hard to believe you almost drowned. <laughs> That's youth for you. Still, I enjoyed it. I think we've taken a big step in our reasoning thanks to you. If I find the gold, I'll let you have about a million yen worth. <laughs> Wahaha. Can't you at least offer the poor girl a hundred million? <laughs> no need to bother. I'm only interested in solving the riddle. Well, then if you'll excuse me, good night. <laughs> yeah, night. Oh, you aren't going upstairs, Paddler Kun? I'm getting a bit interested. I think I'll think things through here just a bit longer. If I can just figure out the list of characters that marks the first twilight, I bet the road before me will open up all at once. 
Everyone went up to the second floor one by one. Only Aunt Rosa remained behind, cleaning up the coffee cups everyone had been drinking out of. Kiriasan and some others had offered to help, but Rosa refused and was washing them all alone. Since I had just been treated to such delicious coffee, I decided I'd help too. I wasn't just doing it because I felt obligated. I wanted to keep discussing the epitaph with someone. The first twilight. The first twilight. Mm. Aunt Rosa, have you thought of some list of characters on a, or a word? No, I don't have a clue. But instead of the first twilight, it's the tenth twilight that bugs me. The tenth twilight? What about it? Well, at the end here, it says you'll receive the Golden Land's four treasures once and for the last time, right? Yeah, it does. Why mention that you're reaching the Golden Land just once and then say it's for the last time? It's almost as though he's repeating the same thing twice. I've just been wondering whether he had some reason for putting it like that. I fucking called that out. I fucking called out what weird wording that is. You did. You did make that observation. I don't have an answer, right. but I fucking called it out. I, yeah, I, I hope you all don't feel let down or anything, but I, I still don't fucking have no any. No one feels let down. Okay. I still don't have any fucking clue here. This is, we've been giving it as much as we can, and I still don't have any fucking clue, <laughs> if I'm honest. You're right. Like you said. There's got to be a more straightforward way of saying that. That line should have been a key part of the riddle, where you wouldn't expect the writer to waste words needlessly. Could it have been done for some special purpose? Still, you and that Erica-chan girl are incredible. Your minds really are flexible. I'm already an old lady, and my brain just doesn't work that fast. That theory about the six chosen by the key, signifying six characters to be removed, was very impressive. After hearing that, I can't see it as being any other way, but before then, I didn't think it was like that at all. I'm feeling let down by my own dull mind. <laughs> That's not true. you got a flexible mind yourself, Aunt Rosa. This last time thing might be really important somewhere down the line. Not at all. My mind's very stiff. Up until now, I've always thought that this first twilight was nothing more than a place one-tenth of the way on a road to the Golden Land. <laughs> What's that? Sounds interesting. Mind telling me about it? <laughs> After all, in the line before the first twilight, it says you must travel to the Golden Land, right? The next part describes a journey that lasts ten days, so I thought the first twilight would be part of the way through that journey. A journey? I see. Then the journey begins, and when you set up camp at the first twilight, you offer the six as sacrifices. So where would that place be? How many kilometers from the starting point? Ah. <sighs> Please, don't tell anyone about your aunt's silly ideas, okay? Don't you dare call yourself old Miss Early 30s, right? That's what I'm like in the... Like, you're, you're barely older than us. Stop. What the fuck, Rosa? When I first saw that part about attaining to the treasures of the Golden Land, I just assumed it was more of the same. Typically, attaining treasures would mean obtaining them, but I thought it meant reaching or arriving at some place. Some place ten days away from Father's hometown where all these treasures might be found. You kidding? That's a brilliant idea. The first twilight is the first stop on that ten-day journey. The name of that place might be the key to moving forward. For my ten-day theory to work, you'd have to know both the starting point and the end point. I know the start point. I know the hometown Father loved. The place Father spent his time when he was a boy really is far away. But the problem is the goal, the golden land. You're not going to tell us, huh? All right, fine. Fuck I you, too. I won't tell you, but I know. All right. What does that really mean? If we don't know that, my theory gets us nowhere. I've been stuck at this spot for a long time, but after listening to your reasoning today, I realized what an embarrassing mistake I've been making. <laughs> no, I think that's still an interesting idea. <sighs> Start in a goal, a ten-day journey, and a place reached by the, the very first twilight. Believe it or not, I think you might solve this one easily, Battler Kun. If you do solve it with your aunt's hint, share some with me. Even 5% would be great. It's a promise. Despite being my aunt, she gave me a smile and a wink which would have made a man's heart jump. It's a promise, though. You I will give me 5%. I Okay, yes, 5%. Jesus Christ. Excellent. As I helped her wash the coffee cups, I kept pondering the epitaph's riddle in silence.
After I finished helping Aunt Rosa, I passed through the corridor on my way to the bathroom and saw Erica unlocking the door to a room on my path. <laughs> I thought your room was on the second floor. Figured you'd gone upstairs and fallen asleep by now. Oh, don't mind me. I was just searching for something. I thought it might be here. Searching for something? Erica unlocked the door and opened it. A dusty smell drifted out. It was the library. For a library, the gaps between bookshelves were extremely small. This was obviously built for sorting books, not reading them. So it's a book you're searching for. Not necessarily a book, but materials, I guess you could say. There's something I've just got to look up. <laughs> you're looking for something to do with the epitaph's riddle. Pretty impressive that you haven't got up yet. Is it the 20 billion yen that's enticing? I haven't given up either. Apparently being stubborn is something we both share. Of course not. I'm only interested in solving puzzles. I search for the gold only to prove my reasoning correct. Even if I found it, I wouldn't pocket it for myself, so have no fears on that score. She immediately cast my comment aside, saying that she just liked solving riddles and had no interest at all in the gold. I thought she was pretty weird from the start, and it looks like that impression was spot on. You know, it's a Sherlock Holmes type. <laughs> Erica slowly circled the bookshelves, searching for the book she was after. I'm also trying to solve the epitaph right now. Oh yeah, just a second ago. I heard something from interesting from Aunt Rosa, which might give us a hint about the first twilight. Let me hear it. Erica asked this without stopping her search or even turning to face me. <coughs> In the line before the first twilight, it says that one who obtains the key must do so-and-so. One who came to the key must then travel to the Golden Land in accordance with these rules. <laughs> Whoa, you've already got it memorized? I guess I shouldn't be so surprised. Yeah, what about that? Yeah, you got to travel to the Golden Land, right? Apparently this made Aunt Rosa think about the Tenth Twilight. In other words, going on a ten-day journey for the beloved homeland to the Golden Land. Actually, I would already noticed that myself. You start from the place where you're on the first day of the ten-day journey. That's where you take the sacrifices from. Yeah, that's what Aunt Rosa thought of, too. I think the theory's pretty intriguing. We're looking for the place you'd reach on the first day of a ten-day journey. That bit of land, or else the name of that region, might be a key. I also guess the place's name might be a key. That's why I'm looking for materials. I want to turn my guess into certainty. Can I find a way to spell Italy with 11 or 13 letters? <laughs> Just what are you looking for? Then Erica's hand suddenly stopped, and she slowly pulled it out. As she dusted it off, she finally looked at me and spoke. It's an atlas. People won't be people when they hear this sound. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. The one that's growing in the yard at the edge of town? <laughs> yeah, you get it. People still listen to battles, right? <laughs> well... I think this is a good time as any to take our final break. What do you think, Vivian? Okay. It's what, 6.30? Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. All right, we've been at this for a fucking six and a half hours. Yeah, crazy. <gasps> you know what? I just realized if we saved... Oh, uh, let me do that real quick. Because, like, what if we accidentally exit? Then I that just would... literally press forward a bunch of times. It's fine. It'd still be so fucking annoying. Yeah, okay, let me drop a save. All first right, save, y'all. First save, first. Yeah. We're gonna take one final break here, and then we're gonna do one more chapter, I think. Hell yeah. So, Viv, you want to go first? All right. So I did not see anything anyone put in chat during that big epitaph run down there, just because I was, tr you know, trying to see if anything would click. But nah, I, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got tons of more Umineko memes. Oh shit, a rat. Nice. <gasps> oh, that's some good artwork. Oh, I like this. Can finally send this now? What is this? Oh, that's an Erica. Oh, that's an Erica cosplay. Oh, that's very good. Oh, that's very good. And, of course, the Columbo memes have come out. We also got some new folks in the Discord. Hello, little lady Bernka. 
An observer one two three four five. Welcome. Oh my God, Bernie! Here and now. God. Even at the time with internet forms discussing it, there wasn't one hundred percent consensus. Yeah, it's uh, cosplay you made when you were in college. It's very good, Mushroom. If you're wondering what we're talking about, go check out the Human Echo channel and the APR Discord. Link in the uh, pinned thing there. Kind of thing you can't just half focus on. Yeah. I, honestly, those hints help. And it's something I think we want to revisit. But, like, holy fuck. Oh. I, at least, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. It, it, sometimes it does feel like, you know, I, like, I hope, I hope none of y'all feel let down by the, by the amount of work we put into this and what we're able to, to solve on our own. I know it's not perfect and we're not getting everything and we're not you know putting like we're not you know able to do everything we can but like i hope i uh, we we do work hard and we are giving this as much time as we can on our own and clearly that's borne some fruit right it's changed the way that we read this game and look at things so you know If not the eight hours episode one, okay. <laughs> I I do appreciate it. It it's it's weird because this is like the first. I don't know how else to explain this. This is like the first let's play we've done where it really feels like our reactions to it are kind of on display and, and there for people to to judge, in a way that's not really true of other things. You know what I mean? Like in other games, you have a score, right? You have the end you need to reach and you can judge your progress based on that and this one we have no idea how well we're doing or how much we're putting in because it's just there it's just this big wall of text that demands so much from you and there's no way to tell right how close you are so and it's also like brought us a bigger audience than anything we've ever done before we've had upwards of 30 viewers for this enti like up for this entire stream up until like five minutes ago which is fucking wild that is so much that is so much attention on this reading exercise <laughs> um <laughs> so it, it it's hard not to feel a little bit overwhelmed by it the more you get more you put in the more you get out nice you must talk about times you aren't used to hardcore mysteries yeah i i know i i, I haven't read mysteries I just, I just have it, but... Umineko is a very dedicated cult following. No! Really? What makes you say that? I don't know where you got that impression from. <sighs> I do, uh, yeah. Like, the uh, best we can do is try to be as engaged as we possibly can. And I'm glad that that at least is coming across. So, thank you. And we do have fun theories. Thanks! <laughs> I'm glad I'm, we've already, we're not even a day into it. Well, one of them's already been proven dead wrong, so that's fun. <laughs> anyway, this is, uh, playing this game has been unlike any other visual novel we've ever played. This has been a truly singular experience, and I legitimately, like, it, it's, it's, there are very few things I would love to experience for the first time again. I have a feeling this will be one of them when we're done. I can think of like maybe one or two pieces of media that I would love to be able to experience for the first time again without, you know, fresh, without knowing anything about it. And this feels like it's going to be one of them. I used to think of Umineko as a mystery for the first three episodes and insisted with small magic and witches were real. I mean, that's what we were doing. Great background noise while I'm doing homework. Don't worry, you're doing great. Oh well, thank you, Ellie. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad we've been good background. <sighs> and when Echo is an experience that changes you forever, I'm getting that impression. <laughs> Beto and Maria obviously know what they're talking about. I mean, like they do, just not in like the same way, right? Ah. 
We gotta get that first time experience again. <laughs> I'm honestly, uh, low key. Shout out to all y'all in the chat that have been keeping like that have, that have been keeping it cool in terms of spoilers and shit. Like throughout our entire playthrough of the question arcs, and all of the like this second live stream we're doing and all this stuff, all of the theory videos, we've had maybe one time where someone overstepped bounds and shared something that they weren't supposed to. Like only once. Every other time, everyone has been incredibly diligent about using Rot 13 to discuss spoiler stuff or only pointing out things that like obviously we would have no way of like stuff that's specifically like language gated and stuff like that. Stuff that's reasonable, right? And that isn't I can't believe that the fandom for this game has that kind of discipline to it. So thank you all so much for that. It means the world to us that you're here along, you know, helping us with this, but also like encouraging it in 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 the most you know, in the nicest way possible. Letting us have this chance to discover it on our own, you know. I, I really, I can't stress enough how much I appreciate that. It means the world to us. <laughs> YouTubers seem to give up on the epitaph as far as trying it seriously just put you out I, I'm not going to pretend we've got any better idea. Like, even after all those hints, like, it, it's it's still feels above my pay grade but like i i don't i don't feel satisfied leaving it unsolved i get if that makes sense like i don't i don't feel like it feels like we've gotten so much and like that that so all those hints should be enough to help us get through it right and i feel like i really do want to solve it but it's i, I worry the experience it's just integral to the enjoyment of the story and i really appreciate it it's so it's so kind of y'all. Thank you all, everyone who's been in chat for today. Feel like they don't know how to approach the epitaph because they don't know which parts might require kanji knowledge. Yeah, and we and we've we have the uh, the the Japanese version of the epitaph as well. Try to combine. It's all right. You don't need to tell us that much. We we do have. I appreciate the offer though. We do have the Japanese version of the epitaph, and we can look through it if we. When we need to. Oh, Vivian, you're back? I'm back. All right. I'm going to go take a quick five minutes. A rare level of effort? Why, thank you. Uh, they're on the bottom shelf of the bridge. You're welcome. Uh, I actually just kind of sat there and dissociated for like five minutes and forgot that I was on stream. 
I'm useless without you here to bounce things off of and vibe with. I wonder if we put our brains to it, if we can get at least one step of the epitaph. <clears throat> Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. What? Hmm. Yeah. No, oh, I didn't have anything else. I left you in charge of the chat while I was gone and you said <laughs> that nothing? That was a mistake. <laughs> I needed to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I left you all alone with you Vivian, who was. You can't be trusted with these things. Vivian apparently was quiet. <sighs> all right. Give me your water. Yeah. All right. We're gonna try to go for one more chapter, and I think that'll bring us to just a little bit over eight hours, right? Probably. Depending yeah. On how long it is? Like, given about how long they are. Whew. Hope you all have enjoyed this so far. This is going to be the last chapter we do tonight. Uh, after that, you'll start seeing Umineko episodes probably in the next two week, two three weeks on the channel. It'll take a little bit because we pre-record them, so they yeah. won't show up immediately on like Friday. Don't look for that stuff, but you know. You love this playthrough? I'm so glad, Garfield. Thank you for enjoying our playthrough. Remember, if you're enjoying the playthrough, don't forget to smash that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe to 8PR. <laughs> Did you like that? I finally wow, got the pivot in there. Smooth. Six hours and 46 minutes into the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, go ahead. It seems we've managed to make it through the first day. Natsuhi could be seen in the study. When she muttered as though to herself, gold butterflies appeared and formed the shape of a person. We mustn't let our guards down. <clears throat> I can't imagine we'll last through tomorrow if we simply sit around here. <sighs> so, as I suspected, simply saying father's in a bad mood and refuses to come out won't be enough to deceive them completely. It's going to be hard for me to resist the urge to boot up the answer arcs on your own and try to read past where you are today after the stream is over. <laughs> I mean, don't let us stop you, Evie. It, it, it's, it's, it, although it is really sweet that you want to keep pace with our Let's Play, but I mean, we go very slowly. That is the nature of 8PR, right? <laughs> Indeed. It seems last year left them quite suspicious. Because of that, the toxin has expanded and is coiling itself around this study, growing ever tighter. <sighs> I imagine it goes beyond mere suspicions raised at last year. That's right. The toxin has grown too thick to be explained away by that alone. Someone must have suspected Kinzo-sama's death since last year, and is strongly intent on exposing that secret at this year's family conference. Does that mean we didn't have them fully deceived even a full year ago? Unfortunately, it's probably best to assume that. Given our current situation, the typhoon will remain here tomorrow and the boat will not come for them until the day after. In short, we must endure for another 36 hours at the very least. It may not be visible to your eyes, Natsuhi, but the closed room barrier sealing this room was once very firm. 
Tonight, however, it has been worn down almost to the point of crumbling, like dry leaves awaiting a windstorm. No, the storm is already here, Natsuhi-sama. I propose that we switch from the closed room barrier to something else. What do you mean by that? Are you suggesting we change our plan? That is correct. Oh, that is correct. <laughs> Virgilia Sama and I, I'm sorry, I get that. What is it with your family and this <laughs> curse about changing voices, hmm? This could all be solved if they just told us who was speaking in each line, but no. <sighs> Virgilia Sama and I will reconstruct a barrier similar to last year's. In other words, we'll take Kinzo out of the study and have him type rope walk from shadow to shadow where the toxin can't reach, just like last year. It may be dangerous, but I would like to second her proposal. Is this a joke? Do you truly intend to change the plan this far in? When one realizes they cannot withstand a siege, they must consider the option of abandoning the castle. <sighs> right now, this room is like a castle surrounded by enemy troops, with its walls about to crumble. If staying put means certain death, then at then you also have the option of riding out for one last stand and an honorable defeat. After all, surrender doesn't seem to be an option in this fight. I'll protect Father's secret until the very end. If it's discovered, we'll have no chance to talk our way out of it. My husband's embezzlement will be exposed to the light of day, and the Ushiromia family's honor will be destroyed. We must remain firm and prevent that no matter what may happen. Calm down, I understand you. Krause's alchemy will soon yield great results. If we can just make it through this year, we'll manage. So don't get flustered. But we used this strategy precisely because we wouldn't be able to pull off the same trick as last year, right? Isn't it the height of stupidity to return to a plan you previously abandoned because it was impossible? Just what sort of plan could we hope to make at this point? Ronave and I will prepare one. Leave it to us, for creating illusions is what witches do. All you have to do is give us your permission, Natsuhi-sama. Teacher and Ronave are quite reliable at hmm. times like these. Gonna start murdering folks? And the servants of the one-winged eagle are top-notch furniture. Once Teacher and Ronave rebuild the magic we need, I imagine the servants will work hard to protect it. It still isn't too late. Let's take Kinzo out of the study and make that illusion walk around. Did you forget we chose our current strategy because we considered plans like that and couldn't find anything that would work? It would be the height of foolishness to get flustered in an emergency and carelessly throw away our primary plan. But Natsuhi-sama, as you stand there amidst the toxin, you must realize better than anyone else that we will no longer be able to outlast this siege. I propose that we try and think of another plan without changing our objective of holding the fort. In any event, just as long as we can keep this room sealed, no one will be able to deny Father's existence. After all, one cannot determine the contents of a cat box that no number of people could ever hope to open. And that's like the third time already, <laughs> right? In less than seven hours? Wow. If if Kin if the study is the cat box, does that make Kinzo a cat boy? <laughs> yeah. He's just up there every day killing a bunch of cats. I don't understand it. <laughs> all he does is, and you wonder what that smell is, it's from all the cats. <laughs> the cat corpses. Well, that may be true, but humans are capable of defying reason. It's possible for them to eat into an airtight cat box and go inside like black ants closing in on a box of cake. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm hungry. <laughs> Lady Burncastle's piece something something also worries me. It was fortunate that Erika Sama stole the show at tonight's dinner. By doing that, she created an atmosphere in which it was possible to close down the family conference for the night. If you would all return directly to the family conference as usual, the barrier might have been broken tonight. However, it also made the toxin grow even thicker. After it thickens all night, it might manage to penetrate the closed room barrier with ease. Whether we continue to hold down the fort or not, we will not make it through tomorrow, 
unless we prepare a new strategy and a new barrier. Lady Burncastle may have some plan for breaking the closed room barrier. We can't take that piece called Erica lightly. Hmm. <sighs> Come to think of it, that man who mentioned taking revenge for the events of 19 years ago might also be a piece of Lady Burncastle's. It's four to achieve equilibrium with 18 pieces, but now it has two, un two undesired pieces added to it. There are too many irregularities this year. Lady Burncastle is a fan of Eastern things. In shogi or Japanese chess, aren't you allowed to drop pieces in during a game? Yes, that is possible. Even the act of dropping a queen from the captured pile right in front of the enemy king is an allowable trump card in shogi. I wonder what that man who claimed to have a connection from 19 years ago is doing now. Is he already hiding somewhere on this island? That girl called Erica was able to appear by claiming to have drifted here. That man might also have landed somewhere on this island despite the typhoon, and he may be hiding somewhere now. Unless that man is one of the ones we know about, then we know from Red that that's not the case. But... And it's going to be hard to fully deceive the relatives <sighs> any longer. Why? Why have so many irregular things happened at the same time? How can you explain this nightmarish miracle of coincidence? Natsuki so slammed the desk hard, held her head, and cringed at the pain from her overwhelming headache. <laughs> Lady Burncastle controls miracles. There's no point being surprised at irregularities or miracles when she's around. <sighs> well, Shogi is a game in which an enemy piece might suddenly appear to be in front of a king. For that very reason, you build up a perfect formation that won't allow for such a weakness, artistically constructing a castle around your king. In that case, isn't holding the fort exactly what we should be doing now? Perhaps if we hold a fort, we could hold, but we cannot hope for such a thing now. It's difficult to corner a king with no wall to his back, and even more difficult to corner one in o with open spaces in all directions. Think of a mouse. You can catch oh, a rat! <laughs> you can catch a mouse that's shut in a cage, despite all its rage. However, Catching a mouse in a field is like trying to catch a cloud. Natsuhi-sama, please allow us to consider this option. Ginzo-sama will leave his study and wander around the mansion on a whim, avoiding the gazes of the relatives. We will think of a natural-seeming plan for this by morning. Don't you see the danger? If we're willing to consider such a dangerous option, wouldn't it be better to continue acting as though father's in his room in a bad mood? Beatrice plays the bong cloud confirmed. True <laughs> that. Tomorrow, the relatives will crowd around the study once again. They'll be right on the other side of that single door. When that happens, just how long do you intend to make it seem like they're having a yelling match with Kinzo-sama? It's impossible. And we must find some way to postpone that impossibility for 36 hours. If you tell me to do it, I will. I am Ushiromi Natsuhi the wife of the Ushiromiya family had. If you tell me to do that, I will act out a shouting match with father for as many days as it takes. Ah! Even Natsuhi realized that she could never manage it, but she no longer saw any chance of victory from a plan that involved an illusion of Kinzo walking around. Banging on the desk several times with tears of rage streaming down her face, Natsuhi alternated between groaning from her headache and placing the blame on one thing or another. It made one feel that there must be some curse that made anyone who sat in that chair act that way. <sighs> this is like a game of mating shogi, where you are on the defensive. In mating shogi, the opponent has no king, and you have no way of winning other than avoiding a checkmate for a predetermined number of moves. And to think that I must escape for a whole day and a half's worth of moves. It's just too many. Don't stop thinking. Don't give up. I'll listen to your complaints, so... Don't have a fit. Your unshaking will to overcome this trial will bring you success with certainty. That's the power of the Witch of Certainty for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What? Uh, no, I'm back. I'm back. You must not lose that magical power. Believe that you will overcome this no matter what. I'm sure you'll think of a brilliant plan. 
Therefore, you mustn't give up, and you mustn't stop thinking. You're right, I understand. Only I can overcome this hardship. That is correct. Didn't Kinzo entrust you with the job of overcoming these challenges? Kinzo acknowledged that you are worthy of that responsibility. Father. Father. <laughs> Teacher and Ronave will think of a move. Of course, I will think as well. However, even that we cannot do without permission from our master, from you. So at the very least, don't abandon your will to fight. Don't give up. <laughs> I understand, I understand, but I'm already all tired out and I can't stand this headache. Why is it that I'm crying here, all alone in this frigid study? Why, why isn't my husband here for me now? Back when dinner ended, Kraus claimed to be dizzy and went to bed early. Of course, he had done this to get enough rest to ready himself for the long day ahead, but to not see he right now, it felt as though he'd just gone straight to sleep and pushed the entire burden on her. However, complaining about such a thing would mean her failure as a wife. Isn't it a good wife's duty to work hard and put family first, even when her husband is resting? Moved with regret and at her anger towards her husband, unable to determine at whom she should be angry, Natsuhi continued to sob. If only Kinzo would just speak to her kindly at times like this. Beto searched for him, but Kinzo had been nowhere to be seen in the study for some time now. Perhaps Natsuhi noticed this as well. Though she bragged that fighting alone and supporting from behind was the responsibility of a good wife. Without anyone to tell her that this reality was necessary, she was now so frail that she couldn't even stop her own tears. Just as Beato was trying to think of words to console Natsuhi, Virgilia tapped her lightly on the shoulder. Sometimes when words of consolation don't come from the mouth of the right person, they can do more harm than good. So Virgilia, silently, told Beato that remaining silent was the best course of action for right now. Hey, bitches! Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I know I'm an outsider, but I wonder if you'd let me speak? The Gap, please restrain yourself for the time being. Now, in this room, there's no distinction between outsiders, guests, and the rest of us. You may speak. Okay, thank you. Runaway said himself a while ago. This mating shogi thing with you on the defensive sounds kind of hot, by the way. <laughs> uh, here's my number. Standing offer. Uh, how do you lose in mating shogi? It's when your king is checkmated, right? That goes without saying. And the opponent has no king. Therefore, all Natsuhi can do is have her king run away constantly. <laughs> Penetrating defenses. I see. So you're thinking of that move. Has that time already come? What do you mean? Do you mean there's some sort of move remaining to us? <laughs> it's what you proposed in the very beginning about how to hide Goldsmith's death. I'm trying to say the time has come to use that. You mean, having him go missing? You mean to make that move right now, during the family conference? That's too dangerous. Either that or we could mate and play some shogi. <laughs> yeah, babe? Yeah, yeah, you want in on this? Yeah, you do, babe. High five. Got him. <laughs> Once, they <dis> Once they successfully resolved all of their problems, they would have to lay Kinzo to rest. And the best way to do that was to make him disappear. One day, Kinzo would go out into the forest and never return. They wouldn't be able to find him no matter how much they searched, so he would be declared missing. You said it yourself a second ago, Riche. You can't catch a mouse that's escaped into a field. And you can't catch a goldsmith who's disappeared into the forest. That's also a saying. <laughs> they have it in Italy. I would know. You plan for us to talk our way out of this like that? To use such a move now when the suspicion against us is greatest would be no better than committing suicide. Oh, they were probably suspected. Such a move would most certainly lead to mistrust. However, if they were to set foot in the study, they would find nothing to aid them. It would never again be possible for them to keep Kinzo-sama pinned down. And no matter how much they suspected his death, they would be unable to prove it. Forget about a mere 36 hours. You'd be able to protect Kinzo's secret forever that way, right? Right? Of course! They'll start to bear an appropriate risk. If you make that move, you may be able to overcome this particular challenge, but we cannot even guess at how much prestige you might lose for it. Even so, 
It's a move that will certainly outcome, overcome our current challenge. Of course, you'll then have to face an even greater suspicion, but you won't die. <laughs> I mean, not without mating Shogi first, right? <laughs> yes, that may be true, but... <laughs> During the Great Kanto Earthquake, the Ushirumiya family should have died. However, the man genius Goldsmith revived it so splendidly that it's now something you could desire to protect. So this time, it's up to you and your husband, the new head and his wife, to do the same. Hmm. Is that how you intend to stir her up? I'm not stirring her up. I'm just asking if she's prepared to be the wife of the head, that's all. Are you prepared to protect the Ushiromiya family, even if you end up getting dragged through the dirt to do it? I am prepared. Then now is the time, bitch. If you can survive by being dragged through the dirt, then crawl with all your might. You'll inch your way through this world of suffering, and eventually you'll restore that glory. I, the Gap, 33rd in rank, promise you this. <laughs> the Gap? But the fact that I came to play at a time like this must be a sign from the gods of happenstance. I'll keep this promise, Ushiromi and Natsuhi. They required nothing in return. Richa, the one who serves you has already paid me plenty in advance. <laughs> the Gap may have sense seemed irresponsible, but she actually possessed a strong sense of duty. She was the kind of person who just couldn't leave someone in trouble alone. Hmm. Payment in advance? Oh, when did I do that? I have no memory of such a thing. Yeah, no, I just mean those magical items you couldn't remember where you put. I made off with quite a few of them. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what? Finders keepers! So that was your doing after all. Give them back. Give back my illusionary silver crystal and moon stick. I can't awaken my moon prism power without it. Moon prism power? Make up! I still haven't played around by sticking them together yet. What the fuck? Why are they acting like children now? <laughs> <laughs> That's the sort of magic and strategy you can expect from me. I can hide Goldsmith away in a world where no one will be able to find him. I mean, you know the instant you need that magic. <laughs> Until then, feel free to think of another safer plan. Toodles. Hmm, true, true. Having alternatives is beneficial for your peace of mind. And without that, you'll never think up a brilliant plan. Natsuhi-sama, we have quite some time remaining us tonight. Let's leave the gap strategy as a final trump card and iron out a plan of our own for now. Please give us permission. And please give us the trust, magical power, and absolute conviction we'll need to succeed without fail. Natsuhi's Japanese VA is Sailor Jupiter. Fuck yeah. Haha, <laughs> that's wonderful. If you have faith, I will make your dreams come true. If you succumb to doubt, then I will make those nightmares come true. You must build your own future. Kinzo would disappear. And right in the middle of this family conference. Such a move would truly be a last resort. By burying this final, tr final trump card in her heart. Not so he decided that she would go rope around for a different plan until the last second. After all, this long, long night has only just begun. Burn Castle and her piece had just as long to prepare as Natsuhi did. What was that noise? Oh. Gouge the foot and kill. And that completes it. <laughs> I see, so that's really what gouge meant. Once again, my reasoning was correct. High five me. <laughs> Self five. <laughs> the feel of it this time was clearly different from the previous times. As though some sort of device had activated. However, as far as a quick glance could tell, there was no dramatic change. Such as an entrance or some sort of opening. Apparently, they would need to do just a little more before they could find it. <laughs> You're incredible. If we really do find the goal, we'll have to split it together. Enjoying the intellectual stimulation is enough for me. The only thing I like is solving riddles. The only reward I need is proof that I was right. She shrugged it off, implying that just seeing the gold would be enough. She then she crouched down, peering fixedly at the lock mechanism. It's definitely no mistake. To say this girl really loves solving riddles. For her, treasure hunting is all about the delicious process of exposing secrets. So she has no interest whatsoever in getting the treasure for herself and becoming a billionaire. I 
crazy. Pretty cocky of you, setting up a device like this. The mistake you all made was letting me in on the island in the first place. Nah! Simply by the existence of the epitaph in that place, this level of reasoning is possible for Fruto Erica. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. What do you think, everyone? She said this to the now-exposed contraption. She grinned. Her smile was triumphant, but it was more fully characterized by the small bit of unpleasant disdain contained within. After solving the riddle, she was probably be reveling in the pleasure of having won against one who had proposed it, and she enjoyed her ability to scoff at this person now. Yeah, if we find the gold now, the successor won't be crouched on, but you! <laughs> well, I wonder. Isn't Krauss on kind of arrogant? You might even call him a braggart. It'll be pretty amusing to see him lose both the gold and his position as the successor to his nephew in the course of a single night, won't it? Erica was still crouched down as she spoke, her back to battle as she toyed around with the device. Jessica-san was her name, right? The girl who talked back to me? Ugh. Yeah. She really was acting big about her father being the successor. When she wakes up tomorrow and learns that you inherited all the gold, and that her father is no longer the successor, I wonder what kind of expression she'll have on her face. <laughs> so this does seem to imply the goal, the answer to the riddle is indeed on the island. Like, we yeah. were talking... We, we were debating this back and forth about um, what we were shown in episode three and whether or not we were able to take Ava's solving of the riddle as proof that, like, yeah, the, answer, the, the, the end goal of this is indeed on the island and something they can get to right now. This does seem to confirm it. I've got no intention of keeping that 20 billion to myself. Well, even if I got 10%, that'd be as much as I could handle. We can split the rest fairly amongst the family. I'm even less interested in being the successor. Be glad to let Uncle Krauss deal with that. Will you really be able to settle things like that easily in the end? Nah. Well, rather than trying to make guesses about that, I imagine it'll be more fun to guess what the expression Jessica-san wears tomorrow. Even kind of sad excuses she'll try to make. Nah, nah. You really do have a nasty personality. How? Couldn't you reason that out from the time you learned that I like solving riddles? I'm an intellectual... Whoa, alright. I'm an intellectual rapist who enjoys exposing things people try to hide. Get it? The same thing goes for solving the epitaph's riddle. I'll bet you wanted to expose the gold grandfather worked so hard to hide. Yeah, that was my goal at first. But it changed partway through. Partway through? Changed what? I mean Jessica-san. She put it in on my reasoning, contaminating that pure and noble time. Ever since then, I've been trying to solve the epitaph so that I can teach that Jessica a lesson. <laughs> are, are you serious? Yeah. 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 I'll make all upon surrender, no matter who they are. That is my sole pleasure. Do you still need me to reason it out for you? Rooster Romeo Jessica irritated me. That's why I wanted to put her in place and decided to solve the epitaph. That's what led to the emotions I hold now. Can you reason out what those emotions are? This time I turned my back on her in earnest. Did I get a bit too excited by this riddle-solving game, letting her drive me on and do something terrible? That's right. Should have all been possible to reason this one out. The riddle is solved. The riddle, rid relatives will probably freak out about who the successor should be. Dad and some of the others will probably push for me, the discoverer, to be the successor. And some relatives will not be thrilled by that prospect. will probably oppose them. Despite how adamantly Erica affirmed it, it isn't written anywhere that the one who solves the riddle of the epitaph becomes the successor. Because of this, I'll lead. it'll lead to a fight between those who acknowledge that theory and those who don't. If I reason out what will happen next, as Erica did probably lead to a messy fight between Uncle Krauss and the rest of the relatives. Now that I've solved the riddle, will Jessica admire me or curse me? I don't want to think about that now. Erica was still mumbling. Apparently she had already started trying to reason it out. As I began to feel very bad, I vaguely gazed out into the black night. Ooh. Huh? At that time I looked at a dim outdoor light and saw the silhouette of a person in front of it. 
I thought I must be seeing things. After all, it was unthinkable that someone could have been standing there this whole time, pounded upon by the rain without even an umbrella. However, the silhouette didn't move an inch. And maybe... No, it couldn't be. It was looking at me. And it was... Sup, bitch. <laughs> Get Grandfather? At that moment, I understood. Grandfather's probably been watching us solve the riddle this whole time. And he watched as we spectacularly solved the whole thing. <laughs> Without a doubt, there was a faint smile on Grandfather's face. Grandfather, who had never worn anything except a moody, moody and frightening expressions, looked me in the eye and smiled at me for the first time. Almost as though he was saying, how impudent. Or else, I never thought it would be you. However, this is still the result that Grandfather's epitaph chose. So I'm sure he accepted that result. In the end, he grinned one more time. Of course, he didn't use words. The smile seemed to be wordlessly saying, well done. I didn't know how I should respond. I couldn't do anything but stand there in shock. Ignoring Erica, she crouched down, mumbling with her back towards me. And Grandfather stretched out a hand from the folds of his cloak and pointed at something. When I looked in that direction, there was... The thing he was pointing at was probably... The signpost to the Golden Land. Go. I'm sure Grandfather said that one word. I nodded to show that I understood. After watching that, Grandfather nodded back, satisfied. Then with a the spin of his cloak, he disappeared, seeming to melt into the darkness. The expression on his face at the end was a smile that was, for the first time, truly satisfied. Hmm. Are you listening, battler son? Uh, did you hear my reasoning? It was pretty great. I found it. That's the signpost to the Golden Land. Huh? Oh, it's facing a different direction than it used to. I see. So it means go that way. You got some pretty good powers of observation. <sighs> Grandfather told me about it. Huh? Ginzo san Where is he? I'm going. Let's have a look at what you're showing us. Just what is this golden land? Nah. This will be pretty poggers. <laughs> we started to walk. The entrance to the golden land was right there. So, my epitaph has finally been solved. And it was Battler who did it. <laughs> Wonderful. Couldn't be better. So... We don't think Battler is actually talking with Kinzo here. Yeah. He was just, like, he was just talking with Erica, claimed that f Grandfather told him about it, and then moved on. Mm hmm I got it. When I think about it, I was also ahead that no one saw coming. How amusing that the one to succeed me is just as surprising. I have no more regrets in life. Beatrice, I am coming to join you. Along with the present, the miracle chosen by my epitaph. Battler of all people. That battler <laughs> at the very very end of my life I have seen a true miracle Beatrice I've won this bet <laughs> yep okay and here they are at the thingy this is the tunnels beneath if we're to I, we, we've debated how much of episode four we should take at face value yeah i'm on record doubting there are tunnels at all so this would seem to throw that into question i was on the impression that the, that there are indeed tunnels on rokinjima tunnels that might have been made when the army uh, had been occupying it and that those tunnels connected to kuwadorian i don't know how much of that was actually part of our speculation videos but the background they just used was one that they used when they were underneath when they were trapped in uh, the tunnels yep. in uh, episode four. Yep. So, who knows? <laughs> Except for its own corrosive properties, there's no practical way to turn gold into money. I can imagine it take a lot of work to exchange all this for cash. Not. The end of a crude under underground tunnel in a VIP room so beautiful it seemed improper. It's a pile of gold so large. There could be no doubt in its 20 billion yen worth. Erica was calm, but Battler couldn't suppress his excitement. As for which of the two was the correct reaction to show after seeing a mountain of gold, only those who saw the scene with their own eyes could say for sure. 
In this day and age, it is said that an average salary man earns about 200 million yen in wages over his life. And this is 20 billion yen worth of gold. With even one hundredth of this gold mountain, a single human could live their entire life without working. What is labor? Isn't the very point of a human's life since a person who doesn't work cannot eat? If so, then 200 million yen is enough to make a single person's life complete. And this is 200 billion yen. 20, right? 20 billion yen. This would not account for the labors of 100 humans. No, a single human life 100 times over. Of course, if you wanted to work, you could. Any money you gained as a result could be used to play with. After all, you would already have enough money to live for your entire life. No, for eternity. No, wait, I mustn't keep it all to myself. I could split it up among a hundred people. If I could create a world where a full of 100 humans wouldn't have to work for their whole lives, just what kind of world would that be? Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt at all. This is the Golden Land. There you go. Burn Battler magnificently discovered the gold. Congrats. <laughs> I had her hide the more central parts of it, but what's wrong with being just a little mean, right? Sure, do that as much as you like. I'm not interested in the micro details about what kind of riddle it was or what kind of answer it had. The important thing is that the results, 10 tons of gold, were discovered. The gold was discovered in the third game as well by Aunt Ava. Aunt Rosa also witnessed it. However, the two of them hadn't spoken of the gold's discovery to anyone. In other words, there was a chance that the gold's discovery was a cat box truth kept between the two of them. More specifically, it was possible the gold didn't exist and was just an illusion. However, I have finally found it. The cat box has been opened! It'd be a waste of time to do that repeat it game, so I'll give you a little bonus. This mountain of gold is real! Fuck! God damn it, I Fuck. was so wrong. I was sure the gold was fake. I would, I, you know what? I was sure it was fake too. I did not, for a moment, I did not believe the gold was real. All of the ingots piled up here are real, pure gold. There are absolutely no tricks such as replicas or fakes. Okay, I've got it. I'll accept that this gold exists. However, there are still some things I can't accept. <sighs> of course. You met with him, didn't you? With Kinzo. <laughs> Even though Kinzo's supposedly an illusion, you met with him just a second ago, right? Right, but Battle was just being flippant with Erica, saying like, oh yeah, grandfather told me. That's what that was. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I took that to mean. <laughs> I guess that really was magic, wasn't it? Are we talking about this during the EP2 retrospective? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Ridiculous. I didn't exchange any words with grandfather. I only felt as though Grandfather and I had exchanged words. Give it a rest. The same move won't work again. In that case, your blue truth, if you please. I was probably an excited state after solving the epitaph's riddle. And then I mistook something for Grandfather. For example, maybe there's some kind of sheet or cover that could have gotten cut in the dark grove of trees. Which looked like Grandfather wearing a pitch black cloak. As a result, I mistakenly thought that I had some sort of conversation with Grandfather. Blue truth, valid. Well, I did say the exact same thing in blue. So, did it work? Where's your counter with the red truth? I have none. At least not now, okay? <laughs> the me who'd let out a strange yell in front of the gold mountain was finally starting to regain his cool. Now that we've found it, there's no covering it up. I vaguely considered keeping this discovery a secret. However, Erica wanted to prove that her own reasoning was correct by announcing this to everyone. She really is an intellectual rapist, just as she says. Huh. The puzzle-solving game is what's important to her, and she doesn't intend to take any responsibility for what happens after the riddle is solved. A riddle is sort of like a lock. Locks exist to be locked, and they're only significant when they're locked. Therefore, it ought to be essential to have some goal in mind when exposing such a thing. However, to this goal, the act of exposing is itself her final goal, and she has no intention of taking responsibility for anything that happens later. Maybe the true storm about to hit Rokunjima isn't the typhoon, but her. She won't keep this discovery secret. She'll definitely announce it so she can brag about her success. Then she'll call a real storm down upon this island. I won't be able to keep this covered up. In that case, there's some, nothing to do but announce this fact fairly to all. I can't. 
can't imagine what will happen after that. As she grinned, Erica muttered to herself. She must have been anticipating the uproar the relatives would soon bring about. To her, merely imagining that was far sweeter than 20 billion yen in gold. Sim oh god, hold on, I need to summon Erica voice again. Mm. <laughs> Simply by solving the existence of the epitaph in that place, this level of reasoning is possible for Frodo, Erica. <laughs> what do you think, everyone? Yeah? Canned applause? <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> wow. Holy fuck. Holy shit. I think that's a good place to end it. Okay. It's been what, seven and a half hours? Yeah. Yeah, I th I think that I think that's good. I don't we're not gonna finish another chapter in under thirty minutes here, right? Probably not. All right. Unless it's really short. So let let's go ahead. Drop a save. Drop a save. And we're gonna call that the end. Thank you, everyone, for coming out to our kickoff stream for Umineko When They Cry Answer Arcs. Um, this was been a fucking wild ride already, right? Uh, <laughs> and guys, I kind of figured we'd get slow drift these things over four games. No, so that's not no, what happened. No, the, so I'm very afraid. The hits keep coming and they don't stop coming. Oh, man. Um... If you enjoyed this, please do the YouTube algorithm pleasing things. Uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. We say it a lot, but it does help us get noticed by other, uh, by more things in YouTube, and it helps the algorithm take note. And hopefully, that means you know we can share it with more people. Um, there will be no episode of Two Queers Play tomorrow because fuck, I'm resting my voice, and you can't stop me. Yeah. Same. Uh, <laughs> um, if you're following the channel now, um, Umineko, when they cry answer arcs, you will probably not see pre recorded episodes of that until mid April. Uh, we've got uh, two games we're currently playing that we need to finish up, and also the patron pick for this month. So you'll probably see episode two of this drop around mid April and then be a constant feature on the channel from there on out. Hell yeah. <sighs> Thank you again for coming. Um, YouTube pleasing stuff. I said that already. You can join the discard links up there. If you want to support what we do on the channel, patreon.com slash APR will get us to our Patreon where you can vote on creators for us to play every month. Um, tell your friends, tell your family <laughs> 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 on it and check out some of the other stuff we play on this channel. There's some <laughs> other games and let's plays we've done that we're really proud of that. Maybe you'll also enjoy. That's all I've got for you. Thank you all for coming again. It means the world to us that you showed up for this. Have a wonderful evening. Feels good to be back in the saddle. It feels good to be back here. Goodbye, everyone.